Sunbursts is is rough right now. It was a bit of a bar fight. Uh, no, the ice and lava thing is 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 going great. The ice and lava thing is fine. In fact, actually better than than I'd hoped. Um, the problem is this. So while I was fiddling around with ice and lava, I'd killed a couple dwarves, um, and uh, admittedly, uh, which was kind of rough. Um, there was that notice saying like someone is brawling under the influence. And then this happened. Um, so we were at 200 dwarves, or just under 200 dwarves. We, we lost, I think it was about 25, 30. Um, I need to actually look at the exact pop population numbers, but this is the hospital right now. Um, every dwarf that says that they are resting is currently injured. Every dwarf that says that they are resting. So, that's pretty brutal. So, we need to wait for this to play out. Um, we need to see what the actual casualty count is, and then we need to recover this. Um, if I look at this, we, we do have our monarch, who is injured, but not dead. Um, we lost Celesty, who was our countess, um, which is a damn shame. We also lost our captain of the guard and our champion. So I lost a good deal of my military. Um, yeah, the, all of these squads were full. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Military, nine military dwarves we've lost. So that's pretty brutal. Um, are my medics resting? So if you actually scroll down, you'll see that there are dwarves that say diagnosing patient. Um, so if I actually scroll down to the hospital area, there there's one who's currently able to do stuff. So I, I need to add some more some more dwarves to the, the, the doctoring options, like Volbach, basically. Um, but uh, we, we do have diagnosers. I mean, I, I basically just like set this to go. And then when once we once I saw this was happening and saw everybody going to the hospital, that's basically where I stopped playing last week. Um, like Cybrek here, this dwarf. Uh, Cybrek Katten. Uh, or Cy Cybrek channeled, I guess. Um, we can toss in as a doctor. But um, that's kind of where this, this currently is. I, I basically just like assigned a bunch of people when I, when I saw this. So, yeah. Now, it's... It's a situation. So so let's let's read the, the dwarves that are dead. Or, or rather, the dwarves that are not dead yet. Um, and then we'll we'll get to this. 404 Loud is very happy. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Happiest dwarf in the fort, apparently. Um, Aether Null. Alligator. Uh, Andre the regular guy. Uh, a Rende. Arcloid. Arcmaster 5000. Arcmaster. So I ended up with two Arcmasters. So if one of them dies, there you go. Um, Azrael. Uh, Baka Glass. Bastet. Big Bang A1. Brain Fist. Brightchu. Cat Dodger, Darren, Diamond Destruct, Dominoc, and uh, Dr. Special 420, Dr. Funk, DS, Elfie, uh, Arunamo, and uh, thank you very much, Iron Zach, for the eighth month. Welcome back. And hello, Fernando. Hope you're doing well. Um, Ar Arunamo, uh, Evidence Self, and GM70, as well as Ham, Ice Hockey Player, and I need to grease my mouse wheel. Um... Ice Hockey Player, Iron Pit, Jam Jalopy, Jetpack Tuxedo, Jazza IV, uh, J Fo, or J Fox, I'm not sure, um, Kraken, as well as Lord Ubda, and Lucas Bat, and Maladine, and uh, Midnight Winter, uh, Mighty, Mighty Rhett, and Might Be Ghost, uh, Mo Reb, Mama K Plays, Monticore, Nasty Ninja, Neezer, and Noma, Non Major Nerd, not Noma Major Nerd. Or whatever I was trying to say there. Uh, Ordith, Phoenix, Porcelet, Psyomegas, uh, Reza Darkseid, Rare Candy, Old School RuneScape, uh, Really Swifty, Rockar, and Salty Tempest, as well as Smithied, Sparky, 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 Terminal Wetness, and the Great Udolf. Uh, Tool Lights, Pong Lead, uh, Tyron Des, and Shaku, as well as uh, V. Vi Vikingdo, uh, and Recognize, and Vixen Rose, as well as Wait What, Wampin' Stompin', Zabine, and uh, Zyratrak? Zytrak, I guess, is how, you, is how I would say that. Anyway, so, we, so we've made it down to the bottom here. Um, 
Yeah, we got a we got a lot of work to do. Although, I, ironically, it was kind of funny. I, I was I was thinking to myself like, man, I could probably recover this, but the, this fort's kind of pissed. And then I go and I'm, I'm watching Deep Space on my weekend while recording stuff for NoClip, and his stream's up, and I'm looking at it, I'm going. He's got 34 dwarves as angry as possible. Like, everybody in Dwarf Fortress, like, or most people in Dwarf Fortress, play Dwarf Fortress as, like, a try and keep the dwarves as happy as possible. Deep, Deep Space plays this game completely backwards to most people because he he's just, yeah, by Monday he had over 50. Exactly. He's, he tries to piss off as many dwarves as possible without the fortress falling over. It's kind of funny. It's like, most people try and keep the dwarves as happy as possible. He tries to keep the dwarves as pissed off as awful as, as possible, without the fort collapsing under its own weight, which is very funny. Um, we will name dwarves, but we'll name dwarves when there's a migrant wave. So let's see if we can keep this fortress running. Yeah, 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 no, your, your dwarf uh, uh, did, didn't make it, unfortunately. So I've got, in case you can't tell, a couple of coffins that need making. I mean, there's just like a dead dwarf like right here. Um, so... Let's follow a dwarf who is doing doctoring stuff, like GM70 here, who's cleaning patients, bringing a black cap bucket up from this uh, well, although there is a well just, like, in the hospital. You'd think that you could just use that, but... You'd think you could just use, you know, this well, but the bucket is full. Hmm. I'm gonna... I, I need to have a discussion with... Uh... With Putnam about wells, because I, I don't think her fix is actually fixed wells. The bucket is still full. What? Is it frozen? Is that the problem? Ah. Yeah, that'd do it. Okay. That explains why this one isn't working. It's because it is frozen. Which is funny, because the water isn't. But. They did not fix that well. No, they did not fix that well. What's this about wells and fixes? Uh, so... If a bucket has water in it, a dwarf won't pick up the bucket and use the water in it. They try and refill it, which works unless the bucket is half full already. Oh, wow. We need a doctor's kill. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I've gained enough doctors from this event that the, that the, the, the doctors are unionizing. <laughs> that actually is really funny. Um... Yeah, this this fort is so cold that the, the bucket froze. Yeah, absolutely. So I just like deleted every single job uh, in the fortress when this happened. Um, I'm going to make 30 rock coffins, I think. And we'll just hope that this plays out. But all that we can really do is just kind of follow the dwarves and make sure that they slowly wake up. Bucket is full of ice. Well, no, that's not an issue. No, the, the issue is that they, they fill buckets and they leave them full. Right? And then it they they have a hard time figuring out how to use the next bucket, basically. Uh, just, uh, pulling a thing out of YouTube chat here. Um, if you want to have, like, if you want your dwarves to fight in the tavern, assign tavern keepers and invite guests into your fort. That's how that, that's how you make that happen. But what happened? A big tavern brawl gone bad. Probably combined with a, um, some sort of, like, traitor. Because we, we, we've had a lot of thieves in the fort. Um, so some sort of, uh, thief likely combined with a tavern brawl um and uh it just it went bad and we lost like 25 dwarves ish so a bunch of dwarves died to find a good tavern brawl well okay think about it this way right Dwarf Fortress is a game about preparing for disaster, right? And expecting disaster because that's how you have fun in Dwarf Fortress, right? And you, you don't have to play the game the way I do, um, but I, I really like the, the the process of expecting and preparing for disaster in Dwarf Fortress. A good tavern brawl is a tavern brawl that causes a disaster but doesn't take the fort down with it. So this is a pretty good tavern brawl. If that's a, you know, a thing that you can... Agree with, I suppose. Yeah, okay. We, we look like we're doing all right because 
th there's more and more dwarves running around again. Because, like, I, I quite enjoy tavern brawls. I, I like it when, you know, a bunch of dwarves fall over and die suddenly, and it's, like, it's a thing that you have to, like, recover from. Like, that's, that's, that's the hurdles and the challenges of Dwarf Fortress are what make Dwarf Fortress entertaining to me. Also, um, for those of you who are unaware, we've been training with the elves. Um, so we have a giant camel in the basement. We have a giant doggo in the basement. Um, and uh, also, don't, mi don't mind these coffins. Um... Don't mind the coffins. They're, they're fine. They're just there. Um, and then up here uh, on the surface, we also have um, Murder Mittens and Murder Mittens other. The other Murder Mittens. We, we have two Murder Mittenses and, uh, a, a, and a giant dingo and another giant dingo. So we have two giant dingoes and uh, two giant jaguars. And uh, we actually have a breeding couple for the giant jaguars. So hopefully uh, we can make some babies with the giant jaguars and then uh, have some uh, military giant jaguars. Those are big animals. I know, right? They're great. Giant kitties. I've seen bigger. <laughs> I've seen bigger. <laughs> this, 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 this saber. Oh, yo, yeah, well, here's this thing that I'm very happy with and, and, and impressed by. Look how big this cat is. I've seen bigger. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> Can one of those murder mittenses receive your name? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, naming animals is a, is a difficult thing. Chat, should I should I name one of the one of the murder mittens Shatner, or 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 is that setting a precedent that now I have to upkeep? Because to me that's setting a precedent that I would have to upkeep. I suddenly just heard a really weird sound that startled me, and it's just the the cleaning people just turned on a vacuum cleaner in the hallway. Um, some poets are sharing rumors. Interesting. Well, it seems like the humans are attacking the elves, and we're probably also getting rumors from up here. But it seems like the goblins over here are invading, and uh, the goblins here are invading these dwarves. Because those those rumors are they're telling you about stuff that's happening on the world map. So it's usually like these little highlighted zones are the, the sieges that are going through. Because, like, we knew about the stuff that was happening down here, but I didn't know about any of the stuff that was happening up here. The thing is that the large animals are in very low quantity, but how about this? Chat room, what do I name this giant jaguar? Let, let's do this as a team event. Instead of giving it to one specific person. What dwarf, or what 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 do we name this this giant cat? Because we we've got the the other one which is actually just named Murder Mittens. We got Murder Mittens, stray Murder Mittens. Then we got this one, and then we got this one. So we got two others. We got the six year old one and the four year old one. Patrick Garfield. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jome the Jaguar. I like Patrick. Patrick's pretty good. So we got Pertrick, Murder Mittens, and this one, the Stray Giant Leopard, which isn't a jaguar, because I've got the... Kind of wish it would still say, like, their species. Like, that's, that's, like, that, that's the one difficult bit. Gigantic Feline Predator. Second Garfield? Is that like second breakfast? Sir meows a lot. We'll go, we'll, we'll go with that. And Shatner, it, when when you get a dwarf, inevitably, uh, we'll, we'll see about maybe giving one of those to you as a pet. All right. Things do seem to be like slowly sorting themselves out with this whole situation. Oh, hey, look. Speaking of... Uh, the humans are here to trade. Um, that's going to be tough. <laughs> the trading depot is all the way up here. Uh, a lot of the dwarves are injured. Apparently we're now in an ad break, so I will pause the game. Scarfield. 
I, I, I really liked that, that, that like meme that lasted for like two days of people referring to Starfield as Garfield. So because I'm in an ad break and I can talk about like very off topic things. So how about like that, that game the day before releasing getting incredibly bad reviews and then the studio shutting down <laughs> and then renaming the developer on all of their previous games to like hide the fact that their studio ever existed. So how about that? Also, if your studio no longer exists, do you have to pay refunds? Because I'm assuming you don't. It's fucking weird, man. It's so strange. So strange. That game was a scam from the get-go? Yeah, I, I mean... I don't... Okay, so... I don't know if it's fair to say that it was a scam from the get-go, but it certainly ended up that way. Like, initially, I, I don't know. I mean, it's... Did, did they actually intend to make that game that they were showing footage of initially? I have no idea. But I think it's it's good to give everything, like, the benefit of the doubt, at least initially. And it's really weird seeing games like that where it's just like, okay, well, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that your game is real and that you're actually making that thing. But, yeah, by, by the time it released, it was absolutely bizarre. Well, shit happens. Pretty much, yeah. Sage biting. Uh, so what game the day before? Uh, the day before was the most wishlisted game on Steam because it had an absolutely incredible trailer. It was the most wishlisted game, and it existed for, I don't know, it, it was, there was a Steam page for it for like four, three, four years, and if you go back and you look at the original, like the, the game that they ended up releasing looked like a city version of H1Z1, like pretty simple graphics, like not super fancy looking, like a slightly worse looking PUBG, um, but like the thing that they initially showed in that original trailer looked like Last of Us level of graphical fidelity, um, and physics and stuff. Um, so it was a classic case of they released a trailer that looked like one game and then like four years later released a completely different game. Um, and then they were getting a roughly 50% refund rate and now they've shut the studio down. Yeah, it, it was it was supposed to be an open world zombie MMO a la Daisy, right? And what they released was a bad Tarkov clone. The dialogue was also really bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was all really bad. But, yeah, it was, it's just bizarre. Um, all right. So we've got some ghosts popping up. Cubini has risen and is haunting the fortress. Still need that Dr. Guild. Um, wonder if we've even started any of those. Nope. Coffins haven't started yet. Is my manager injured? Do I even have a manager? <laughs> Uh, Smithied is my manager. Um, he is, in fact, managing work orders. That's good. All right, so let's go here and um, bring used clothing up here. Looks like tunics are not for sale. I cannot sell tunics. Got it. Let's filter. If you actually just hit this button, then any items that are not allowed to be sold just get removed from the trading UI, so you can very easily just like run through and not have to worry about accidentally selling stuff that's gonna get your citizens beat. I was calling it a scam for years. Oh no, I mean like there, there's tons of games that like get called out as scams, but like, I don't know. I, I like to give games that aren't released the benefit of the doubt that it's not going to be a scam, but I'm also not the sort of person who's going to pre-order or buy a game day one until there's reviews, right? So, like, I just, like, when I saw that game initially, I was like, wow, that is ambitious. Okay, good luck. <laughs> that was kind of my take. Um, and obviously it didn't deliver. Obviously. Yeah, I don't... It's funny, I feel like I've been watching some drama tubers recently, but not because I've actually been watching drama tubers, I've just been, like, following the completionist stuff very closely, so. Which, by the way, that took a turn over the weekend on the topic of drama. If you want to even call that drama legal drama. Jeez. But no, I mean, um, if you want to know what uh, the day before was like, just watch Dunkey's video. It's like seven minutes, and it'll give you a pretty clear picture of what that game was. 
Uh, we need splints. We need... Okay. Okay, so we're trying to make pig iron, but we're also trying to make splints. Um... I could probably actually buy splints. Queue up 10 wooden splints. We'll also bring the broker over. There there was a, a, a comment on his apology video, Sham, that I think deserves a medal, which is, it's okay guys, don't worry. He's just taking the villain route this time so that he can get all the achievements. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, shout outs to that person. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, wow. Wow. T minus 2C feels like 8C here, and you're under a blanket. Indoors, though? That's not so bad. You have a few bits left. Do you see the YouTube channel says that Sunburst says a bloodbath? Is your dwarf still alive? I don't think so. Oh, nope. Your dwarf is still alive. You did make it. Did you... Uh, you have some broken fingers. So, you've been worse. But uh, there's a little bit of miasma in the whole way. <laughs> so, you know, also, by the way, I forgot to mention, we also have a big owl. We, we have acquired large owl. And also, um, large car cardinal. Shout out to the elves for constantly bringing us giant animals. That I'm slowly accumulating. We are placing items in tombs. And we are making those coffins. Nah, I'm not going to name all the animals. We name, we just named the big kitties. It's a bird? It is a bird. Yes, large bird. The cardinal looks like a splat. It does kind of look like somebody like fell off a building, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the cardinal sprite is pretty gnarly. I, I one of the one of the things I'm looking forward to with adventure mode is um uh higher definition large animal sprites. Uh on behalf of the merchants guild, let me uh, extend my greetings to your people. There's much to discuss. What requests do you have of our merchants? Um what requests do I have of our their merchants? I'm going to ask them to bring me. You know, this is really boring. I'm gonna ask them to bring me wood. Like where? Because I am trying to keep the elves happy and they've given me like a maximum number of trees I can get down of like six. So, because I want them to keep bringing me large animals. I like these elves. So. Wood is not boring on a glacier. I, fair. Waiting for our broker to get here. Here he comes. All right, I want to say that I requested all of this stuff, but uh, let's just scroll to splints. Um, it's also by the thread. So it's by thread. And hopefully I have the, the trade goods to do this properly. These are spikes. Go. That's splints and crutches. Sweet. And we have plenty of stuff to trade for that, so we'll do the first trade. The reason I'm doing these in multiple trades, and I've explained this before, but I'll explain it again. The reason I do these in multiple trades is if you do multiple trades, it trades your um it trains your broker faster. Might as well also buy these books and get started on a library. Oh, can't buy all of them. Let's not buy the $500 one. Or this one. Do that. Alright, that'll do. So now we have a bunch more splints. Um, Let's jump down here again and fill out this crypt a little bit. Oopsies, I lost my spot. Where, where, where am I? Here. This was originally being all nice and organized, but it's unfortunately just got to be filled.
Oh yeah, also, if you want to uh, assist the YouTube stream out, the best way to do that is by leaving a like on the YouTube stream. I find that if the YouTube stream gets about 100 likes, it usually sits at about 60 viewers. And uh, if it gets less than that, it usually peters out after a bit and sits around 20. Uh, because YouTube is so algorithm focused, it doesn't actually matter if people like your stream or not. It just matters if it gets interactions. So if people want to help out the YouTube stream, there's a link. Let's go leave it a like. Lurking in both also helps too. But uh, of course, I prefer if you watch on that you watch on Twitch because that is the majority of where stuff gets done. Uh, if I type in burial hyphen C, that just saves me from having to manually assign all these tombs. So now they're all assigned manually. So I'm just going to keep doing this until the dwarves stop getting assigned to new tombs because there is so freaking many. Good lord. And we've got dwarves like Cat Dodger placing items in tombs. Fine, geez. Okay. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not, I'm not making you do things. Look at this dwarf. Individually taking nose, body, and every single tooth down to the tomb. Shoutouts to that dwarf. So much work. And all of the, the bodies are becoming skeletons. Um, I know the best part is, is a lot of these skeletons are like not even my faction, so I'm going to have to get rid of them manually. And uh, speaking of children, so I I haven't had ch I haven't had kids doing any seriously scarring jobs for a while, but I think I'm actually gonna give them burial and refuse hauling for right now, just to try and get this stuff put away because I need the extra hands. So this will get an extra thirty or so dwarves assisting. Your visitors stole all the books from your library. They'll do that, yeah. They will do that. They're not even intentionally stealing. They just pick up a book and leave the map. <laughs> little hands to pick up those little teeth. Absolutely. Completely. But yeah, then the next chunk of time is going to be making these dwarves happy again. So we're going to spend... We're going to put this project on pause for a little bit, which is okay. I mean, like, it's we've, we've made some good progress. I need to wait for all of this lava to dry up and all the, um, as much of the ice to freeze as possible anyways. And then we're just going to go in here. We're going to channel this whole thing out until it's all just obsidian floors. Because that that's that's what, what, what we need here is obsidian floors. Why are you naked? Dwarf. Are you a member of my fort or are you just here? Oh, I see. Okay, so you are just a member of... Interesting. So these, th this is a performance troupe that's leaving. I just, I didn't realize how many relatives this performance troupe has. Like, this dwarf here? Is a former member of the Insightful Han Handles and is currently a member of the Devils of Dust, which I guess is this performance troupe. But uh, I didn't realize how many family members this performance troupe has. In the fort. You prefer uh, to refer to tombs as dwarf reassembly receptacles? Like, like reassembling a dwarf in a box? Make some silk tunics. I really need to get rid of these down here so that they stop trying to pass that way and instead go out the front door. That or I could just lock this door, but yeah. We're also slowly going to make this right here into the actual front entrance through this, but one thing at a time. So for right now, it's mostly just a matter of waiting for all these dwarves to get put into tombs. Um, I look at what my dwarves are wearing and I replicate that because dwarves don't only need the clothes that they are currently wearing and they only crave the clothes that they're currently wearing. So if you keep an eye on what your dwarves are actively wearing when they show up, that's all that you need. 
is the clothing that they are currently wearing. So if like your dwarves, you know, are wearing shoes, socks, gloves, dresses and tunics and pants, you just do that. Yeah, and if you're there wearing goblin masks, then you mod your game so you can make goblin masks. <laughs> Let's place a bunch more of these. Burial. See? 22 more tombs. Okay, so these aren't all getting claimed immediately, which is what we want to start seeing. And also, most of the dwarves are up now. Um, checking dwarves that are resting. There still are dwarves in the hospital, but the majority of them are back, are up and moving, which is good. The vast majority of them. Let's also see if I can... Well, it's midsummer. We're going to have the dwarves to trade with soon, so I don't need to worry too much about selling all this clothing. So another reason why the dwarves were so unstable and all collapsed is because I didn't have enough bedrooms. I still don't have enough bedrooms. So um, making more bedrooms for these dwarves is one of the high priorities. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a doctor's guild. We're going to get everybody enough bedrooms and then maybe build a library and just do our damnedest to keep these dwarves happy. That is the, that is the goal going forward. Uh, they don't, the, I mean, the, they just need a tomb, right? And it only needs to be a single tile. Like, they don't actually need a room aside to the, assigned to their tomb. Usually what I do is I start off being very, like, specific about tombs and, like, trying to honor each and individual dwarf. Um, and then very quickly I end up getting lazy. And what the hell is that? That's an albatross hatchling? Okay, well, that's, that's a first. Look at that little snowball. Holy shit. <laughs> Look at this snowball. There's two of them, even. I'm just going to fully heal it, because otherwise it's never going to heal. Look at this little, this little tiny snatchling. What an adorable little puffer. That's cute. All right, um, I, I need to put that with my albatross, because <laughs> I, I have two albatrosses down here. Um, and I, I guess they had babies. Yeah, there's there's two baby albatrosses. I guess I can put a duck in there with them. I'm sure that'll be fine. Let's also put these in here. But yeah, looks like looks like we got a baby albatross. Did they only lay a single egg? Huh. I'm going to Google this. I'm curious if that's real. Uh, how many eggs do albatross lay? Wow. They do actually lay one egg at a time. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> I just learned something about albatrosses. They are an individual egg layer. But yeah, those are my little floof balls. My little baby floofs. And got the actual scene of when they fought, fought a dragon. Oh, really? Oh, that's rad. Was that um a uh, history from your fort, or was that before they got to the fort? Well, I didn't. But yeah, that, that's pretty rad. In regards to that that story, Brain Fist. You love to see stuff like that. Uh, the merchants have uh, embarked on their journey, which is good. Let's see how many dwarves are doing tomb stuff. All right, so I think... Let's check the surface up here. I'm assuming that these ones that haven't gotten tombs yet. Okay, no, that uh, they are being hauled. I was thinking maybe I'll just like 
toss the rest of these bodies because I do need to get these bodies out of here. There are giant, like uh, giant peacocks. I don't think there's giant peacocks. No. I will say that the emperor penguin babies are for the giant emperor penguins are adorable. Um, I'm gonna take my squads here. Okay, they are on no orders. Hmm. Let's toss that body. And that body. I mean, it just is what it is, right? Okay, let's let's go up to. Hold on, I'm gonna blow up my mouse. This isn't me blowing my nose, I swear. <laughs> there we go. Now my mouse wheel works. Um, let's go up to that hospital. Which is right here. This is going to become a doctor's guild right here. Yeah, there's no there's no giant variants of uh, default domestic animals, so there's no giant cats for that reason. Um, same reason there's no people variant, so there's no like peacock man. Although I'm not gonna lie. The memes you could make out of a peacock man would be pretty great, but. Okay. More bards are visiting. We still got dwarves in hospital, but they are all slowly coming together. All right, chat. If you had a dwarf and they died, or if you don't currently have a dwarf in this fortress, say pick me, and I'm going to read the Discord word story, and then we're going to name some dwarves. This goes for both chats, so if you're in YouTube chat, you can also do that. Uh, good elves make better cookies than friends cooking leeks. Um, salad salted strudel sauce over sloppy napkins makes messy dinner. Uh, goblins stink more than you. All caught up. Um, pick Elfie. Elfie has a dwarf already. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they didn't die. Yes, Elfie does have a dwarf, and they didn't die. Um, first person I see. Darius Cardren. Did you have one previously? Yes, so this would be Darius Cardren the second. First batch, yes. Congratulations on a successful return, Elfie. Um... He often feels lustful, and he is a friendly individual. He take he likes little he likes a little excitement now and then, and he has an active sense of humor. He enjoys the company of others, and he isn't off and he doesn't often feel envious of others. He occasionally overindulges, and he isn't particularly ambitious. Uh, he tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects, and he clicks his tongue when he's uh, occasionally when he's bored. And he needs alcohol to get through the working day, and he doesn't mind being outdoors at least for a time. He dreams of mastering a skill, and personally finds eloquence and artful speech off putting. And dreams of mastering a skill. And I read that twice. Uh, he has no known, known family and is a member of the sect of Waving, which we already have a temple for, meaning he's probably quite happy about that. Welcome to the fortress. Let's see how big this migrant wave is. Watch it be like three dwarves. Um, next up here, we have Tubal. Tubal is going to be... Telen. Artho. Tool. Once the captain, no longer the captain. She is very comfortable around others that are different from herself, and she is incredibly brave in the face of looming danger, perhaps a bit foolhardily. Does not trust others, and she has an active sense of humor. She doesn't often feel envious of others, and she has a greedy streak. She dreams of creating a great work of art and values good craftsmanship, and doesn't see cooperation as valuable. You know, I kind of want to make you the captain of the guard again, because that's, that's a pretty good captain of the guard thought, but I think we'll hold off. We'll see. Uh, okay, here comes next. Thought that was going to be a very small microwave for a second there. Uh, this one is going to be V-Boy Chaos. And I think this is also the second, right? Uh, V-Boy Chaos uh, tends to avoid crowds, and he tends to hang on to uh, grievances. Let's double check. V-Boy. Nope. You had a dwarf in the previous fort. Um... Uh, he tends to avoid crowds, and he tends to hang on to grievances. He is quick to form negative views about things, and he uh, prefers to present himself modestly. 
He likes a little excitement now and again, and he likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract. He often feels envious of others and generally acts impartially and is rarely moved to mercy and generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. He often snaps his fingers when he's nervous and he needs alcohol to get through the working day. He dreams of raising a family and personally has a deep respect for animals and plants in the natural world. What a dwarf. Um, he's also a member of the sect of waving. It's like we're getting a religious migration right now. Uh, next up here, we have another dwarf. Surprise. I, I know I'm very surprised. Uh, this one is uh, Dr. N-I-E-S-H-E, -E, uh, which is a name that I still to this day don't know how to pronounce properly. Uh, this dwarf, also hi, Martin, over in the YouTube chat. Um, this dwarf is a, is a peasant and likes to present himself boldly, even if it would offend the average sense of modesty. He uh, desires... Li he... Mm. He desires little for, for himself in the way of possessions, and he is quick to form negative views about things. He generally finds himself to be quite hopeful about the future. He has a noticeable lack of perseverance, and he is and he doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges. He rarely feels discouraged, and he tends to make a small mess with his own possessions. He likes a little excitement now and then, and considers tranquility preferable to tumult, and consider uh, and conceptually. And he is very humble, and he generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. Uh, he tends to share his own experiences and thoughts with others, and he tends to think before acting. Uh, he is assertive, and he tries to do things correctly each time, and he tends to be swayed by the emotions of others. Uh, he isn't particularly curious about the world. He needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of mastering a skill, and personally is a firm believer in the value of tradition, and values a harmonious existence, and values tranquility. And you know what? You can be our new captain of the guard, dwarf. You do have uh, many family members in the fortress. So you get an immediate promotion. Next up is a beekeeper, which isn't going to be able to keep any bees. Uh, this can be uh, Shatnar. Shatner. You're a novice swords dwarf, so it means you're likely to join the military. Maybe you will get a pet murder mittens. Uh, he has great trouble mastering fear when confronted by danger. He doesn't uh, tend to hold on to grievances, and he tends to uh, not reveal personal information. Um, he doesn't try to get things done perfectly, and he tends to avoid crowds. He does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. Uh, he doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges, and he thinks he is fairly important in the grand scheme of things. He likes to brawl, and he uh, is not particularly interested in what others think of him, and he is trusting, and he likes to keep things practical without diving too deeply into the abstract. Uh, he dreams of raising a family and personally sees war as a useful means to an end, finds eloquence and artful speech off-putting, and is somewhat put off by trade and commerce. I think we'll also put you in the military. And you're a talented beekeeper, and you're a member of the Cold Citadel. Uh, next up here, let's grab another one from the Twitch chat. I think I scrolled too far. Um, B R O E B O L, Rubble. He is confident under pressure and has great trouble mastering fear when confronted by danger. Well, you're not joining the military. Uh, he easily falls into love and develops positive feelings and can be, you can be very single-minded. He has a very calm demeanor and doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges. He tends to only form tenuous emotional bonds with others and he is assertive and he tends to consider what others think of him. Uh, he tends to be swayed by the emotions of others and he doesn't often feel, he does not often feel lustful, needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of raising a family and personally values peace over war. Finds artwork boring and doesn't particularly value loyalty. And, uh has a pet blue peahen and is also a member of the sect of waving. And I think that's everybody. Six dwarves. We'll do another one when we get another round of migrants. Even my most upset dwarves like Baca Glass are doing weaponsmithing demonstrations. I think these dwarves, like I said, desperately need a break. Desperately need a break. Some dwarves are still going into tombs as well, which, geez. Just you and me, your birdie? Yep, pretty much. Pet burb. So like I said, we're going to be making this into a doctor's guild, because I guess after that, we desperately need that. Oh, boy. The Forgotten Beast Foth Sethalunul. 
has come. A great feathered leech. It has wings and a bloated body. Its mint green feathers are patchy. Beware its noxious secretions. You ever seen a dwarf who didn't need alcohol to get through the working day? It's not a dwarf. Straight up, it's biologically impossible. It's not a dwarf. Even dwarves that can't drink alcohol need alcohol to get through the working day. That's just how dwarves work. If um, they don't need alcohol to get through the working day, it's definitely a human. Definitely a human. Did Amethyst survive? No, Amethyst did not survive, unfortunately. They still need alcohol to get through the working day. Shadow Absorber. I jinxed it by saying that they need a break. Well, the good news is the caverns are pretty sectioned off from the rest of the fort. So I can likely just station my military dwarves down there um, and clear it out with crossbows without having to do too much physical work. So, fingers crossed, my crossbows can do their job. Also, look at how quickly the moods are going back to positive. We had, it was what, 31 super depressed dwarves, and then 10 very depressed dwarves, and now we're up to 20 very depressed dwarves. <laughs> um, so, that number going up. The happy dwarves are dropping. We need to fix that. So let's uh, let's deal with some noxious secretions, so, shall we? Where, where is this creature at? Okay, so it is in the lower level. Hmm. I'm actually kind of curious. Because this right here. Okay. So where where is the creature then? What what layer is it on currently? Cuz I've got Yugath, that's my pet one. Is there two on the map right now? Like one that I was unaware of? Oh right, okay. There's also Ono the Evil. I completely spaced on the existence of this one. This one Oh right, yeah, cuz this one's stuck back here. Right. Duh. Um it's literally stuck behind like what's it called? Trees. Like can't can't get through it. There's that one, that one. And then there's also all the ghosts I need to deal with. Yeah, this one's also stuck. <laughs> so we've got two stuck forgotten beasts right now. I we're gonna need to clean those out. Um hmm. So if I've got the two stuck forgotten beasts, well, what was the name of this one? What layer was that? Okay, so it is on the lower half. And it was around here. Yeah, I don't know. It's off the map right now. We can't currently see it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Because I can't see it. I mean, it's called fluff. It's like dental fluff. Yeah, not much I can do. That reminded you of your first forgotten beast in this fort when it was made of fire. Uh, it happened to permanently blind itself when it went for a swim, and I just sat there with while your arcs marksworths killed it. Oh, that's funny. Good thing your marksworths were able to do some work on it, though. Get her done, dealt with, you know. Done and dusted. Removed from the problem sphere. Um, all right, so I'm going to go and slaughter a bunch of animals. Because I, I do not need that baby llama. I will keep the baby albatrosses alive for you, chat room. I will do that. The, these cavies can die. I don't know what asshole decided to bring cavies. But all of these puppies and most of these birds are going to die. Because I just, I, 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 have, I have too many animals. Too many animals. I will keep one of those cavies alive, but I'm gelding it. Uh, the vast majority of these dogs need to die. 
Also, something that I need to check is, did I turn auto-saving back on? I think I did, because I'm pretty sure the game just saved. But uh, when I when I record tutorials, I turn off auto-saving. I recorded a tutorial over the weekend. Yes, okay, it's on seasonal. Don't let the albatross die. You know, I feel like I should understand what you're referencing, but I don't. So what 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 does albatrosses have to do with high school English? What have you missed? Uh, a forgotten beast showed up and we named some dwarves. That's it. Oh, and we traded. Like, I feel like I had some sort of assigned reading at some point that, like, had something to do with not letting albatrosses die, but it's completely, like, left my brain. I'm the Ancient Mariner? That sounds familiar. <laughs> I don't know. You read Rhyme of the... Okay. That, that's, that sounds very familiar, but I, I... Like with most things in that era of my life, it's like, oh, yeah, I vaguely remember that. <laughs> do I actually remember it? I don't know about that. That's maybe being a bit generous. Okay, I will accept this doctor's guild. This is fine. Cavern dwellers? Okay. Oh. Okay, so um, Angry Noodle here is fighting with... Are you also fighting with this? A blob composed of fil filth with webs whose tail is gone? Okay. Um, so it is shooting webs... And killing a bunch of animal people. Wait, hold on. What? Do, do you have webs? No, you have noxious secretions. So are they? Are they? I, th I think the forgotten beasts are fighting. Yeah, they are. In fact. Huh. Well, that's kind of interesting. I didn't know that you could shoot webs up. The more you know, I suppose. Well, now they're like on the same tile and fighting. Although. Ulka, because he's a blob, all he can do is push. Are they just pushing each other? Forgotten Beast pushes a Forgotten Beast, bruising the skin. Forgotten Beast pushes a Forgotten Beast, but the attack glances away. Forgotten Beast pushes a Forgotten Beast. They're literally just pushing each other. Neither of them actually have attacks. They are simply pushing each other. That is very funny. <laughs> that, that is very funny to me. They are simply pushing each other. Like if, if you if you look at this, like the only thing in the combat log is this. <laughs> this is the unpaused combat log. Forgotten Beast stands up. Yep. Oh, there we go. Ulka is now dead. Uh, so it is splattered with Thoth's Forgotten Beast, whatever. So the blob is dead. The flying like leech got the kill. Obviously. Also, apparently this thing killed a dwarf in 84. And it's killed a cave crocodile here. So now it has to fly out of here. Which I'm sure it'll do eventually. Because it can fly. Unless it somehow managed to lose both of its wings. Um, I need to go to my... Um, mason shops. And we need to queue up... Memorials. Although this is tricky. Because it says everybody's entombed. Yet at the same time, there is two ghosts in the map. So if there's two ghosts in the map, Dodok and Cubini, if there's two ghosts, then why is it telling me none of them need to be memorialized? Oh, I'll just search for it. That's interesting. There's definitely a ghost for that, but... 
And Kibini. Okay, well, Kibini already has a slab engraved, so I just, I, I need to, oh, maybe, maybe they already had slabs made, and I just need to place the slabs. Maybe that's what's going on here. Let's see. Yes, okay. That's why it's not telling me that they, they, they need tombs, is because they already had their slabs made. I was ahead of this, turns out. These may also have been dwarves that um, died in the lava mistakes. I mean, project. Legitimate project. Very legitimate project. So they may have actually died before this whole thing happened. Probably did. I'm pretty sure that's how Kibini died. Okay, let's jump back to that Forgotten Beast and see where it's at. Loth. Dental Thoth. Well, okay. We'll just wait for it to do its thing. I'm sure it'll come at us at some point. Beer engraving memorials, which I don't actually need, turns out. Number of depressed dwarves is still rising. But getting rid of these ghosts is a hefty part of it. So Happy One Year, Blue Heart. Oh, you mean like the the, the video of uh version twenty three A someone over there? Uh probably. I mean I'm I'm planning on streaming some more twenty three A. Lightning Roger, thank you very much for the twelfth month. It's been a whole year. A whole year since Dwarf Fortress released. On the 12th, you know, it's it's 12 months on 12, 12, 12. This is the one time you get that. It's the 12th of the 12th month, and that's your 12th month that you resubbed. Like, how often does that happen? That's, that's like a series of numbers that could start a cult. Thank you. Make a wish, yeah, something like that. We've still got... Patients in hospital that are being cleaned. Lord Aldorfi. Get more of this ice down in here. And then ice. Ice. And I'm thinking I'll do some sort of metal around the edge. Like, um, let's say maybe, how much silver do I have? 80? Yeah, we could do silver. I think silver as part of a hospital or doctor's guild makes sense. Then I'll put a pillar in that one last spot there. Maybe obsidian? Something nice and dark colored. Well, let's actually use lead. Merchants have been, the ghosts have been put to rest. It's good. Got a couple of dwarves left in hospital. You're in traction. You're in traction. The pack tuxedo is also in traction. This is fine. Um, okay, so more cave swallow people are attacking the Forgotten Beast. Forgotten Beast is seriously injured, but, you know, not dying. Cubini has been put to rest. Good. There's just a little pile of of uh, cave swallow people here dying. Because they, they go up here to try and assault my fortress, right? And they also spawn up here. So I guess, like, they're one by one just, like, slowly encountering this forgotten beast. Okay. 
Good thing it's not 2012, then it would be the perfect number for disaster. I worked that day, the day that the world was supposed to end in 2012. I went to my job, and I worked all night, and we all kind of joked about how the world was supposed to end. It was, it was a day. Ordith is reciting poetry. Yeah, these dwarves need a break. Gives these dwarves a chance to catch up to things. Doing nothing really but farming and maybe some crafting. Maybe make everybody new sets of clothes. Um, all right, so, bedrooms, after this. Doing all right, Jay Fox. Uh, your, your dwarf is still alive, by the way. You, you survived the, the great death. Because a lot of dwarves didn't make it. <laughs> but you're still alive, so I guess that's good. Also, um, I used to do this, but I don't do it anymore, which is I used to put my doctor's guild hall in the hospital, but I noticed that when doctors would cross from the hospital zone to the guild hall zone, if they crossed into the guild hall zone, it would cancel their doctoring jobs. Um, so I have now removed that as a feature from my doctor's guilds, purely because, um, well, that's a bit problematic, right? <laughs> um, is like jobs not getting done because they crossed into the zone. I guess they find it very distracting or something. So, I no longer do that now. So now I just put the Doctor's Guild Hall next door. The Great Death, yes. Now we had a massive tavern brawl and uh, lost a bunch of dwarves in the process. Alright, so Doctor's Guild... What's the value of this? Should be high enough value now. This also wouldn't be a bad one to make citizens only, so anybody can go to it. And I can now connect the the Mellow Times is the name of the guild hall. That's pretty great. I can now connect this uh, guild hall to the hospital. Yep, it's been satisfied. We need to keep it as the mellow times. Pretty much, yeah. Although it's more like, ooh, stitches demonstration, right? Dwarves are very easily distractible. It's just kind of a fact. It also makes me wonder, if I connect the hospital to this zone, will they use this as the hospital too? Which I've done. So, we'll see. Maybe I can put some more beds in here and some more traction benches, and if we see the dwarves running back and forth and tending them in here, we know that, that works. All right. Name choice dwarfies? Oh, pretty much, yeah. Pray to Thep. I, too, would be praying to Thep if I was in this fortress. All right, so so let's get some dwarves uh, bedroomed up. Um, if I check this bedroom and I click this button, I can see how many dwarves approximately need bedrooms. Quite a few approximately need bedrooms. Quite a few. All right, so um, there's some half-made bedrooms, so let's get to those first. Okay. Um, log. How many logs do I have? 167. Okay. Let's just do beds 50. 50, 50 beds. And um, rock doors. 50 of those do. Although, do I actually have doors here? I do, in fact, have doors. So doors are less of a concern, but always need more doors. Okay, so I think I'm going to keep up with what I've been doing, so I'm just going to do a little stairway down. Um... Little bedroom down there. Little hallway going this way. A couple additional bedrooms. Will help. This is a temple here. Can just make a hallway coming off this. Bedroom. 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 
bedroom, bedroom, and bedroom. Well, why have a staircase go down into a bedroom? I don't know. It's an aesthetic. I, I guess the, the answer to it is just simply why not? Um, yeah, why not? Make bedrooms the way you want to make them. If it includes a staircase, include a staircase. Dwarves live vertically? Well, I mean, they're vertically challenged, so certainly. Let's check in on that Forgotten Beast and see where it currently at, is at. It is still in the hole. Okay, well, it's got a cozy little spot that it's living in, I suppose. He look rat weed seed. What, Diamond? <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> All right, so there's just a bunch of teeth here. <laughs> not sure why there's a bunch of teeth there, but we're going to chuck those. I'm also not sure whose teeth they are or if they're still alive, so... Is anybody dumping those? Yep, dwarves are dumping items. Okay, good. Uh, I need to fix dry buckets again. Oh, never mind. Wooden, or let's just do iron bucket. Why do I keep searching on that screen when trying to type in buckets? It's like, make me buckets, and I just go to the first, like, search field I can. Iron bucket. Let's do that. Let's make 20 of them. Now, if they needed those teeth, they would have kept them. Yeah, I, I, I really like the story of um, the person who, who donated the doctor's nose uh, to the doctor's guild. Like, just put it on a pedestal in there. Actually got a bunch of random legendary dwarves. So let's get these dwarves on training now. Help them get to work. So that when we do inevitably have to fight that forgotten beast, we, we don't just die. <laughs> it's like, you know, that's, that's generally beneficial, right? Kind of don't want your dwarves to just, you know, surprise die to forgotten beasts. So I had this little plot line going in this fort where I had this crazy captain of the guard. And one of the things that I had the captain of the guard doing is they were storing the bodies of great things that were killed um, down here. And up here, they were storing uh, dark artifacts. Um, but now we have this new captain of the guard, Dr. Nish. So I have a question. Do we get this new captain of the guard to live in the footsteps of the old one? Or do we try to be, you know, how do I, how do I word this? A little bit nicer with those dwarves. Because <laughs> I'm not totally sure. Uh, where was the captain of the guard's bedroom, though? I think it was over here, actually. Go. There you go. Please make more tutorials, please. Um, I made one on Saturday, so. <laughs> Shrug. There's only so many tutorials a week I can make before my brain starts to shut down. Um, low boots, rings, and tunics. Silk tunics. Rock ring. Steel low boots.
Uh, well, I guess, uh, talking to the YouTube chat here, I guess technically well, there was a seven hour compilation that I uploaded and then I did the crossbow t tutorial. What's the deadliest forgotten beast I've fought? Um, wasn't in this version, it was in version 47, but I had a horse that shot webs that was made of steel. It killed 150 dwarves in like two minutes. And then the fort died. <laughs> I almost immediately got into the fort too. I was like, well. <laughs> a lot of your dwarves have a lot of lovers. Wait, what? Montecor, the, the Marks Dwarf, was found dead. I beg your pardon? Okay, well, this one I need to look at. What, what the hell happened to you? Because there wasn't any combat. Killed by the Dwarf Tubal. Huh. Tubal did it? Did somebody just tantrum? Or maybe it was an infection. That was made of water, and I'm like 99% sure it popped like a balloon in one hit. Oh, yeah, I know that absolutely happens to... Like, if it was a blob composed of any liquid, yeah, they just kind of pop. Yeah, it must have been an infection. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I I don't see the rest of this conversation, so I'm confused, Baka. But that's okay. But yeah, that that that's probably the most powerful forgotten beast I've ever had. Nobody expects a big metal web-slinging horse. Yep. I mean, I certainly didn't. I certainly did not. Bloody shame. Telling Artho II is uh, taking the dwarf down to the to the crypt, I suppose. A sad day. Sad day in this fortress. Sad year, even. But yeah, in regards to tutorials, I will absolutely keep the tutorials coming. They will show up when I have the inspiration to make them. So. When I'm ready, I will make tutorials. Not gonna force it. Although a big metal um, web-slinging horse kind of sounds like something that you would see on a, like... Uh-oh, this one has got nothing on it. Uh, it sounds like something that you would see on the cover of a Judas Priest album. Speaking of their most recent album, it's not terrible. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. It's not terrible. The outpost liaison needs some weapon racks, so I can probably help you with that pretty quickly. This is their space, so let's give you some weapon racks. And some armor stands. And maybe a throne if I have it? No, I don't have it. All right, well then. Uh, let's go back down to here. Start throwing beds. Thunk, 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 thunk. Doop, doop. 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 Okay, well, that's all we got for right now. So, doors. Multi-bedroom this stuff. Go, nine more bedrooms made, which is not a bad start. And I can also see if we have any cabinets. I don't know if we do. Nope. Do we have any chests? Yes, we do have some chests. And we are in an ad break. Bedtime for you. We'll see you later, Shatner. Unless you're stuck in an ad and you don't see this. 
Uh, they are generated by the game. They're generated by your world, Bird Bones, if you can see this. You have a uh, turbo badge, so I assume you're not stuck in an ad, but... Um, they, they're generated at the beginning of the world. So when, when you world, when you generate the world, it generates hundreds of forgotten beasts for you. And there's a, there's a finite number of them in each world and you can actually run out of them, which is kind of fun. So some people go out on, on quests to catch every single known forgotten beast in their world and stuff. Yeah, no, uh, actually true. If it, if it was a if it was a Judas Priest album cover, it would be a giant metal horse shooting webs in leather on a motorcycle. <laughs> and that's also probably a Marvel Comics character. <laughs> There's so many random things in India. I mean, also all of the different types of music are procedurally generated like if you see dwarves performing music in a tavern and you click on the little magnifying glass next to them in the like units list um the little thingy uh said gives you a description of the music where it was written who wrote it and what kind of music it is what it sounds like it gives you descriptions of the structure of the music and uh the what, what, how, how do I word this? It gives you descript a text descriptions of the structure of the music, and that's also randomly generated at the beginning. Yeah, uh, d partially formed volcanoes is technically what those are. How do you know how many there are? Well, you could get a list from adventure mode, or not adventure mode. You could get a list from legends mode of all of the forgotten beasts, and how do you know that you've caught all of them? You write down a list. Because they're all listed in Legends, so you can see all the ones that are alive when you embark. So you make a list, and then you start catching them. Catch them in rooms, between bridges and such. There was somebody on Reddit who had like 800 before release. So before this this version launched on uh, Steam, there, there was one person on Reddit that had like 800 forgotten beasts in a fortress. Which is something. Any idea why? I don't know. Your doors are a bunch of horn dogs and keep making babies? I mean, dwarves learn skills really quickly. It's kind of up to you to teach them, usually. Um. Children are, in my opinion, the best migrants to get because you can completely teach them to do the thing that you need them to do for the fort. So I, I think kids are some of the most useful migrants you can get. You watch someone catch three dragons on their map uh, via Legends mode. A uh, very long process, three forts, but a really cool goal for them to chase. So that's neat. Wait, with, like, the goal of trying to get them all into the same fort? Or was there an, another goal in there that I missed? I don't need to put this door here. <laughs> that door can go elsewhere. Same with this door. This door can also go elsewhere. Got extra doors in here. Oops, all doors. You have two female hydras? Gotcha. You got two rocks, both female, hoping for a male. Yeah, and then you're going to get a male who's, like, not gonna breed. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had breeding pairs of rocks several times and never successfully bred a rock, which without knowing what I'm talking about with no context, that's gotta sound really stupid. <laughs> I've had many breeding pairs of rocks, but I've never managed to make them make baby rocks, which makes me sad. No pet rocks for you? Yeah, no pet rocks for me. Just cactus. And lettuce. See how this, um, uh-oh. Alcord is accusing Reza. So Reza is a dwarf that was tantruming a lot and is now an adult. So let's jump to our new captain of the garden and see what the punishment is. So we're, gonna, we're just going to go interrogate this dwarf. Give them a little interrogation. 
See how they do. Very drowsy, seriously injured. Did you just get beaten by the captain of the guard? Okay, so now you're previously injured. Yeah, it seems like you got punched pretty hard by this dwarf. Considering this dwarf actually killed has killed two dwarves now in the fort. Yeah, it's, it's, it's time for us to deal with this. I mean, sometimes you just got to cancel your biting demonstration to, you know, d d d convict someone of crimes, right? Um, so all of this used clothing is courtesy of the dwarves that died. So. Shaku, thank you very much for the 11th month, by the way. And continuing to support the stream. It really does mean a lot. Um, thanks for, you know, continuing to watch. One year after release. It, it, it feels kind of, you know, weird to me that it's been a year since release. And it's been a whole year now of me actually not being a very, very, very small channel. Just barely surviving. It's a weird thing to think about. It's like, oh, is this what success is? Continuing to do the thing that you've always done, except, like, with less stress about rent. <laughs> Which, frankly, that, that works for me. Um, Let's do this. X meant it was used. Yep. No, that that's that's hold over from the ASCII days. Like the hyphens and such, meaning different quality levels. Because like, pe people look at little pictures, right? And they go, little picture should de should tell me all the information. Uh, in an ASCII game, little picture doesn't give you any information. The little picture is literally just there as a form of communicating like additional details about the items. That's literally all it is. Um. I don't need all of these cages. I'm actually going to sell most of these empty ones. I'm just trying to cut down on clutter a little bit. Uh. Could sell a bunch of these large gems. Um. You have a single silver whip. Let's sell the non steel shields. Obviously, not the, the named Bismuth. Because I had a um, a trade caravan like stall and dump all their stuff. It was one of the human ones. So I've got a bunch of random crap that I don't need. <laughs> Just like sitting right here. Like, let's also let's get rid of all of this leather armor because I'm not going to use that. We're going to use steel. Let's also search for large. Make sure that these low boots are not set to be traded. They are not. Currently wearing an XX quality sock in real life, it might be time to say goodbye. If you can see your heel, your toes, and the top of your foot, and you have a sock on, it's probably, yes, a, 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 a very withered sock. Although, I'll be honest, to me, one of the best things ever, and I, I did this a couple times when I was younger. I haven't done it in years because now they just kind of become rags. But when I when I was younger, I used to take old T-shirts that were super ragged that I really liked, and I'd stitch the, the holes up 
and then I would fill it, fill them up with like pillow stuffing, make them into pillows. I haven't done that in a very long time. It used to be something I would do pretty regularly. Let's also uh, take children off of the, the, the nasty gerbs. Doors. Okay, kids. No longer refuse. No longer burial. Uh, let's check that intelligence because we... Subject uh, confessed to disorderly conduct, which is what we needed because... Oh, also, a thing. If you have a child who's tantruming a lot, and because you can't actually convict them of crimes until they're an adult, when they become an adult, if you interrogate them, they will confess to all of their crimes from the past. Um, also, for those of you who missed it, we were actually able to kill the reptile man Spearman. He did come back, uh, but we're still looking for additional thefts relating to that, so... Here's this thing I did when I was like, I wasn't five. I, I was I was a little kid, but M Monom wants to stay here for the purpose of entertaining. It's a dwarven bard. You know what? We'll accept the dwarven bard. Why not? They're still unloading. Some Irish merino wool socks for your wife on the uh, for the holidays, and she's wearing your, your 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 smart wools around the house. I uh, I have a merino wool toque that I wear at this time of year. It's great because it's like it's paper thin, but it keeps my ears warm. All right. Say so they'll be done eventually. What did they bring? Uh-oh. So, if things are purple, you can't actually sell them. These are contraband. I'm going to get in trouble if I sell those. So, can't sell those, but... Can sell the rest of this. I brought platinum nuggets. I'm going to buy those. Well, hmm. I could buy them gloves. Let's buy some gloves. Those dwarves something to acquire. Probably just food with the last of it. Because fruits are kind of hard to come by out here. I also don't even think I've shown off my... um. What's it called? My new... My new-ish, I guess, forge setup that I built for this fort. Because we've got a fully lava-powered forge inside of this glacier. There we go. Created for a bunch of meats. We'll just leave the contraband in there, and that's fine. All right. Sweet. So, as for my forge, uh, this is my forge. Which is in the lava area. Uh, this is where my royalty offices are. Can't wait to mess up your first time moving lava. Ah, it's not too bad. Just don't let the dwarves touch the hot bit. And then here I can make lava buckets if need be. So if I need individual pieces of lava, I can do that very easily there. So let's check in on beds. Uh, let's see how many dwarves need bedrooms still. It's probably a lot. Although we are doing actually quite well. Most of them have bedrooms. We still have a couple in the middle here who still need bedrooms. So let's let's do another let's do another batch. Shall we? Let's do a bunch down here by the hospital. 
It's kind of funny, um, because I've been playing some older versions of Dwarf Fortress, I'm having to, like, wrap my head around old Dwarf Fortress rules again. One of the things being noise pollution. So I'm, like, subconsciously thinking about noise pollution and, like, having to constantly remind myself, right, yeah, that got removed from the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's less the lava that it's it, lava doesn't tend to kill your whole fort, but like it does tend to waste your time a lot. It's very easy to like screw up one thing, and then have to like go back and fix it all later. It's it can be kind of a pain. Um, let's also get all these done. Funk, 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 funk. I think that's all of them. Yep, looks like it. Also, um, another thing that I've been dealing with in older versions. Uh, so back in the day, you know how everybody talks, uh, some people constantly talk about how much they love the old stair system and they don't like the new stair system very much? Well, back in the day, you could only do one layer of stairs at a time. So you had to create the upstairs, the downstairs, and the up-downstairs, but you could only do one layer at a time. <laughs> the amount of time it takes to make a flight of stairs and that version is a little something some more migrants have arrived so if you if you missed out on the last migrant wave you can say pick me now if you would like a dwarf assuming you do not currently have a dwarf in the port let's start off with somebody from chat stone aka c shores wall welcome to the fort ma'am uh she is a blacksmith a skilled warrior is a beautiful sight to behold, she says. Uh, she is consumed by over, well, overpowering feelings of jealousy. She is often sad and dejected and is not careful with resources when working on projects. She often spends unnecessary effort and lives a slow-going and leisurely pace and is moved by art and natural beauty. And she dislikes the natural world and generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. She has an active sense of imagination. Uh, and she is conflicted by this for more than one reason. With the narrow focus on the current activity, she finds obligations confining, though she is conflicted by this for more than one reason, and she has an active imagination. She greets others with a hug and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of creating a great work of art and personally values peace over war. Interesting dwarf. Uh, has no family in the fortress and has never killed anything. What's up, no man? Next up, we got uh, da 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 dwarf. Um, this is going to be. Alcourt, do you currently have a dwarf? No, because your dwarf died, right? So that, that'll be Alcord 2. Alcord 2, Alcordian, as we call him, uh, is uh, driven and rarely feels the need to pursue even a modest success. Tends to avoid crowds and has a tendency towards to go it alone without considering the advice of others. He is slow to trust others and he is curious and eager to learn. Um... He generally acts with the impartial and is rarely moved to mercy, and he is assertive, and he has a greedy streak, and he doesn't try to get things done perfectly and winks during conversations. Dreams of raising a family and personally is an absolute believer in the rule of law, finds maintaining decorum a silly and fumbling waste of time, and values good craft worship. Uh, so I refer to things that are contraband. Um, it's just a word I use. I don't know if it, it's probably the wrong word, but it's uh, basically banned exports. So, if I'm not allowed to export something, I just call it contraband because the dwarves get in trouble when they sell it. Um, because you can still sell it, they just don't like it. The Mountainous Lands wishes to reside in the Sunbirths. That's a good name, the Mountainous Lands. The question is, who the heck is the Mountainous Lands? Baron of Master Fountain. Okay, that's a pretty good name. The Earth of Grips. It's definitely the Dwarf Fortress equivalent of the Death Grips. Baron of Master Fountain. Chat, what do you think? Do I let a performance troupe of unknown number of people join the fortress? Because that's a really good name for a band. No, 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 said Sniper. Uh, wh wh what do you think, chat? Also, hey, Peter Sully. It's good to see you, dude. Maybe they'll bring clowns? Are they naked? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's see what we just got. Uh, a bunch of human poets. Um, we got a, a dwarven, two, uh, dwarven dancer, 
a, a human poet, 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 and a poet. Uh, so it looks like we just it's just a bunch of poets that we got. Which, honestly, not too bad. We, we can work with that. Let's get back to naming dwarves. So the last one we did was Alcord. Next up here is a fishery worker. This will be Cashmere Goat. Ooh. I think I spelled correctly. Also, if I misspell your name, just like yell at me. It's usually because my hand's on the wrong place on the keyboard. Or I misread. Um, she unerringly returns favors and has a profound sense of gratitude for the kind actions of others. She lives at a high energy and kinetic pace, and she forms strong emotional bonds with others, at times to her detriment. She rarely feels strong cravings or urges, and uh, she tends to share her own experiences and thoughts with others. She is often cheerful, and she likes a little excitement now and then. She is pleased by her appearance and talents, and she needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of mastering a skill and personally views loyalty unfavorably. What an interesting dwarf. Also no known relatives. I think this one's joined the military. Uh, next up, we have an administrator, and this administrator um, worships Pum Waspening. I haven't seen that god before. Uh, you're a member of the Doctrine of Clearing, a different religion. Interesting. Most of them are part of the Sect of Waving. I'm trying to find those pick-me's. Where are they? There they are. Uh, so this is Matt... Mad Walker with two two L's. So Mad Wall Kerr. So Mad Wall Kerr. Mad Walker. She is unable to make decisions without a great deal of input from others. She is very greedy, and she strongly prefers discussions and ideas of abstract concepts over handling specific practical issues. She has a she prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible and, is, and isn't particularly ambitious, occasionally overindulges, and has a calm demeanor. Her hands become animated when she's angry. She does jazz hands, and she needs alcohol to get through the working day and dreams of mastering a skill and personally doesn't and finds blind honesty foolish and doesn't care about nature one way or another and doesn't care about family one way or another and also is joining the military. Uh, down here. Hey, the number of super depressed dwarves is dropping. That's good. What else do we have? This will be, uh, might be Goose. Because, you know, it might be Goose. Uh, might be Goose never fails to seek out the most stressful and even dangerous situations. Is made deeply uncomfortable by differences in uh, culture and appearance. Uh... He is sometimes cruel and is a friend and uh, is a friendly individual, often envious, nervous of, he is often nervous and he has a greedy streak and he thinks that he's fairly important in the grand scheme of things, tends to be a little wasteful when working on projects and tends to hang on to grievances and is quite ambitious. He tends to be swayed by the emotions of others and he is, he occasionally overindulges dreams of mastering a skill and personally believes it is important to conceal emotions and refrain from complaining and prefers a noisy bustling life to boring days without activity. He's 19 years old and has a lot of family, actually. Um, his aunt glass half empty is dead. His uncle Uzel is also dead. But his his uncle Soxel is alive still. Um, although isn't actually a member of the fortress. He's just here as a guest. Um, Crow Crow Crowscare also died unfortunately. Rest in peace. And Doctor Funk, his cousin, is still alive, which is good. So at least he's got some family here. And I'm actually gonna put this dwarf into the military. You're, you're gonna go become a Marx dwarf. Might be Goose. Also, apparently you have two dwarves in this fort, so I will name this Might Be Goose 2. That's my bad. Um, all right. That clears everybody, and because I just double named a dwarf and there was one more pick me, I will name uh, another dwarf in the fort the final pick me, which is Bolanum. I will find a dwarf that isn't about to explode into anger. You can have this weaponsmith. Uh Bull. Hello. Mom. I have a question, chat. What is more concerning in this fort? The upset dwarves? Or the happy dwarves? You didn't realize you had a dwarf? Nah, that's fine. It's my bad. Um, 
She strongly has she has a strong tendency towards privacy and can be very happy and optimistic. She is very uh, friendly and she always tries to say nice things to others. She likes to brawl and occasionally finds herself to be quite hopeful about the future. She is brave in the face of of uh, brave in the face uh she's brave in the face of imminent danger and she prefers that everyone lives harmoniously as possible. First time here and you found me on YouTube because you got into DF again recently. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for watching. Dragonfly snack. Um, she tries to do things correctly each time and likes to take it easy and is often nervous. And she often interrupts others during conversations. She dreams of creating a great work of art and personally believes that those who sacrifice for others should be deeply respected. Sees guile and cunning as indirect and somewhat worthless. Does not care about family one way or another and does not particularly value the truth. Um, she hasn't killed anybody, but she does have a broken toe. All right, well, so far so good. Getting all this food stuff put down here. We should also brew drinks from plants and fruit. Let's do 250 from plants and 50 from fruit. I have no idea how much fruit we have, but we'll find out. Uh, let's also cook some simple meals. I need to check my kitchen settings. Let's make fine meals. Let's do 250 of those. Um, I'm just going to go to labor, kitchen. Okay, so I do actually want them cooking the majority of seeds. I don't want them cooking plump helmets, but they can. It doesn't actually matter all that much. Um, they can cook sweet pod seeds, uh, spelt seeds. They can cook the rock nuts, the red beans. Uh, red beans are delicious. They absolutely should cook those. Um... And then they can cook the carrot seeds. Um, do not cook my alcohol, please. And there we go. Maybe all the happy ones are longing to be necromancers. Generally, the super happy dwarves are just very personable and have a lot of friends. Or a lot of family around. But they can flip pretty quickly if their family all dies suddenly. So. <laughs> Which I guess makes sense. Question is, do I actually have a dwarf who's cooking? Do I even have, like, a place for dwarves to cook? So there's a tanner shop. I'm just going to grab this. And I'm going to... Do that. I'm going to put a kitchen in here. Let's select the material type. Just use the goblin caps. Yeah, there's snow everywhere in this fortress. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to clean that up, to be honest with you. It's okay, though. It's more just the fact that there's teeth everywhere that's actually the issue. Okay, let's see. Did all those new dwarfs get armor? Yeah, they look armored. Armored up. Good to see. Tunics, low boots, low boots. I don't think they'll clean snow up, no. Um, the, the, the kind of... The one thing that I think I could maybe do to fix this... Ooh. You guys want me to try some really stupid science? So if I make a lava-safe box here, two tiles wide, fill it up with lava buckets, and then above that put grates, do you think it would melt the snow as they walk in. Uh, giant jaguars and leopards. I think it's two, two leopards and a jaguar. So we got Sir Meows a lot, who's a jaguar and then two leopards, or it's vice versa. It's a unique system. I know this. 
Because I can make lava buckets. So that part would be pretty quick to do. So it's just... It would be a matter of melting the snow off the dwarves. But we'd have to do it on the upper layer too. Because the dwarves also walk in this way. Um... So maybe I, I I put one here and one here. I mean, it wouldn't stop them from just walking down and into the fort, but it doesn't tend to end up down here so much. It's mostly just th those two. You think that might work? Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's guaranteed to work, but it might work. We're currently waiting in an ad, so we'll, in a minute we'll get started on this mini project. Although, realistically, I should just, I should just be building uh, a library. That's realistically what we should be building. Yeah, no, the elves have been bringing us some pretty cool animals. Iron Pit. It also means I'm going to have to remove the ice around the edges of it. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll have melting problems. It might also melt the floor, though. Not if I um, surround it with constructed stuff. A, li a library with magma. <laughs> That's like a, you know... Well, we're going to build a better li library with, with, with lava and volcanoes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all these walls, and I'm going to replace those with built walls. Then I'm going to dig a little trench there, and I'm going to dig a little trench down here. Uh, it really depends on, on the elves, right? Sometimes they bring cool animals, and sometimes they don't. It really depends on if they have them, right? Which is how trading works in all types of this game is just, well, it depends on if they have cool animals to, you know, give you, I suppose. Because if they don't, then you get none. Also, by the way, this the uh, them spreading stuff around with their feet when they walk around is actually a setting that you can enable and disable. So if you don't want your fortress to just be, like, full of mud and blood and dirt and stuff that dwarves spread around, you can turn that off. I like leaving it on because I think it looks cool. I actually really like it when they slowly fill up my fortress with random contaminants. But if you are very specific about keeping things clean looking, you can do that as well. You know, I'm going to be honest. I, I think that recovering from that disaster was way easier than I was expecting. Got a dwarf that was struck by melancholy. Okay, some dwarves are just depressed still, but... It is still... It's been less of a problem than I was expecting. Resmoothing will remove it. You mean snow? Uh... I mean, you can't smooth stuff multiple times. I mean, constructing floor and deconstructing floor will remove it. Um, I, I don't know what you mean by re-smoothing. I think smoothing removes it. I, I've never tried, to be honest. I mean, I, I could try deconstructing the floor and reconstructing the floor, but... I know constructing floors makes it go away, so that would that would fix it. Hello, Mr. Mac. And Lazarus, nineteen ninety eight. Good day. Hello. Happy Tuesday. Reza Darkside, the weaponsmith, has gone berserk. Well, that dwarf has been going crazy as long as that dwarf has been in the fort, including killing two dwarves. So, that's a bloody shame, but, you know, it is what it is. In a berserk rage. gonna say a child just walked that way oh boy human ran by oh no not Cyril not the kid god damn it 
You killed a child, Reza. That's a child. I realize that like most of your family is dead, but like your your two bro your two older brothers are still alive. War dog is attacking him. Lord Ubda, creator of an artifact, Baron of Sunbirths, or Duke of Sunbirths even, is fighting. Blood flying everywhere. You know, I, I never really noticed that you can actually see like tiny little blood particles flying off them at all times, which is interesting. Our Duke is uh, seriously injured. And the merchants have embarked on their journey. I'll have to get the, the Duke into the hospital in a moment here. The Duke of Sunbursts, the weaponsmith, punches the weaponsmith in the head with his right hand, bruising the muscle. The force pulls the neck, tearing the fat. The, the Duke of Sunbursts punches the weaponsmith in the head with his right hand, bruising the muscle. And after ceasing to be enraged, he says, I was rescued. I am not feeling very grateful. It also needs new clothes. It needs new clothes. Although that may also have be have something to do with the fact that like when they get into a fight, they usually lose their clothing because their clothing gets damaged because it acts as armor, so it eats the what's it called? It, it eats it eats the uh, a lot of, a lot of the, the 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 blunt force physical damage. Um, actually, hold on. Am I currently weaving thread? Because I don't think I am. Okay, we're not collecting webs, but I am weaving thread. I'm going to turn web collection back on. But uh, let's see how much cloth we have. Quite a good amount of cloth. So we are going to, uh, let's just say, make 50 of each piece of clothing. So let's do cloth, trousers... Cloth, sock, cloth, shoe, uh, let's do silk glo gloves, and silk tunics. Maybe uh, 50 yarn dresses. Wait. Is there a way to transport lava in buckets? So I keep talking about something called lava buckets. They're not actually buckets. You have to use minecarts. But uh, the, the term lava bucket is used to refer to minecarts. Look at all this stuff falling down here. Because they are actively using my automated trash dumping thing. And it's just full of body parts from stuff. Like all this stuff just going out. Look at all this. Look at all that. It's absurd. There's so much. Okay, let's get this corner done. You can haul a minecart by hand because worse. Yeah, absolutely, Tygo. Absolutely. How are you doing today, Tygo? Were you ever able, were you ever able to get Adom up and running? So I do have to keep the fortress from melting. If it does melt the stuff beneath it, that is not inherently a problem. Remember, everybody, uh, constructed ice walls are lava safe. So you don't need to worry too much about uh, what material you make your, your walls out of.
Okay, we got that done. And I just need to wait for this. And then we can see if I can fill this up with lava. Although I need grates first. Might, might as well just put, like, like steel grate. Just make ten of them, I guess. Because I have quite a lot of steel. That's something I haven't really let on about this fort um, today, is our steel supply is pretty plentiful. Uh, we got, what, 839 steel bars? But we're doing all right <laughs> when it comes to steel. Next week is final week of the school year, so you, uh... Yeah, okay. So you need to sift through a pile of bullshit fast? Yeah, I getcha. No rest for the wicked. So, the way lava buckets work is you take minecarts... And you make a little stop that dumps in. That's it. And then what you do is you, in in my case, make a lava bucket minecart track. You attach a iron minecart to it. I don't actually know where this is. What is this? What are you filled with? Oh, we were doing testing, weren't we? This one may already have lava in it. <laughs> that one probably already has lava in it. Turns out there's probably uh, more than one student in this fort. Or not in, in this fort. In, in, this, in this chat. Um, so now we're going to, I guess, place... Nope, that's coffin. Uh... So I need to go to the lava buckets thing. So that should get moved, right? And it should be moved to right here. One of these. Uh, Quizzo, no, your, your dwarf fortress died in the in the massive um, brawl that happened in the tavern. Unfortunately, it's a bloody shame. Okay, there it is. So the tracks, the vehicle's been placed. I don't know if it's set to be kicked. I should set it to be kicked. Yep, okay. So lava, the, the minecart's been set to kick or be kicked. Now we just wait. What's up, Cedric? Over in the YouTube chat. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, your dwarf didn't make it. So, uh, not a, a whole lot of dwarves. We're, we're lost in, in that event, and yours was one of them. An empty of desired items, sure. Now we just wait for a dwarf to come kick it. How's my lettuce? Uh, I've I've made two salads so far. Um, but uh, the lettuce that I've harvested um, is already full and ready to be harvested again. So... Um, yeah, pre pretty happy with how it's been going. So then what you do once you've filled your minecart up with lava is you remove that minecart from the lava bucket. And then I think I can just delete this one because this was just for testing. And then you go to your new location where you want the lava to be transported to. You make a one-off route with one single stop. You remove all of the properties and you find your lava minecarts. So I've got two, actually. I got one down in the basement, which we can also bring up. And then you tell the dwarves to bring it up and uh, dump it in. And I'm actually going to make a second one real quick, just so that I can get that other one up here, too. Um, each minecart only holds one of seven. Or, sorry, three, three of seven lava. So you need to make sure that you have... Um, You need to make sure that you dump in enough at a time so they don't cool off. I have no idea, Sniper, what? Place track vehicle. 
Then you have this dwarf carrying this minecart that's full of lava. Takes them a little bit. 12 by 12 magma piston. Have you recorded your magma pistons going off yet? Is this a repeatable magma piston or is this a one-off magma, magma piston? <clears throat> it's repeatable, cool. The, the impressive part isn't the fact that they're carrying it, Shadow Absorber. The impressive part is the fact that they're not catching fire while carrying it. <laughs> At least that's, imp that's the impressive part to me, is that they're not on fire while carrying it. It's like, you'd think that holding a minecart that's actively full of lava would be a little bit tough on the thingies, but you never know. <laughs> Educational stuff. I, I find it really funny that some people refer to, like, anything video game tutorialization wise at to be educational <laughs> it's educational sure it's teaching you a very specific set of skills skills that you can acquire after a very long career skills that make me a nightmare to i don't know some people um so let's 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 remove this minecart and put it back into the lava buckets i don't know if that's this one specifically but Although, uh, something I should do, actually, is I should go down to here. And uh, for this stockpile, I should just add steel minecarts. Are they considered furniture? <laughs> yeah, they are. Okay, so... Um, let's do that. Metal minecarts go here. Just so that they're kept closer. Um, and I'm going to flat jump up here. Uh-oh. Wow, well, that's that's drying up really quick. I'm going to have to get a couple down here pretty quick. And then I'll also make stop 15. Place you here. Throw the other minecart on there. Remove all this. It's an interactive geology textbook. You can't change my mind. All right. I, I always thought of it as an interactive art project, but I mean, you do you. So I think this is working. And the reason I say I think this is working is look at this patch of snow that melted. Man. That's sad. Child stricken by melancholy. All right, so this minecart got landed there. Let's wait. Thunk, done. Then remove minecart from lava buckets. Uh, add minecart to this, uh, add minecart to lava bucket. And then route 15, get the other one. And that's just how this works. And you just kind of repeat that and just kind of keep it going. Although we'll see if we can actually get this full to a point where it's useful. Goes all the way across. Um, then what I can do is I can say, well, you're full, so I can remove this minecart from here. And we could jump back down to here. Wait for another one to go off. And fill up. Another way of doing this as well 
is you can go uh, one by one and fill up every single lava bucket. So every single minecart. Although the problem is, is the sprites disappear when they're full. It's a bit of a pain. You want to buy an animal of the other sex. Is there an easy way of knowing which animals you need to buy? If you have a royal, the humans will send traders. Um, and they, if you have a noble in your fortress, so like a duke, a duchess, or a king or a queen, um, you're, the humans will send, um, what's it called? People who, like trading people who can, uh, who you can request specific stuff from, like your mountain home. Uh, but that's the only instance of that that I can think of off the top of my head. Base track vehicle, okay. You look like you're going up. Then we've got another one here. Sweet. Got another one that's full. So let's go to the lava bucket. Um, let's remove you. And add in another one that's empty. And then route 14. You can have this one. I managed to keep swapping them constantly. This is a tedious process using lava buckets. Uh, currently, it's set to 200, yeah. Hydralisk. But it, it, it changes from fort to fort. There we go. Okay, so both of these are empty now, or at least one of them is empty now. Why do I, I keep, I keep hitting the wrong ones. Okay, so you, not that, this one goes away. Yeah, still working on those cannons, Rosta. So now what we need is I need a dwarf to walk in this way and we need to see if it works. So let's pull this lever, close the trading door and find out. Cause I need to see a dwarf run across this. So what I guess I'll do is I will station these dwarves out here. Let them run through the snow. Get all nice and covered in snow. And then let them come back in. Uh, it does show their sex when you're buying it. It gives you a little symbol next to it. So this dwarf has snow on them. You can see because they have that little snow background. Let's see if this works. Look at that! It does! Wow. All right. Cool. Haha, <laughs> you're 12. <laughs> no, you're not, actually. Um, streamer said the sex word. Anyway, uh, we're, we now have another lava bucket full. So this can get removed, and this can get put on Route 14. This one is empty as well. I can go up here and I can just place a, mi a minecart on that again and get another one filled. Lava solves all problems. It certainly solves problems. I know. I don't know about all problems. Um, we have a dwarf who's taken by a strange mood, just a possession. It's weird how that actually works. I'm very happy that that works. Giant leopards stare into your soul whenever they see them. I'm, gl I'm glad they're staring at somebody. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't say the word coitus in this Christian Dwarf Fortress server. And the best part about this entire conversation, especially like this fake outrage here, is the fact that the whole conversation started initially talking about like 
breeding animals. Like, it's not even, <laughs> it didn't even come from, like, a place of weirdness. It was literally just someone talking about breeding animals. Now Chad's like, streamer said sex. My neighbors probably think I'm insane. Anyway, um, what do you need? You need gems shining? Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bricks, got it. Bars of metal, got it. Locks and bricks, got it. Bones, yes. Probably bones. It's been a minute since I slaughtered anything. So let's slaughter something. Let's slaughter something. I also need to go into the caverns soonish and uh, fight that forgotten beast. Fortunately, I keep forgetting about it, so. Um. Let's slaughter that stray alpaca. Let's do that. Also, how's the clothing doing? Cool, coming along. Animal husbandry has not accepted speech on Twitch. Fortunately, like, Twitch obviously has, like, limits to the things you can say on this platform. But, oh my god, it's so much more lenient than YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is, YouTube became such a weirdly... Like, protective platform as of late. It's genuinely a little bit bizarre to me. Lunchy time, you enjoy your lunchy? Elfie. I realized this morning I have no cheese, so my lunch is going to be very boring today. <laughs> yeah, you can see it in the unit screen. It's, it's, it's right there. Cheese for no one today? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Recall there was a fine gentleman called Filthy Frank on YouTube. He left at the right time. I never liked Filthy Frank because I never found his stuff to be particularly funny. He was always just kind of like, I, 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 hate, I hate this word, but the kids, as the kids would say, I always found him to just be kind of cringe and not particularly funny. But he makes like actual music now, doesn't he? Oh, probably. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's people who like his music, but. Um. Did a, did a dwarf just like burst into flames? Oops. Because this dwarf just saw a dwarf die. Um, <laughs> or saw something die. Awkward. Um, hmm. Maybe we have to be careful with those lava buckets, if you know what I'm saying. Speaking of lava buckets, is there a full lava bucket? Can I swap these out? Uh-oh. Hmm. Well, anyway, apparently I do, in fact, have this. Taiga, welcome back for the 35th month. Good to have you. Appreciate the continued support, sir. Let's see if I can transport that one up there. No idea where it actually is, but. And let's throw another one in. Yeah, I'm kind of amazed that this whole thing works. Yeah, sometimes lava just splashes. I think that's what happened. Lava just splashed. <clears throat> I am kind of amazed that this setup works. <laughs> Did someone just get promoted to the hottest dwarf of the month? Um, sure.
And just remember, there are no negative thoughts for dwarves that are on fire. So if your dwarves catch on fire, they will die in the exact mood that they were in before they caught on fire. Only 12 dwarves hauling gems. Probably um, some creature made of fire, like a uh, fire imp or a lava man burning down a tree. Unless you can actually see what's happening. That's probably what it is and usually what it is. If there's just like random stuff burning somewhere. So if there's just random stuff burning somewhere, it is likely that it is some creature made of fire just kind of chilling in the basement. Burning stuff. Burning stuff, you know, as they do. We're in an ad right now, so... Only wussy humans cry about being set on fire. I mean, as a wussy human who's been on fire before, the one time I was on fire, I was mostly just perplexed as to why I was hearing sparks and smelling smoke. Manticore Alpha, thank you very much for the 10th month. I would not recommend being on fire, though. even though it was largely just a confusing experience. I would very much recommend against it, though. I was on fire once. Uh, it didn't look fun. He's right. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, um, long story short, my hair got set on fire when I was younger. Being blasted with 140c steam is also not a very pleasant experience. Ow. Yeah, can't say I've done that. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there there is some magma mist that comes up. But there's no real way to avoid that. Alright, well, let's go here. So you're hauling this up. The problem is I don't think there's actually a way here to... What's the word? I don't think I have a way of clearing out the rest of this snow. Now the question is, do I leave these minecarts here as decoration? Because it's full now. It's as full as it's getting. Do I leave these minecarts here as decoration or do I remove them? I kind of want to leave them. I think, I think they look kind of nice. Also, thanks everybody for all the follows, by the way. I'm getting a bunch of followers today. Best thing you got is getting electrocuted. Oh, I've been electrocuted a good number of times. I got electrocuted so bad once it launched me backwards and I woke up sitting against a cabinet. <laughs> I was at my old job. I finished that shift too <laughs> without like going to a doctor or anything. I literally got up and finished finished the day at work. There's a bunch of um my count's teeth on the ground. Um, So, carts are cute. Make a dining hall out of one, like an old-school diner? Hmm. Uh, Evidence Self died. Well, I know what happened to Evidence Self. They caught fire. And uh, this child has been going insane for a bit, so that checks out. It's a damn shame, though. Um, Evidence Self I will make into... Or I, I will make a slab for. Kid's just going to get buried, though, so. I'll go up to here. And also, to the people asking if I'm going to do more, like, videos of older versions of Dwarf Fortress, I'm stream. I I'm going to keep streaming older versions of Dwarf Fortress for a little bit. As long as I need footage for Noclip, um, I'm going to be doing occasional short streams of older versions of Dwarf Fort, so that'll keep happening for a little bit. How old is your dwarf? Assuming they're still alive. Uh, your dwarf is pissed. Uh, 15. Blissful after sleeping in a very good bedroom. You learned about weaponsmithing recently. You're a talented weaponsmith. And you're a child. You gotta love it. Sleeping under the rowdy dancing floors. 
I'm um, going to go to here, and I'm going to type in teeth. Tooth. I guess teeth can't get sorted. Um, let's just go to body parts. Because <laughs> um, there's a lot of teeth just, like, sitting around the fort. We should just get, mix all those, get, get rid of them. Um, all right, let's jump back to that strange mood and see where you're at. Did you ever get your bones? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. All right, well, in that case, we'll butcher two wolves, or not two wolves, two war dogs, and another dog. Because I do have logs, I'm pretty sure that's not an issue. He says. Yep, plenty of plenty of wood. That's not an issue. Logs ain't the issue. Um Blocks bricks. He's got bar iron bars and microcline currently. Bones, yes. Rough color. Oh, true. It could be gems. Do I have rough gems? I've got to have rough gems. Yes. And do you have rough gems? Okay, lots of logs. Lots of cut gems. Lots of blocks and bricks. Bars and metal. Blocks and bricks. Bones, yes. Do you want specific materials? Is, is that what this is? It's dog leather back plaque packs and catapult parts. It's horn blend and bronze. Well, I don't have the stuff to make bronze. Let's melt that one platinum we have, though. Glass? No, there's nothing about glass. Um, about three months. There is nothing about glass in here. It says gems shining, box bricks, bars metal, box bricks. It's yes. Rough color. Tree life. Gems shining, box bricks. Yeah, he didn't say anything about glass. Which is interesting, because this is one of those ones where it's like, well, I have all that stuff. I have cut gems. Tons of cut gems. I've already gone through everything. I, I, I have everything that he needs. The only thing that like I don't have is active butchered animals. So let's wait for an animal to get butchered and see if he goes. Rough color is uncut gems. Burning forest is glass. Baca glass has named a steel short sword. There we go. Okay. It was just a corpse that he needed. Just a dog. I thought we already did that, but I guess he'd like didn't grab the first one. Because you'd cut all of your gems. Yeah, I mean I, I've lost dwarves to strange moods because like I thought that I had a material, but I didn't. Plenty of times. So now we got dog bone. There you go. Investments are open for those who care. So when it comes to the snow in the fort, what I, I have two options. I can manually go and construct and deconstruct flooring on every single tile, or I could use DF hack to get rid of it, or we could go with option three and just ignore the snow and just not worry about it so much. Because I assume it'll eventually get cleaned up. But.
Took your last spider silk thread. It's very rare for them to actually want thread specifically. Also, usually if you have a hospital set up, they will actually just go take the thread out of the hospital. Which I think is kind of funny. Because thread specifically gets put into hospitals, right? So we've got more gems, more blocks and bricks. Okay, so I'm just forbidding both of these minecarts so that they don't get um, removed from here. And then I'm going to delete uh, these bottom two minecart routes. Aerith has been found dead, dehydrated. Rest in peace to that child. And, uh... Evidence Self's memorial can go right there. And I can place the last grate. Right here. Uh, no, we just did the name dwarves for the first seven. If you want a dwarf, just, like, ask me nicely. <laughs> because we, we have spares around now. That was just for the initial seven. Because turns out... It's kind of difficult um, to decide who the first seven dwarves are going to go to. Um, I'm going to just make a really big... I mean, not really big, but... A chunky... Finished good stockpile. I'm just going to do that. But just nothing metal. So armor doesn't end up in there. How's your dwarf? Assuming they're alive... Yeah, your, your dwarf didn't make it. Um, probably died in the really big tavern brawl that we had. We lost like 30 dwarves in like a minute. <laughs> so it was it was a, it was hard times for the fortress. Very hard times. So shouldn't put mugs in here. Turns out I got a lot of random crap. <laughs> Cybrek has created an Casal, an iron spear, and offers it to the Frosty Beards. This is an iron spear. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with emerald cut pink jades and encircled with bands of cushioned microcline cabochons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of microcline and uh, menaces with spikes of iron and microcline. On the item is an image of Lord Ubda, uh, the dwarf and in and low boots in dog bone lord abda is admiring the low boots the artwork relates to the image of effie mdn the dwarf in tunnel tube um on the item is an image of effie mdn the dwarf in tunnel tube effie mdn is laughing the artwork relates to the fey mood of the dwarf effie mdn uh in bolts legend <clears throat> sorry i right clicked of uh, EFE MDN Bolts Legend in Sunbirths in the mid winter of 101. On the item is an image of a traction bench in Rotolite. Now, where should that go? Also, uh, EFE MDN has passed away since. So, rest in peace to that dwarf. But, uh, where should that? I think that maybe. Yeah, I think we, we put it into the church. Down here, I think is what we do. Also, do I currently have a religious dwarf? I do. The Holy Finn, recognize. But this will, I think, let us... Well, it'll, it'll increase the value pretty drastically. Oh, shit. One, it's party time. And two, we have a necromancer experiment hangout. Come on, chat, you know what to do. I 
like how this dude's an adequate gilder. He's a dismal hunter. That's a good name. Pokemaniac, yes, this is all in-game music. This is the video game's soundtrack. Um, and parties like this song only plays when there's a certain number of dwarves and citizens in the tavern and they're uh, partying. So it's, a, it's actually kind of hard to make that song play. Although currently they're mostly telling, they're mostly, um, telling stories and reciting poetry. Um, they're telling the story of how the Cyclopean group fully was fully incorporated into the League of Bridging under the leadership of the human Pebu Ropelocked. Huh. So there's a group called the League of Bridging, and the so Cyclopean group fully incorporated into that faction. That's cool. Um, and uh, so the humans are telling us stuff, basically. And uh, the poetry that's being recited is, uh, My Friend Alliances. Uh, is an example of the fancy glosses. Uh, the work is no particular particular subject, and the poetry is masterful. Uh, it is a dramatic poetic form, or a uh, form concerning current events, originating in the noble confederations, which I think is a human sin as well. Uh, it's not Boogeyman. Uh, the ta tavern just had a um, what 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 was it called? A necromancer experiment, not a Boogeyman. Who, by the way, I'm just going to interrogate because actually, can I even? Yes, I can. Um. Let's just go to visitors. Unless he literally just left the map. Yep, already left the map. Should have gotten to that quicker. Oh, well. Got so many barons in here, but that's okay. I'm going to interrogate the general, because I think this is my faction's general. Yeah, this dwarf. You're legendary at something. What, what are you legendary at? Competent dancer. Well, checks out. Wait, hold on. You're not legendary at anything? Then why are you blinking? This visitor has come. <laughs> I like the, the, the very specific dialogue in this video game. Yeah, it is the citizen and general of the insightful handles. So I'm going to interrogate this person because often important figures in factions, uh, let's just say, embezzle funds. Straining the soundtrack on Tidal a lot during your workday. It's just so good, great and great background music and you can stick it on loop. Yeah, I also have the, um, the, the record for it and I uploaded the entirety of that to my YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube and type in Dwarf Fortress soundtrack vinyl, you'll, you'll find my recording of it. Obviously, it's it's not going to sound as good as Tidal, likely, but another interesting format for the very good soundtrack that it is. Okay, let's see. Did, did you admit to any crimes? Let's find out. Met with subject and appealed to the shared worship of same god in order to elicit information. Uh, the subject trusted interrogator and agreed no information was revealed. Good. So we, we have trustworthy general in this fortress. Um, let's... See what else. I love the fact that this game will let you interrogate a forgotten beast. 
I just that that is wonderful to me. <laughs> that's that's all I have to say. That's just it's just wonderful. I love that that's a thing. This is also a good way of um training my interrogation skill and intimidation skill and a bunch of other skills that are useful on the captain of the guard. It's like when you go into an airport and then they ask you all the questions about where 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 are you coming from? Where are you going? All, all that stuff. You're a sucker for releases like that? Yeah. What would the beastie say? Brrr! And then you die, probably. Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? I haven't thought about that song in a minute. All right. Well, I could probably take these two squads underground and check in. How come you don't have most of your gear equipped? Why do you have such shitty gloves? Hmm. Well then. All right, uh, let's just do some steel armor then. Uh, steel greaves. Steel breastplate. Steel... Gauntlets. Uh, steel low boots. Steel helm. We'll just do 30 of each. Um, what else do I need? Low boots. I find it kind of interesting that all of, like, my military's clothing is rotting off. <laughs> um, oh, let's breastplates. Let's also, let, let's do, um, let's do pants as well. Let's do, uh, steel leggings and steel male shirts. Let's do steel greaves. Did I already type in greaves? Oh, let's that, 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 yeah. Okay. And then, then let's just do 30 of each. Because I got tons of steel, might as well use it. Oh, I'm making two rounds of greaves. Let's play. 30. Gauntlet. 30. And then steel bolts. Let's just make 40 of those. This is all of the gear and stuff that realistically should probably be melted down. But hasn't been yet. Yeah, this is all, all my weapons and such, and it, so much of it's still getting put away. But we've got this problem right now where they're swapping stockpiles. Why is this? Okay, that's kind of messed up. I broke that. And with this. Maybe, oh, I, I actually, I know why. I know why I did that. Anyway, I fixed it. <laughs> okay, so, um, I can also go back down to this church and we can recognize a high priest now uh, because it's almost got enough worshipers anyway. So now I have a hyphen and <laughs> I don't think this game intentionally made a pun, but so so the the sect of waving is the god of rivers, basically. Um and it's the most popular god in this fort. And I just think it's really funny that their high priest is called a hyphen. <laughs> it's a hyphen. Congratulations, recognize you're now a hyphen. 
Uh, let's find somebody else who's named to uh, become our new Holy Finn. GM70 seems like they, they, they would be skilled with this. So GM70, congratulations. You are now a Holy Finn and uh, recognize you're now a hyphen. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, they're meditating on river. Yeah, it's a hyphen. Hmm? That is hysterical. Update equipment. There we go. Some of these new dwarves. Get new boots. We also need backpacks, among other things. So now I can open up this upper thing. The problem is, is this will still spread snow into the fort. So I guess since this system works, it's time to build another one. So let's do it again. Because it does clearly work. Those don't need to be dumped, what? Holy Finn G Finn is a nice has a nice ring to it. It does kind of have a nice ring to it, yeah. I mean we can try and make something like that happen. G Finn the Holy Finn. Not to be confused with the great band Holy Fawn. <laughs> Completely unrelated. What, Holy Fawn? Never heard of Holy Fawn? To be fair, not many people have heard of Holy Fawn. They're a pretty small band. You know, actually, I might... It's a little small. I think I'm going to put an extra block right there. Make this a little smaller. We'll do that. Let's do a few tiles of mudstone. So let's just make sure they can get into the fort still. Yeah, okay, so they, they're just going this way now. Which makes which makes sense. Also, let's check my bars. How many bars do I actually have? I've got 83 iron, 90, okay, copper. And I am really tempted to just make lead furniture. Um, I think I'm just gonna make lead cabinets and lead chests. Um, we'll do 30 of each. I think Dark Stone is my favorite song by them. So now we're stuck in an ad break, so pause. I, uh, I need to use the toilet. Since there's ads running, I'm going to go take a real quick toilet break. Back in a sec.
Also, to those of you who keep asking me about my seedlings, that's my romaine right now. Which, not bad. Not bad. How big do I let them get? Um, until I get hungry, <laughs> basically. I mean, baby greens and like are just more tender and sweeter, so. Oh boy. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can kill a uh, a tall man. Um, okay, so first things first. Add these children into this one. Turn that on. I kind of want to fight it. But we don't know where it's going to enter. Ooh. If we can get it to come up this way, I could probably catch it. But also try and fight it in the process. So I'm going to station my Marx Dwarves up here. Let's see where this bronze thing is. It's right here. It's the Singed Spike, is the name of it. It has 46 notable kills and 154 other kills. Um, its first kill was in year 9, and it's killed all the way up to the year 94. It's the enemy of basically everybody. And it has no items, just some snow on its feet. So it's coming straight for us. Making a beeline. Wait, it killed giant koalas? <laughs> I didn't see that. Wow, and, and giant dingoes, grizzly bears, horses, giant ravens. Giant opossums, giant tar cells, 11 elves, giant flying squirrels. Right, I'm just going to go down here real quick and lock this door. Otherwise, these may cause... Well, I can leave this one unlocked. That's fine. Where are you going? Oh, wow, it really was just going straight for this door, isn't it? Hmm. I'll bet you. Okay, we're going to be ballsy, because I want to fight this thing. I'm going to station my military, my Mark's Wars right there. And I'm going to bring out the Cold Slayers. We're going to station them there. Oh, 
Oh, I see where I screwed up. I closed the wrong door. I was supposed to close this bridge. But I didn't. It's okay. Or it should be okay. The dwarves won't see them until they're up top. This is going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, an old DF, he would just demolish the door. All right, so the bolts start flying almost immediately. Uh, the creature is seriously injured. Steel bolt strikes it in the right lower leg, fracturing it, and the bronze colossus falls over. These steel bolts may actually kill it pretty quick. Steel bolt strikes the bronze colossus, fracturing it. Turning it into a pin cushion. Yeah, no, continuing to... Oop. Sucker felt jumped into the lava and is now climbing up the side of the wall, I think. Um. Hmm. Well, he's caught in a pool of lava. Bolts are still hitting him, I think. Yeah, looks like it. Did. Oh. Well, he died. <laughs> He's now a puddle of molten bronze. So, rest in peace, Bronzy. Well done, dwarves. We did it. Yeah, I'm kind of sad, actually. I was hoping they would just, like, you know, kill it. But I guess we don't get that. But good job to the dwarves, I gotta say. He could self-terminate. Yeah, he did the Terminator thing. He jumped into the lava. All right. Well, because we, we're in a, a fighty mood anyway, let's leave this on. And let's go down here and clean out the, the, the caverns, because I think it's time to do that. We'll send the squads down here. We're going to send the Mark's dwarves down here. And let's open this door up. Although, before I do that... I'm going to uh, go to labor and stop collecting webs. And likely we're going to get hit by some cavern creatures first. Legit Terminator death? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. JFO has become a sword master. Where are you going? Right, I'm in location. All right. Seeming you're going to go get bolts, right? Yeah, you are. He knew that this would happen. Weaponsmith Stone, aka Seashore's Wall, was fighting and is screaming, I must withdraw. So he ran back in. Um. Okay, cavern critters are coming in, and we're starting to fire bolts at them. Uh, the main military squads have run down and have started clearing out the first few. Uh, Darius is cleaning up bodies for us. Got other dwarves running out to go store items, which is fine, largely. What are you grabbing? Ventos91, thank you very much for that Prime subscription for a second month. Welcome back. It is good to have you. A black cap bucket. 
Well, that's important. Um, was the pool of bronze guy blood on the edge moat edge too? Blood? They don't bleed. So I'm, I'm not sure how it could be that. All right, so where is that forgotten? Be Actually, where, where are all these creatures? Um, okay, well, this, this one's about to arrive and die. But I think I'm just going to station the military out here. I'm just going to send these guys out to here to just deal with this. Um, we're going to get the Cold Slayers patrolling the caverns. Uh, we'll follow... You know what? We'll, we'll follow uh, Kashmir Ghost, who's a wrestler, as they walk around the fort. To clean out the caverns. And uh, we also are going to kill the Forgotten Beast that is stuck. Which, is it the Slayer? Are they down here? There is a Forgotten Beast around here somewhere that is stuck behind trees. It can't get out. And I would like to kill it. It's I, I want to say it's a mite. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Okay. So this one I want to kill. But in order to get to this one, we have to get through the other one, which I think is around the stairs or the ramp up. Assuming it hasn't moved. There's that ramp. Might as well just look for it. Unless they killed it. Because Yugath is mine, right? Yeah, that's my pet. Um, well let's just let's just follow Diamond around this lap of the caverns. Andre the regular guy is in a martial trance or was in a martial trance, and we just uh, discovered another round of these. Andre the regular guy appears to be the first one in combat with the cavern creatures. Dispatched pretty quickly. And uh, down here we've got Baka Glass, who's taking out the cavern creatures with their named short, short, short sword, which was originally made by unemployed Shaka. Dwarf is also doing pretty well with quite a few kills now. Small handful of kills, if nothing else. Okay, let's just let them finish this lap. Uh-oh. Frame rate went bye-bye for a second. I'm sure it'll figure itself out. There's probably something fighting somewhere. Is something on fire, perhaps? No, it doesn't appear to be on fire. Ah, I, I feel like it was probably just the discovery of all the different creatures. So, we're going to bring these two squads down to where this creature is, because we can't actually get to it. So we're going to go station right here. And I'm assuming they can actually station here. Uh, Dolscala, thank you very much for the third month with Prime. Welcome back. Thanks for the two uh, resubs, by the way. It's been 45 minutes since the last ones. Cheers. I know you guys just posted beers, but could I get a couple more beers? Would it be a bad idea if you gave your dwarves hammers and or axes? Uh, not sure if there are enemies that are vulnerable to certain weapons and resistant to others. Are you asking in general, or are you asking if I should give every single one of my dwarves weapons? I don't like giving every single one of my dwarves weapons for a variety of reasons. Um, but uh, is it a bad idea? I mean, it's not a bad idea to give your dwarves different kinds of weapons. It really de depends on what you want them to do do if that makes any sense like it what 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 you really want is you want dwarves that have weapons that are um if you're fighting against enemies that bleed you want cutty weapons if you want if you're fighting against enemies that don't bleed you want bonky weapons or is kind of the rule of thumb so if you are fighting living targets 
you want axes, spears, or swords, or whips. If you are fighting um, undead creatures, you want hammers or bludgeoning weapons because um, undead creatures are killed by mangling, whereas um, living creatures are killed by bleeding. You know very little, fair enough, yeah. Where do pickaxes fit into that? Pickaxes are weird because they're kind of like bad whips because they're technically both. They have they do cutting damage and bludgeoning damage. Pickaxes aren't bad, but they're not the best weapon in the game, but uh, a pick can be very effective in the hands of a skilled dwarf is the simple version. I'm going to send a dwarf right here and I'm going to paint this as part of the burrow, and we're going to mine this. So now it's a matter of waiting for a miner to show up. We're also going to send the other squad down here. It's currently there on Route 2. So this creature right here, who's been here for a minute, Crypt L, Crypt is like a gigantic eyeless tick. It has a long straight horn and it is slavering. Its lemon exoskeleton is wrinkled. It is not delicious and it's got noxious secretions. So it has poison gas that it parts out. Montecor, thank you very much for the ninth month. I'm sorry, but your dwarf died of mysterious causes. I think an infection. Uh, a dwarf uh, fortress using purely hammers and axes and hammers for making stuff. They don't use hammers to make stuff, no. They don't actually use any tools. Because the, sim the simulation for fortress mode is actually kind of simplified um, in comparison to what the game is capable of, purely for tedium reasons. Who's coming to mind this is the question. Big. Ordith. Gets the honors. Oh, you imagine them using the hammers. I gotcha. Okay, so now I can remove this from this area. The creature comes out. So this, it's already bleeding. Onul, the swords master, jumps in. Probably gets a hit in. Uh, bites the forgotten beast. Okay, tasty. Um, whereas it appears that Dr. Funk is just firing bolts, but uh, previously just fi fired them at the Colossus. Um, one of my uh, Mark Storms is immediately bleeding, which is not good. Um, Rokar right here is standing in, in melee range, firing steel bolts at the creature. Um, and the creature is dead. But we did end up with one... Very faint, heavily bleeding, injured dwarf. I'm going to send these two squads up to the upper level to patrol. Uh, this squad can go back to training. And we need somebody to come rescue you. Uh-oh. Well... Erende, we unfortunately have a casualty. Sad days today. Their friends left, and they died in the caverns. They're being gutted by the creature. I don't even know if I'd call that a tutorial, but sure. Boom, boom. Calling that a tutorial, I would say, is being generous, but it's a brief explainer on one subject. And also snacks for the kitchen. I don't think uh, insects are butcherable. So there is that. I 
Also need more backpacks, it looks like. Seems like Iron Pits gets to do the honors of memorializing this dwarf. Extracting stuff from insects is very tedious and mostly good for nothing process unless you have a lot of fire snakes. Is there something worth extracting from fire snakes that I'm not familiar with? I know it's a pain in the ass <laughs> because they burn out of most cages. So um, I've just uh, received thanks for the mugs from Kit Fox because I, I sent them a bunch of mugs. Mugs. Um, apparently they were drinking out of mugs at their office that looked like they were made for children before they were so small. And now they have like the, the nice big chunky mugs that we sell. So, yeah. I have successfully mugged Kit Fox. The world has passed into the Age of Legends. Well, that is exciting. For those of you unfamiliar with the Age of Legends, let's do a real quick refresher. Age of Legends. Um, the, the Age of Legends, um, is when the number of living powers and mega beasts is at least one third of what it was when the world began. So the Age of Legends was a time when the powers of the world were fading. So that's, it's also a very early point in history for the Age of Legends. Because it's it's only the year 109. The vast majority of these dwarves are hauling something. Please maintain your dignity, says Cat Dodger. Damn right. Oh, did we? Hold on. Did you kill Floth, Asmil? Oh, wow. So this was the other forgotten beast I was looking for. Looks like this dwarf actually killed them before I had the opportunity to. That's actually kind of funny. Um, so shoutouts to Asmil. <laughs> That's very funny, actually. She has such a developed sense of optimism that she generally assumes that the best outcome will eventually occur, no matter what. Currently stuck in a place she can't get out of because she saw a forgotten beast and went, I yaps! And stabbed it in the head. I mean, it just means that they'll be better with different types of weapons. It's not a bad idea to train your dwarves on multiple weapon types. It'll be, it's extra tedium. Is it worth the effort? I mean, I would just make them equip crossbows and train them as crossbow dwarves in a barracks so they learn melee skills that way. That's all I would do. But I'm also, like, chronically lazy. So, <laughs> there is that. That is so much storage. Jesus. I, I'm I'm periodically clearing out the caverns, yeah. It's kind of a side goal thing I'm doing for this fort. So Thoth is the name of that thing. I kind of want that one memorialized. Let's add it to the collection, shall we? Also, something I need to check. Because I did a bunch of interrogating. A bunch of interrogating. Let's see if any of my, uh, like, nobles that are staying here have committed any crimes. Made flattering remarks in order to listen to... <laughs> in order to uh, listen information, the subject succumbed to vanity. Alright. I, I don't think we're going to actually run into anything, considering... Although, I do have a confession to something. So we'll have to look at that in a second. 
Um, let's back out of this. Uh, Geshid used an alias in the past. Oh. Uh, subject used a th a threat thad, uh, saffron butter as an alias in the past. That that's an alias for sure. How about you? Attempted to make flattering remarks in order to elicit information. Uh, it appears that they failed on this one. No new information. Attempted to make intimidating remarks in order to elicit information. The subject was not afraid and refused. Interrogator may have uh, missed the subject. Uh, attempted to make uh, intimidating remarks, but the subject was afraid and refused. Well, that's... This is good. Uh, we also uh, uh, interrogated this human poet, and it seems that this human poet, um, as the human monster slayer Cog, the gleeful letter, corrupted Arkloid in order to have an agent in Sunbirths. The subject met with Arkloid and made a threat, and Arkloid was too afraid to not comply. Um, so we do actually have some new crimes because of this. So Arkloid um, attempted to steal one of my artifacts, and uh, the witness who confessed is no longer here. So, um, if Arush returns, we have to, uh, have to take them out. Go after him. Interesting things happening in this fortress today. Meditate on mountains. I think I think I'm just gonna let these dwarves put items away for a bit. Cause it turns out there's a lot of them. These caverns need to be cleaned. Chat room, do you ever periodically clean your caverns? Do you just seal them up entirely and forget about them? Do you settle in your taverns and try and make fun of it or have fun with it? Well, like how, how do you, how do you run with this? Also, Arkloid is now dead. <laughs> well, rest in peace, Arkloid. You committed crime, and now you get to walk past the massive camel and be placed in a tomb. Accidentally collapse the wall and fill in with dirt? Wait, what? For who? Why? Your first cavern was pretty chill, to be honest. Not much happened in it. Once you start hacking down the trees is when things start getting a little crazy, I find, but... They can also be, like, shockingly chill at points. Alright, so here we're going to begin making another set of lava buckets. I have any full ones? I do not. All right. Well, let's let's just start filling them then. Let's put one minecart in there, and we're now in an ad break. So we'll wait. You just usually keep them closed, closed, and then watch from the fortifications with popcorn. Yeah, fair enough. You try to build over the caverns and have a fort that overlooks the caverns. Yeah, I, I like messing with caverns. I, these these ones are so deep. They're so deep. So far away. Such a far distance to travel. But yeah, I, I got I to gotta be honest. It's... um. I still can't get over that whole the day before situation because I, f I feel like there's been a number of like, what's the word games in the past that have come out that people are like, man, this seems like a scam. And then it finally does come out and that never happens. Like you'll occasionally have games that like have poor reviews or get abandoned, but I don't think I've ever seen a game ripped off from sale developer shut down and names changed like overnight. It's kind of insane. Like, I don't think I've ever witnessed that before in this industry. Mm. 
You got a river uh, running pretty deep in your fortress. You're planning on making a water wheel and connect it to indoor mist generator. If that works even. Oh, that'll work, yeah. That'll work. Assuming like there's actual flow to the water, it'll work. You vary your approach in the last fort. We mostly uh, closed one off one section of the first layer and eventually found a second and third before we dug too deep. Oh, neat. Hello, Deep Space, how are you? How is things, sir? We are cleaning the caverns currently. And also, let's check out here. These have been constructed. Um, let's go to corpses. But very, their hair right there. As long as we keep something from them. Azox Mangled Amber, which I think is already right there, right? Yeah, okay. Never mind. These are these two already. So this... This is... Oh, no, me. Okay, there we go. These are the ones I want. And Thoth. Those two. Yeah, it was bad. Your partner got banned from the Discord after calling out the mod for using the N word. Oh, really? Oh, really? So like, your 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 partner actually got banned from the day before Discord. That's that's something. <laughs> I don't know anybody who was actually in that Discord that got banned. So glad they took the opportunity to report it uh, to both the day before and Discord subreddits, uh, Discord and subreddits to show what that server turned into before they deleted it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's just such a bizarre, such a bizarre thing. Like, I've never seen anything quite like it. Okay, so now that we've got one full mag lava bucket, let's grab another one. Just slowly filling lava buckets. So we can do another round of this. Just empty. The, the the issue with the day before isn't the, the game that they actually released. I mean, if they just released the game that they released, it would have gotten mixed reviews, maybe a thousand players, and plutzed around in early access for a bit, right? Uh, or a couple thousand players, and it would have plutzed around in early access for a little bit, and then released probably. If that if that's what they'd done. If they did that, um, if if they charged half the amount of money for it and they advertised what the game was, it probably would have been fine, right? Um, the issue was the trailers that they showed for it uh, looked like The Last of Us, and it was advertised as a completely different game. That's the issue with the day before. Uh, the elves have arrived once again to trade. So we, we do have to, to trade with them. So it, it was a case of like massive amounts of false advertising. So now that I've done that, uh, we're gonna go into here. We're going to remove that from the, the that route, and I'm going to place another one on here. So it'll pop out here, and then it'll go into the stockpile. Yep, and they actually use uh, the wheelbarrows to move them from there over to there. And then another one comes down here, and we do it again. Who else is on the list? Uh, what was that game that Versus Evil just published? Which is also a studio that is... I can't remember. That they're owned by Tiny Build. The publisher owned by Tiny Build. Yeah, they released this game. Um, Stray Souls. Which, if you want to see some hysterically bad horror gameplay, go look up some footage of this game. 
It is something. Uh, it's like they bought a bunch of assets on the asset store and then used chat GPT to code it. It is, it is something. Um, it is something. Like the screenshots look really pretty, but th this is something. And like the developer has said some pretty heinous shit on social media too. Um, towards people being like, yo, did you like even develop this game? <laughs> or, you know, which is weird. Cause like versus evil has put out some bangers in the past. It's very strange. What, like Notch? Notch doesn't develop Minecraft anymore, though, so... Notch is a very bizarre person, but... He also isn't actively developing Minecraft anymore. All right, so let's jump over to this. And remove that. Okay, so let's do Diplomacy. The elves say we have much to discuss. Whatever possessed you, okay. Uh, five trees, oh boy. They're being very strict with their limits. At least we're able to trade. Uh, let's just bring them... Wow, I'm like out of cloth. I was going to say, I'm just going to bring them cloth. I'm basically out of cloth. Let's just do cherry opals. Got 21 gems to bring them. Good evening, Bedaware. Are all the angry dwarves children? Uh, no. No, no, no. They are not all children. Uh, some of them are. Most of the children are actually pretty happy. No, the reason the dwarves are angry in this fort, uh, we had very few angry dwarves, almost none, uh, but I had a pretty bad uh, tavern brawl that killed about half my fort. Or not, maybe a third of my fort, uh, which we're still recovering from, so. Although keeping children from being angry is actually very easy. So. For most kids. Some are just broken. It was a pretty good tavern brawl, though. All right, let's see. Did they bring anything fun? They brought a giant koala! Giant koala. Damn right I'm buying the giant koala. Uh, and a normal-sized dingo, which I don't need. They also brought a brown recluse spider, a chipmunk, and a slug. Cool. But I am one thousand percent taking that giant koala off their hands. Also, take the the the, the cherries and the and and the fruit. Leave some fruit in that. Funk. Boom. Done. Easy peasy. Elfie squeezy. All right. So now, uh, where do I? Do, do, I I should just put the the giant koala in the front hallway to hang out with. Uh, Eh, maybe I should actually pasture the giant koala in, in the tavern. I, that seems like a, a nice, cuddly tavern friend. <laughs> a, a giant floof for the tavern. Now I'm kind of curious about how big it's going to be, actually. We need slug? No, we don't. <laughs> no, we really don't. We, we, we don't need that. You made that up. We do not, in fact, need a slug. Giant koala, on the other hand, we absolutely need. Um, all right, so now I can start up the... Well, actually, I can throw another bucket into here. Let's get two or three more. On the whole day before, I swear Netflix is likely going to pick it up on, on one of the when the dust settles. I mean, I I would love to see like. Uh, I mean, there's probably actually there's probably already like, YouTubers making video essays on it, if not dozens of YouTubers making video essays on it, um, because like that's that that'll be such a view get. But it, like the reason the day before I think to me is like interesting is the day before is the. One of the only games that was more wishlisted than Dwarf Fortress. That's the reason I think it's kind of interesting. Is because it is one of the only games that was more wishlisted than Dwarf Fortress. Koalas aren't even grazers. Nope. Look how big it is. It's giant. I mean, it is. It's right there in the name. Giant koala, but like, look at him! Holy shit! 
How does a pit of lions work? Uh, it's a pit with lions in it? I don't know how else to answer that question. What What is the attempt of... What, what, what are you trying to do? <laughs> oh, are you trying to use them as, like, defenses? Can you even war train? I don't know. I've never made a pit of lions before. I, I Can you war train lions? <laughs> I don't actually know. But, I mean, I for any kind of wild animals, yeah, I mean, you, you could war train them. Or you could just put them there. I mean, either will work. Quite the tavern. Quite the tavern. She felt miserable while being confined. That very much sounds like a giant koala. And throw them in it? I mean, yeah, if they're, if they're war trained, they're more likely to attack than run away. So I, I, would, I would, in fact, war train them, yeah. All right, so another lava bucket is in the route. Let's remove this one. And toss in another one. Because this one is going to pop up here. There it is. Nice track vehicle. Shout out to this human for hauling minecarts back and forth for me. Most big cats are more trainable. Not all of them, but most of them, yes. All in all, I, I think our, our moods are sorting out at a pretty good speed. There we go. There, there's another one. Lava bucket. Remove this. And I think that's probably good. So let's, let's just start dumping them. Right here. So let's see how this goes. Um, we're also going to put the floor grates in. So for anybody who's wondering what we're doing, you may notice that this fortress is kind of full of snow. Um, this melts the snow as the dwarves walk past and will slowly start to fix this massive amounts of snow problem. Um, so that's the hope of this. Oh shit, they're actually singing in the, tower, in, in the temples. You don't see that very often. They're performing dances. What kind of dances are they? Actually, you know what? Because they're doing this, I should give them a bunch, bunch of instruments in, the, in here because I've ended up with a bunch of instruments because of, like, um, that one, like, what's it called? Thing that broke. Human trade caravan. Yeah. Making central heating? Sort of. Uh-oh. The Forgotten Beast Mothram. Angidisuth Zainman has come. A towering hairy crab. It has a knobby shell and it undulates rhythmically. It hasn't, sorry, it has a knob, knob, knobby shell and it is slavering. Its dark green hair is unkept. Beware its not noxious secretions. At, so as somebody who played a round of crab champions the other day, um, I'm pleasantly happy that <laughs> it doesn't have a gun. All right, let's, um, you know, I think I may, I may just... Station these dwarves. Where's the other ramp? Arm. So that's the one that leads to nowhere, but there's another one. I need to, like, do a better job of marking the other <laughs> ramp. Hmm. All right. Um, I think I'm actually just going to station them all right here. Can't join this month as a baby on the way in four weeks, but uh, you donated five... Five pounds on the mega truck. Yeah, I saw it. Not built, not bought. I did, in fact, see it. 
Well, thank you very much. And you don't need to do that. <laughs> but I, I appreciate it all the same. Let's forgot. Let's forgot. Follow this forgotten beast. The real question is, why is this crab insisting on staying in ground? Oh god, why, why does it climb trees so much? I always get super nervous when I see flying creatures like this. Or creatures that can, like, climb like they're flying. Always make me extraordinarily nervous. That's the one that I need to do a better job of marking. Uh-oh. Stone aka Seashore's Wall is uh, out in the caverns, which is a big mistake. I'm just going to send these dwarves to go help because Stone is now running. Escape if you can, Stone. The creature is continuing to follow it, but has paused. All right. Check, can I get a round of beers for good luck for these dwarves about to go to war with this creature? This absolute monstrosity. Who doesn't feel anything while in conflict. Has never killed anything before, though, somehow. Uh, Andre, the regular guy, wielding his named shield, which is a steel shield. Uh, she is in combat. All of her friends are dead, more or less, with the exception of Baka Glass. Is dueling with the creature. Also, isn't weren't these the original seven? I think they were. Yeah, so this, this is one of the original seven still. Is fighting with the Forgotten Beast. And this will be their third kill against a Forgotten Beast. Kills it by purely slashing the Forgotten Beast in the left third foot with a steel short sword and the severed part sails off in an arc. The creature is dead. The beast is dead. I'm going to forbid and unforbid this and we're going to see if I can get that body into the archive. Um... Crutches. I need corpses. Mothram, there you are. I just realized that I've lost some of the pieces. That's Omo, and that's Thoth. get this fixed. That creature's feather. It's kind of a neat idea, actually. It's just like a lock of this creature's hair, a bit of this creature's feather. We also named a steel short sword. So now I've got cabinets that need to be placed and chests that need to be placed. These are all made of lead. So while they're heavy, they only need to be placed once. And after that, dwarves don't need to worry so much about where they're going to put their clothes. And that'll hopefully help with the clutter in this fort a bit. Just a bit. Because you see all these dwarves' bedrooms with just, like, clothes all over the floor? Really because there just isn't enough for them. They're still working on them. I'm starting to think that this dwarf's just broken. Why aren't you equipping clothing? You have, like, an incorrect, like, broken equipment screen or something? Body wear, breastplates, no shirts, helm, 
leggings, greaves, gauntlets, low boots, shield. You've already got your specific mace. Confirm. Update. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this dwarf. But I don't know, you're a mace lord, so I guess do what you want at the end of the day. Oh, I see, you've got bronze stuff on now. Our equipping thing. It's just weird. What's up, Dan's Labyrinth? So, let's check out this. Um, remove that. Place another lava bucket onto this. So this minecart should come get collected pretty quick. Moved. Except for children. Children are going to be removed from this. So there we go. All the dwarves are now in the burrow, and we're going to pretty quickly get those caverns emptied up. And then we're going to get those doors shut. Because we've spent enough time in the caverns now. And then once we have this project done, I guess we'll start working on uh, building my cannons again outside. Okay, so I just saw a dwarf. Might be Goose. Talking to this human named Tequil. So we're going to interrogate Tequil. This human. This human Axeman. Because my theory is probably going to expose a crime that is going to happen. We're just at this point in time now where it's just like, oh, well, there's obviously some sort of crime going to happen here. <laughs> All right, let's get that done. Get this removed. Let's get more lava in here. But yeah, I don't think this is going to fully fix the, the lava issue for this fortress. I think this fortress is just going to kind of always have some lava, or not lava, some snow issues. This lava isn't going to completely fix the snow issue, but it'll certainly help. I think I'm going to actually have to do a lot of constructing if I want to act like completely remove all of the snow. Uh-oh. Another one? Good lord. This is becoming like a Forgotten Beast part. And you know, honestly, I'm, I'm totally fine with all these Forgotten Beasts showing up because it just means that we got stuff to deal with. All right, we've got a, a creature composed of mud, which uh, has wings and squirms and fidgets, and it has deadly spittle. Um, it's also a noodle. So I'm going to just tell these two squads to go stab it to death. Uh, chat, can I, can I, can you wish these dwarves luck? This particular creature, while it does have wings, it doesn't seem to be able to fly. The map forgot, run out of forgotten beasts. It's not, it's not based on the map. But yeah, every world has a limited number of forgotten beasts. So yes, you can in fact run out of them. Which also uh, begs the question, chat room. <laughs> Some dwarves are arriving despite the danger. It begs the question. Um, do, do any of you guys do holiday themed forts? Anybody doing any? Holiday themed forts because, or wintery th themed forts, or do you just kind of play random stuff depending on feeling? Because I, I quite like doing holiday themed forts, or like wintery forts in the winter, and then summery forts in the summer. Also, I would like to just say thank you very much to the 234 people watching here on Twitch, as well as thank you to the uh, 63 people watching on YouTube. If, uh, if you want to help out the YouTube stream, um, as the dwarf, as the forgotten beast dies immediately in the background. Um, if, if you want to help out the YouTube stream, I think that's a link to it. Yep, it is. Uh, so he, here in the Twitch chat, there's now a link to the YouTube stream. If you open it up and lurk or leave a like on it and help those likes go up, uh, it'll very much uh, assist the uh, growth of the fortress, shall we say. Dwarf is going to go pick up equipment.
And also, if anybody at any point wants a dwarf, just give me a holler. Just let me know if you would like a dwarf. Um, or if you have a dwarf and you would like to check in on it, let me know. We can do that as well. Still getting migrants from that current wave. All right, so it seems like it was like 10 dwarves that we got from that just recent migrant wave. Moreb, let's see if yours is still alive. Yep, you are still alive. Um, you're also not pissed off, which is strange. Uh, you're currently watching a weaponsmithing demonstration. You're a talented weapon smith. Uh, you feel satisfied after learning about we weaponsmithing. Um, you're a dabbling wrestler, meaning you've gotten into fights in the past. Um, and uh, you're content after eating a fine dish. You do have a bedroom. You have meager quarters. Uh, you, you could use, like, a, like you know, a, a chest and a cabinet um, in your quarters. But, you know, you're, you're, you're relatively happy with your space. Can you get a cat? No. I don't name animals because it's too hard to keep track of dwarves and animals. Tubal named their shield. Not a kid anymore. Nope, you've grown up. Moreb has grown up. Actually, how old, how old was Moreb? Uh, Twenty. Yeah. So you've been a kid for like, you stopped being a kid for like a year. You actually, you you need to, you want to fight. You dream of creating a great work of art. Dreams of tranquility. You know what? We're going to put you into the military, my rib. You can go learn to shoot a crossbow. Told you, you were eight when you were named? Damn! Also, I'm being welcomed to my own chat. How nice of Twitch. I mean, the YouTube stream, my goal is always to hit 100 likes. Uh, Grown-up age is uh, 18. Yeah, the, and it, it was it was 14 previously. I don't know where you got 16 from. Uh, yeah, no, dwarves became adults at 14 in version 47, but it was moved up to 16 because kids do chores now. So because kids do chores... Um, I think this is almost becoming a hazing ritual. It's like walk into the caverns and gather your equipment. Because the caverns are just full of equipment and gear. It's like go gather your equipment from the corpse of one of our previous dead and do not end up like them if you make it out of the caverns then you're well, then you're able to join the military but yeah no they they, they changed the grown-up age of dwarves because they didn't want to cause controversy and also because um the the only reason they were adults at 14 previously was because they didn't do chores so they were literally useless <laughs> um until they hit adulthood so because of that they you know changed the grown-up age to 18. Also, we're in ads now. Um, Chad, uh, there's two minutes of ads running, so I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to go get my, my lunch break. Uh, if you happen to be in the Twitch chat and you have access to sound commands, now's a good time to use them to entertain the chat room. And uh, I'm going to BRB for, like, 90 seconds to grab myself a sandwich, which is going to have literally nothing but sauerkraut on it cheese! because I'm out of cheese. Everyone. Please behave yourselves, chat room. And I will be back. No, 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 no. Over here, he has a sword.
Heal, damn it. Pistons are a really, 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 really old school strat. <clears throat> but they are very tedious to set up. Have you ever been hit by an anti ad gun? <laughs> I um, actually caved. I bought uh, Twitch Turbo. I unsubscribed from two YouTube, or not YouTube, Twitch channels that I haven't been watching. And, um, got myself Twitch Turbo. And you know what? Worth it. Speaking of the anti-ad gun, Devil Don, thank you very much for gifting a subscription to Moreb. I appreciate you. All right. Um, I think, honestly, the best thing I can do right now is just let these dwarves socialize and do this. Like, just leave them in the burrow for a bit and just let them... In increase their happiness because that's really all that they need right now. It's just a good long break, and I need to eat this horse because it's pointless. Um, spineless pony. That. I think I'm just going to war train all of those. And slaughter all of these puppies. All right. Also, I want to complain about YouTube chat for a second. There's a giant heart. So <clears throat> this is this is the way my behind the scenes looks, right? This this is my behind the scenes screen, right? So this is this is my OBS. There's this stupid like set of emotes here, and I really wish I could get rid of them in this screen, because it makes it so hard to read <laughs> this 
first level. Like, I, I, I have to wait until someone else types something in before I can actually read chat now. Because it's like, there's a friggin' heart there. <laughs> Who put that heart there? Whose idea was that? God damn it. Why? But seriously, Devil Don, thanks for all the gifts. You're very kind. Yeah, I know it's the same for you guys, but it's like, it's, it's, it's a nice feature, so I leave it on. Like, I could just disable it and completely and just not worry about it. But, I don't know, it just it drives me bonkers. It's like, there's this freaking heart. <laughs> All right, let's throw. Okay, I need to just be quicker about this because I'm not filling this fast enough. Let's also fill another lava bucket. This way. Because I need to fill this faster. And I need to increase the amount of lava in there. That feels so crowded to you? What, my OBS? It's an efficient use of space. Does it influence the algorithm? It's engagement, so I would assume so. Although, I'll be honest to you, I have no idea how YouTube works. YouTube is a friggin' mystery to me. All right, so then the lava buckets are full. That lava bucket is full, so let's throw another minecart into that. Let's <laughs> go ahead and break that heart. Generally, it's my heart that gets broken. I don't generally break hearts. All right, let's... Uh... New one onto here. That owl jump scares me. It's so big. All right, so we just need to wait for this one. Okay, so this one's now moving, which means I can remove it. And we can stick another one on here. Moving another one. Bringing another one up. It's a big burb. Yep. I saw a great horned owl recently, actually. Um, landed on, like, the railing fence next to my apartment. This was, like, in, er, like a beginning of fall this year. I was sitting on my patio, um, and I heard a thunk. I looked up, and there was a great horned owl sitting there. I'm like, wow, we have those? Holy shit! And then it flew away. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, Cashmere Ghost. Also, um, <laughs> I think they let the murder cats out. YouTube seems to be very simple. Uh, when you look at something the next day, you're offered a crap load of the same stuff, unless you delete your history. I mean, it's just like Amazon, right? It's like, you know, I, let's say, buy toothpaste on Amazon, right? Just as an example. And then the next day, for the rest of your life, Amazon's going to be like, hey, you want to buy some toothpaste? <laughs> Be like, yeah, I did. Or it's like when when, when you buy like I don't know, um, <clears throat> uh, let's say crampons, like spikes for your shoes for the winter, um, and then uh, Amazon just tries to sell you the exact same ones. Like I bought those yesterday. Why 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 are you still trying to sell me the same things? And has an old Jewish grandma that makes blind dates. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I I I understand what you're referencing now. Thanks for putting Fiddler on the roof in my head, by the way. <laughs> matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. When you... Wow. I still know too many of those lyrics. Years. Maybe I want more crampons? Probably. It's like when I bought these monitors on uh, Amazon. They're still trying to sell me more of them. Admittedly, they're right. I do want a third one, but... <laughs> That kind of is what Amazon in the, is, though. It's the, what are you buying? What are you selling? Guy. 
Um, actually, you know, okay, fuck it. Let's just make a, a second track stop. We'll put one right here. Um, and I'll just quickly whip up a route. We're down here. And... Da, 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 and throw another minecart in here. But no, in, in, in regards to in, in regards to my love life, uh, the 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 way the world works these days is everything is very surface level judgments, right? Um, because you know, uh, unfortunately, the internet and apps have taken over literally everything. Uh, so everything is extraordinarily surface level. Um, and when you have a weird job, you're basically fucked, <laughs> unless you find somebody else that has a weird job. So. Subject was cagey and refused to comply. I need a better interrogator. Agreed due to belief in law. Interesting. Well, nothing new came out of that. Let's remove you. Greatest jobs are the coolest? They can be. But <coughs> normal people just assume I'm unemployed. <laughs> so. Bought a necklace fan thing on Amazon and it was like do you want to also buy... What, okay, what's a necklace fan thing? That's my first question, but... You also want to buy a cooling vest? Might be sound reasonable anyway, but the necklace fan was the one typically bought by a certain group that indeed would probably need a cooling vest as well. Yeah, what 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 the heck is a cooling vest? <laughs> right? Uh, bring... Are there any other full ones? So that's all of the full buckets. Um... I would like to fill another one, though. Let's fill another one. And remove that one. Would you consider a vet? That's a real job, a veterinary technician. So, but that's, that's all I have to say. It's like the meme if Netflix asks you, you enjoyed a bug's life. You might also enjoy a human centipede. It's like when Steam tries to recommend Call of Duty to me because I recently played Dwarf Fortress. Yes. Oh. Well, it appears that my war dogs are doing their job. And uh, we are currently under attack, so I'm going to send the military down here uh, to clean up these cavern creatures. Come on, war puppers. Oh, no, we lost a war pupper. Well, that's a shame. Rest in peace to uh, stray war doggo. Fortunately, there are more of them, and the game is saving. Is that YouTube seems to leak info about you in a thousand different ways? What do you mean? How's it leaking info about you? I mean, they're selling it, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Uh, no, there isn't. The Wilhelm scream is definitely from chat if you hear that. Also, shout outs to this war dog who just killed one. Shakes the cave swallow blow gunner by the head, tearing apart the muscle. And the giant wolf also appears to be assisting a little bit, although it's mostly just dodging. The giant wolf is actually did finally kill one. Look at you, you stray giant wolf. I'm going to full heal you because I realize this is cheating, but there's no way to heal my giant animals, and that's a giant one, which it still bled to death. Well, that's a shame. Rest in peace, giant wolf. You were our friend. There's still a terrified giant Ulm down here. Well, we, we lost Big Wolf, chat. 
But can I get some Fs in chat for Big Wolf? It's a damn shame. Although we, we have to put more uh, war dogs down here. The wolf be missed. Yeah, no, I agree. And we're going to lock the caverns. It's enough messing around in the caverns for now. Mm -hmm. Put more war dogs down there. Very efficient. All right, did I fill up another lava bucket yet? Yes, I did. I can remove that. And I can go down to here. Should be able to just do one more. And that should be plenty, actually. Keep it too deep so it won't cool off. And after all that, I should be able to just get rid of these two routes. Let's get rid of... This first one, right here, you, and just get forbidden right here and be a piece of art. And this will hopefully, slowly, start removing snow from all the dwarves' feet. Should generally be enough. Oh yeah, no, it usually is. Especially with the uh, settings that I have the cavern creatures set to, which is not a lot of dudes can attack me at a time, so. Um. Yeah, this dwarf is just like incapable of equipping more gear. I don't know what's up with that. Very strange to me, but it's okay. Um, you know, maybe also we should put a, what's the word? A minecart heating solution in here, like right there, perhaps. Because I quite like this. It's, it's really neat aesthetically. I like the look of it. I like the visual of just having little minecarts everywhere. And I also like how it's working mechanically. Okay, um, now I can get rid of that last one. And a human caravan has arrived to trade. Would you look at that? We're going to have so much clothing to sell them. It's going to be absurd. Holy shit, there's so many of them. Wow, that's a big trade wagon. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. They still give you time to close the gates? No, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hmm. Just going to trade all of these wooden weapons. Here, I was thinking that we'd have tons of clothing to, to sell, but apparently we don't. Um... Sell those catapult parts. Um, what else can I sell? Got a ton of rock pots. So I can sell those bismuth battle axes. Oh, that makes sense. I was like, why, 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 why these no, tra uh, that's, that's why. It's because they're all in containers, which is totally fine. Um, could totally sell some steel helms.
Totally forgot that I made that bin friendly stockpile. Which is fine. Does mean that I have more stuff I need to get rid of, though. Small copper helm? Small stuff? What is small sized for? I mean, probably an animal person, right? Small, thin chain leggings. Buffering or just you? Uh, I'm not dropping frames. Did YouTube just crash or something? Because I'm seeing Fs in the YouTube stream. Yeah, I'm not seeing any issues on my end. You had a brief buffer too? Hmm. I didn't drop any frames. So I don't know what caused that. Do I not like the DF hack trade UI? I don't find it necessary. YouTube seems signed on your end? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't say I've dropped any frames, so I, I have no idea. It's weird. Uh, let's also bring bags. You know... I'm going to sell everything except for that one plump helmet spawn bag. And find me a bag that has pigtails in it. The rest of these are going to be sold. Guess I don't have pigtail seeds. Interesting. That's fine, though. I can just harvest some. Also going to sell all these anvils. Or all of the ones that aren't, you know, currently being used. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to request. <laughs> like, straight up, no idea. I guess just wood. They want footwear and plants. That's for by request. Okay, I'm dumb and just missed that. Kobold clothing is small on the wiki. Yeah, I haven't had any kobolds, though. can't run vintage story while having stream running, but you can still run... Is that like a CPU issue? Because, huh. That's interesting, if that's the case. I am apparently out of lead. Well, that's a shame. Send the broker up here. It's one of those bins. Yeah, I don't like using everything that, that uh, DF Hack provides because I find a lot of its features to be a bit much. Um, I'm using the search functions, but that's quite literally it. <laughs> and then the cancel confirmations. I will occasionally use it to debug stuff, but I don't like using DF Hack for the vast majority of the things that it provides. Just because, like I said, it's a bit much. Okay. Tons of iron bolts and steel bolts. I shouldn't actually sell those bolts. Is there anything else in that bin that I do want to sell, though? Okay. Although that is kind of massive amounts of value. <laughs> Bags, that, that. 
plenty of value anyway. All right, 17,000. Buy all these bars. Buy all the logs. I will buy all of the instruments and the flasks. All the handheld instruments. I also seem to have brought animals, so let's take a look. They brought a slug, they brought a tricell peregrine, water buffalo, a bull, blue peahen, a masked lovebird, a, a, a bunny, another bull, a llama, a duck, water buffalo, an eagle, a donkey, a boar, and a cavey boar. Well, I don't need any of those, so. Instead, I will simply take your books and we'll call it a trade. Thank you for helping me get rid of a bunch of shit that I don't need. And I'm going to pause the game and do this, and then uncancel it so that they bring the stuff away. Got uh, a high treasurer here telling stories. I wonder what story the high treasurer is telling. In the year four, the Human Gossam Scholar Awards became the Lawgiver. Wait, hold on. Isn't that them? No, this is Geralt's scooped voices. You scoop the voices. You know a lot of poems. What an interesting human. All right, let's build our dwarves a library. Because I personally feel... Never mind. It's tavern party time. Then we'll build a library. Hello, Casey. But right now it's party time, so grab your party amounts and post Partying just for you, Nasty Ninja. Let's um, get down to here. Or let's get down to business to defeat the Huns uh, and start cutting all this stuff away. We're currently in an ad break, but I'm just going around clicking on stuff that we're going to dig out, so not too big of a deal. Hmm. Hmm. 
little bit worried about the water at the edge here. I don't want my dwarves to just like get randomly frozen solid. I have to be a little bit careful. We're also probably going to dig up a bunch of bodies in here. Tame what? You talking about the koala? It's already tame. All of the giant animals in my fortress are already tame. So I, I don't know what you're saying. There is no panda. I have a koala, but that a koala does not equal panda. But yeah, all of the giant animals I have were purchased from the elves. And when they bring them, they're already tame. There we go. So I don't need to tame them. They're already tame. Let's do this. This corner bit needs to go first, or we'll get cavens. This map is kind of weird. Yeah, I've had things like randomly turning into like sand underground, which a lot of people are saying apparently happens all the time. I feel like that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> Like, a tile that has no sand on it and stuff becomes sand. I think, like, what makes a lot more sense is, like, me pouring lava onto this glacier and then the glacier becoming sand. That makes a lot of sense, but... there, There is definitely some stuff that's happened in this map where I'm like, what? That doesn't... That's not... That... What? <laughs> that what? That... Hmm? Hi? Ex excuse me? You did what now? <laughs> so, yeah, no. Some strange things have been happening in this map, for sure. Nothing... Who out of the ordinary? Oh, yeah, we can have glass. I mean, there's sand literally right here. So, yeah, absolutely, I can make glass. I just haven't. Um, Let's just go to cloth. Uh... Pig tail... Or... Let's just do cloth bag. And just do a hundred. Let's see what this does. This is either going to kill dwarves immediately, or this will be totally fine. Staring at the population and see if it goes down. Hasn't yet. Or so good. Still nobody dead. Some migrants have arrived despite the danger. We're at 57 dwarves now. Sure they can't be bad uh, the other day when you were losing a bunch of dwarves to ice and lava <laughs> I mean, that was just fun, though. What was actually concerning was when the dwarves started killing each other without my interference. That was when things got bad, but it, it more or less sorted itself out. And all, no matter how bad things got, um, general moods were still better than most of uh, Deep Space's forts. So, you know, <laughs> there was still that. All right, let's go up here and remove all of this upper stuff.
I gotta reiterate though, I'm so excited for just more music and more sound effects in this game. <laughs> so excited. Like I, th I would say I'm actually more excited about the additions to the music than most of the other major features coming out. A creature composed of steam. Well, that's not going to live very long. Um, that's not going to live very long at all. Sections of caverns collapsed. Doesn't look like anybody's died yet. This game scratches your brain wrinkles. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Sussy assy. So it's a good thing? Interesting. I, I, I've, I've never like thought about the concept of my brain getting tickled before, and now that I'm thinking about it, my, my scalp is itchy for some reason. And I don't like it very much, I'll be honest. All right, so... Hmm. This lower layer is going to be tougher. But what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to go down into these lower layers and we're going to have to channel this down another layer. And I'm also going to have to get rid of all of this ice or water. So what we're going to do is I'm going to channel into the water one at a time. And hopefully it'll freeze. Hopefully. Keyword there is hopefully. Uh, Madam, the bard withdraws from society. I don't even know. Are you one of my permanent members, or are you just... Yeah, this person is just a temporary citizen. I didn't know that uh, long-term residents could go into strange moods, but here we go. Yeah, it's obsidian at the bottom of those pools, which is why I poured lava in it to make it all into obsidian. It just got a little bit more melty and explosive and dangerous and murderous than I thought it would. Welcome back, Jetpack Tuxedo. It's good to see you. You think it's a good thing that as long as it doesn't smooth out the brain wrinkles? You know, I'll be honest, brain wrinkles in general are something I try not to think about. <laughs> Just a thing I try not to think about. Uh, do you need bodies? You, ooh, platinum. Platinum. Me like. Forest, uh, rough gems, yep. Quarry, mm hmm Shining bars of metal, you got that. Rough gems, okay. Skel ah, yeah. Called it, it's always skeletons. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I've played this game for like 10 years and I still don't fully know why it's so compelling for me. Like genuinely. Me, pet killer? They're no one's pet dogs. What are you talking about? Some dogs are pets, and some dogs are dinner. Yeah. Uh-oh. Did Smokey the Bandit find uh, a bird? It did. Let's see what Steamy the, the Blobbit, how well it fights against these these creatures. Uh, it is uh, taking a lot of blow darts and um, missing a lot. Um, there is, okay, there's spider venom. Oh, right, right, right. It's getting, they're, they're hitting with, with venom. Mm, okay, well, they're, they're fighting. So far, so good. That actually is kind of terrifying that they're using spider venom. It's not really doing much damage to them, I don't think. Are they, 
Okay, so they can't damage it with their weapons, but it also can't hit them. Oh, there it goes. Shoutouts to uh, Moon Goaded, who killed Saddest. Saddest, <laughs> the Forgotten Beast. Do you use to kill a steam creature? Uh, you f uh, you prick it with a pin and it pops. Uh, creatures made of steam and creatures similar to creatures made of um, snow and creatures made of water are extraordinarily flimsy and weak in Dwarf Fortress. Is this worth wearing a cape? Oh wow, you actually equipped your cape. Diamond has a cape. I didn't know. I didn't know capes showed up on on dwarves. Well, I mean, learn something every day, I suppose. What hundred year combat? Yeah, no kidding. Although it's impossible to look at capes for me without immediately thinking of no capes, no capes. No caves. All right, so I've got two ways that I can deal with the little water tiles there, and I think the way I'm going to do it, if they don't melt on their own, or if they if they don't freeze on their own, what I think I'm going to do with those water tiles is I'm just going to take lava buckets and dump them on them. Darling. Yeah, exactly. Good old Edna. Yep. Mm-hmm. Quite frankly, maybe one of my favorite no context film quotes of all time. It's like, you don't even need to give context. You just say no capes and everybody knows what you're talking about. Great movie. Have I told you guys about how I, my, like, part of my family is convinced that somebody from Disney stole my idea for The Incredibles? Because when I was a little kid, I used to, used to draw comics. Um, like many kids did. And one of the comics I, I, I drew was a family of superheroes that quite literally had the identical powers and personalities to that movie. And I drew that comic about two years before that movie came out. Which to this day is still bizarre to me. <laughs> it's so strange to me. My, after your unfortunate encounter with a dragon, the survivors all spo sported the dragon leather capes and, and boots. Oh, that's rad. That's rad. This is my third time. Th I think Twitch might just be having trouble today because I've just been disconnected from my Twitch chat a third time today. They not slaughtered those dogs yet. Looks like they did. All right. Well, I've got a bunch of random cavies as well, so we should also slaughter those. I thought I gelded that cavey. God damn it. <laughs> well, let's slaughter this bull, this reindeer. Let's slaughter this pig. I have a badger for some reason. Let's also slaughter that. Uh, sure. Creator of the Iron of Iron Giant made The Incredibles. Uh, the mother pulled in characters, and the father is strong, and the daughter feels on the scene, and Dash go fast. Pretty much, yeah. I, D D Dash has just got too much energy. It's one of the only examples of like of a of a Disney film where I also like the sequel. Yeah, I really want this artifact to finish because they're a novice weaponsmith and and they've grabbed platinum. So I want to see how this goes. All right, so you want skeletons. Okay, that's a badger. I don't I don't think badgers give skeletons hope it's a hammer. I just, I mean, I, I don't really care what it is. I, I usually don't use artifact weapons, believe it or not. So. There we go. Platinum animal cage? It it'll be a weapon. We know that. I know that it'll be a weapon. <laughs> Ooh, 
What did you grab? Stray sow bone? Piggy bone? Pigtail cloth? One of the few examples, yeah, one of, one of the few examples of me actually liking a sequel. I also kind of, I didn't hate Monsters University, the sequel to Monsters, Inc. I didn't actually hate that movie. Have a good date, Lennox. Take care. But the, the issue that I have with Monsters University is they break their own canon in that movie. <laughs> like there's a, there's a bunch of retconning to make some things make sense in that movie. So two rough pink jades, two pieces of cloth, some boulder that he's hauling that she's hauling right now, platinum bars, bones, citron wood logs. I think that's kind of interesting. Like with movies and film, Sequels are usually diminishing returns, in my experience. That's just my opinion. Um, but with video games, sequels are almost always better than the original. It's like Assassin's Creed, that first one? Mm -mm. Assassin's Creed 2, possibly the best one they made. <laughs> it's interesting the way different media formats work. All right, so I'm gonna, I, I still haven't made my tombs for my, for my royalty. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make their tombs back here. So each of them are going to get a tomb that is just going to come out of the back of their office. I'm sure they'll like that, not even remotely morbid. That's Kib, that's the king and queen, and that's Vixen Rose. Although, I guess StarCraft is maybe an example where uh, that doesn't work. Same with Overwatch. <laughs> Portal 1, I think, is a better game than Portal 2. I like the story in Portal 2 more, but as a video game, I think Portal 1's a better game. The pacing is better. E3 permanently closed today? I mean, what? <laughs> Wait, did, did like they officially announce that they're never doing another one? Or what, what do you mean by it permanently closed today? Because not to be a meanie or anything, but like, Anybody actually surprised? <laughs> I mean, like, come on. Like, and who's and who's surprised by this? I I don't know about you guys chat and I know there's a lot of varying opinions but I used to really like E3 it was one of my favorite times of year of the year um specifically because of the coverage of it and as somebody who has always really liked the video games industry and following the video games industry and seeing what the video games industry is doing and as somebody who like you know I, I I've talked about this many times is that I I make content that I like right the type of stuff that I make on the internet is the type of stuff I like watching. Some of my favorite E3 stuff is just like a bunch of developer. Like, I, I, I don't know if anybody here ever watched them, but Giant Bomb used to do these um, developer sit downs where they just get a bunch of developers on a on a sofa in like a rental house and then they just interview people. And they, they would get like some pretty big names um, for those interviews. And they were always <clears throat> very interesting to, to hear either executives or, you know, other uh, upper names and CEOs and people who, you know, worked in the games industry for a very long time. So I really, really miss that. But 
At the same time, um, I think Summer Game Fest. Sorry, uh, Summer Game Fest and um, <clears throat> what's it called? Summer Game Fest and then the the other one that happens because the Summer Games Fest, ha all right? Yeah, and the Game Awards. Those two events because what what started happening now is, <clears throat> especially now that the pandemic's wind like cooling off. It's still a thing, but it's like less of a threat. In Summer Games Fest season is sort of just becoming a mini E3 again. Like it's game developers are in town. People show up in town. They show games. And so press conferences happen. Um, and the game awards, the same sort of thing is starting to happen. Like I've been getting invites to events at like in LA at this time of year, which is weird. And also I have no interest in going, but like <laughs> at the same time, it's kind of interesting that there's like, these events happening again, and they're starting to invite press again, and they're starting to in invite idiots like me again. Because I used to get invites to go to E3, I never did. I kind of just didn't want to. Um, Manom, the bard, has created Kuril Letath, Kethud Death Therns, a platinum warhammer, and offers it to the Frosty Beards. We did it, chat. We have made a legendary plat. This is a platinum warhammer. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with oval pink jade cabochons and rectangular obsidian cabochons, decorated with cave spider silk and encircled with bands of platinum and octagon cut pink jades. This object menaces with spikes of pig bone and pigtail. On the item is an image of octagon cut gems in citron wood. So, I don't think StarCraft 2 never caught on. I, it's Star, StarCraft 2 absolutely caught on. It uh, just wasn't the best of the franchise, I would say. Um, but that's also a matter of opinion. So, who do I give this to? I could give it to the captain of the guard. That'd be kind of rad. I could make a hammerer and give it to them. I know what you mean, Shaka. Is a multi-million esports industry? Is it still a multi-million esports industry? Diablo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Diablo 2 is probably the best Diablo game, so you're not wrong, actually. Oh, boy. I also apparently lost my bookkeeper. What? Anyway, Alligator's my bookkeeper now. Hammers need hammers. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid at all of just, like, letting my military just kill people um, ad infinimum for no reason. So because I'm not even remotely afraid of doing that, um, it's not so much of a concern. I'm going to just do this. Just put a single tile office. Put Alligator the bookkeeper here. And I'm going to connect this to the Frosty Chocolate. So it's still it's technically connected now. Yeah, I heard about that, Cramp. Well, I mean, the, the next RT, the, the RTS game that'll hopefully take up the, the mantle is going to be Whatever the name of that thing is, um, of uh, Stormgate, right? That's the thing that people are like hoping will be the next StarCraft, because it's a bunch of ex-Blizzard people. I know that their crowdfunding campaign thing's doing quite well, so there's that. Am I not yet bored by Dwarf Fortress? I've been playing this game for a decade. I haven't burnt out yet. Is that a giant koala? Yep, that is in fact a giant koala. It lives there. Mm. 
Yeah, Stormgate. I'm curious to see how that does. It'll it would be really interesting to see a like RTS of that style come back. Let's see if we can clean some of this snow up. But uh, in regards to me and Dwarf Fortress, I don't really get burnt out on this game because there's so many different ways that you can play it. Like, there's times where I, I will get tired of portions of Dwarf Fortress. Um, and usually when that happens, the only real natural thing to do is um, play the game differently. So you had a prize pool of $500,000? I suppose. I, okay, I believe you. I just, I, I don't follow esports anymore at all. I used to, years ago. Rock blocks, I need more rock blocks. Let's just do 500. Adventure modes help with key helps with keep. Well, like, to give you an idea, I played like I don't know, 500 hours of City Skylines one. Got fucking bored of it. I played like three ish, four ish thousand hours of RimWorld and got really fucking bored of it. Um, I have played like probably 10,000 hours of this game, and I sometimes get a little bored of it, but. Not currently, that's for sure. I haven't gotten bored of it in the last year. The only times I think I really got bored of Dwarf Fortress um, was pre-launch when the stakes were a lot higher because... Like, I, I play this game as a job, right? Like, this, this is my full-time job. So I think the way I look at video games is a little bit different than somebody who doesn't do this as a job. But I think the easiest way to put it is when I'm playing games, I'm equally entertained by the game. Like, the process of playing the game entertains me, right? But also, the process of communicating with chat entertains me. So because of that, I, I, I guess, like, my capacity to not burn out on things is way more than somebody who's just playing games for fun. Because, like, I, I've been pretty open about this. I don't really play games for fun. <laughs> play games because it's my job. <laughs> uh, I mean, pre-Steam, I was trying to make a living with, like, 50, 60 viewers, which is absolutely doable. Um, it's just stressful. I mean, pre-Steam pre release, I had I managed to rack up, like, 12,000 YouTube subs and, like... Um, you know, and I, I stayed full-time streaming, so people did care. It was just a much smaller audience. Presme, thank you very much for the 11th month. Welcome back. And for the $2.50, just remember, as of tomorrow, you can get 10% extra on bits if you uh, cheer three bucks. So I would save your bits and wait until tomorrow because any cheer over $3 tomorrow, uh, Twitch adds 10% on top. So if you're going to do things today, gift subs. <laughs> That's what I would say. But thank you, Devildon, for the $2.50. And thank you to Presme for the 11 months of support. You don't play games for fun? Don't get me wrong. I have fun with my job. Right? But, like, it's a job. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, as much fun as my job is, it's still a job. And there are days where it is a job. Right? There are days where I just have a blast for nine hours, we play a shit ton of games, and we have a good time. And then there are days where I stream for nine hours, it feels like it took a week and a half, and I'm exhausted and need a nap when I'm done. Right? It, it, it depends on the day. Right? It's like it, it's like any other job. It, it doesn't matter how fun or... Ex like, you could have a job that is uh, taking care of and petting puppies for a living. 
That's a real do job. It's called called a dog therapist. Um, you could literally have that job. And then sometimes the puppy shits on the ground. And then you have to clean dog poop. And then your place smells like dog poop for the next six hours. And that sucks. I mean, there is a clip of me around the internet that just is just me saying I like it when my games step on me. So, yeah. <laughs> Some people do like the punishment. I don't consider myself a gaming YouTuber, if that's what you're asking. I've never thought about myself going, man, I'm a gaming YouTuber. No, I'm, a, I'm, an, entertainer, I'm, I'm an entertainer and a content creator. I create stuff on the internet for people's entertainment. If I think about myself as a gaming YouTuber or an influencer or, or any of those buzzwords, I slowly lose faith in what I'm doing because I just feel like I'm a corporate chill machine, which is the part of this industry that I fucking hate. Which is also like... So... I was, li I was listening to Remap Radio, um, who are the remnants of Waypoint, essentially, from Vice, um, with a new name. And they had some really interesting things to say when it comes to, like, content creator funding. Um, long and the short of it is we are completely obliterated and abused by the platforms that we... That, that we work on, right? We make a lot of money for these platforms, and by these platforms, I mean YouTube, I mean Twitch, I mean TikTok, I guess, theoretically, or every, any other platform where you post stuff that you make. We are completely abused by them. They, most of them underpay. Um, they promote extreme amounts of competition between us. Um, they make it very difficult to make an income consistently because of the way the ad market works and because of Google devaluing ads and all that. Um, so in order for a lot of people who do this for a living to get by, they have to take sponsorships from the people that they're advertising, which is ass backwards or bass backwards. If you're thinking about it from a journalism perspective or like a critiquing perspective. Um, but it's so commonplace now because of the way the platforms that we operate within work that it's basically impossible to make a living unless you do that. Um, and the, I guess the one thing I was always super lucky and thankful for uh, is the fact that I never needed to do that. Even at the times when, like, you know, numbers were at their lowest, like, there was maybe two months, I think, of my entire streaming career where I really needed to pursue sponsorships. And uh, trust me, th that, those two months sucked. It was like three, it was, it was like two or three months, and it, it was awful um, because having to pursue sponsorships is the worst because it's like, Hey, developer, I like your game. Give me money and I'll play it. <laughs> it's like having to cold call people like that. It just, it blows. And then there are sites that act as middlemen that will make that process less painful, but it's still just still fucking painful. I've, I've got, I've done commissioned videos for Kit Foxes, but Kit Foxes never paid me to play a video game. They've commissioned videos for me, which is kind of different. Because that's them saying, hey, we want you to make this video. Not huge in regards to their cut. It's not huge, but they do take a cut, those sites. Commissioning a tutorial is way different than being a sponsor. Yeah. I mean, they've sent me merch. That's bribery, I suppose. But also, when they commission tutorials, they let me post them on my YouTube channel, too, so. It's kind of sad that this stuff isn't freezing. <sighs> Section of... Cavern collapse? Oh, really? Shit. So what I'm going to do in a minute, once I'm done digging out most of this, is I'm going to dump some more lava onto here. We're going to turn these back on. We are going to turn these back on. That's what we're going to do.
I have a question. Why does everybody think that, Darkson? Because, like, the, the statement that you just made. Let's just say that we are yet in an era where games are yet big, major part of social culture, but that is going to be... That's going to change. What do you mean, first off? And are you saying that it's not a part of the social structure yet and will be? Or are you saying that it is and it soon won't be? I'm trying to figure out what you're saying. Is this a glacial volcano? No, 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 no. This is just a glacier and I pumped lava to the surface. I pumped the lava through here. From the from the lava sea all the way up into my little moat. Oh, that's cool. All this stuff's drying up and we're getting mushrooms growing in the walls. That's rad. I well, video games are the biggest, most profitable media in existence. The games industry eclipses music. The games industry eclipses film. The game, like, international film. Like, it, yeah. Anyway, also, we have an artifact that was seen being stolen. Uh, who saw it? Uh, Kib, the Baroness of Righteous Vessel. So, Kib, you... You've stolen my mace. So I'm trying to uh, catch them. Uh-oh. Where are you going with my mace? If I mace. Ham has grown to be a weaponsmith. Okay, where is my captain of the guard? Interrogate. Come on, dude. Chase him. Catch him. Sections of caverns are collapsing. Ah. Bet you Venno's at fault, this person. You still have the... You do not still have the artifact in your inventory. It is on the ground. Let's see where it goes. Now, where did that human go? There you are. We're going to watch this human who is following very kindly right behind <laughs> right behind the door. Also, um we've got all, we're we're digging up all the bodies now. All of there's Cubini's body, there's Dalmas's body. All these dwarves that got turned into uh either ice or obsidian. So this is interesting. The human Monster Slayer, instead of grabbing the artifact off of the ground, is actually just straight up following the dwarf that they are trying to get the item from. I'm fucking sorry, what, Venus? <laughs> is there a PS5 port of Dwarf Fortress? Absolutely not. And is there, is there a, a console port of Dwarf Fortress? Absolutely not. Will there ever be one? Absolutely not. <laughs> Where the hell are you getting that from, dude? Um, Santa is giving away five vile force of mugs in the chat. If you're in the Twitch chat, exclamation point, enter, and you can win a mug. I'll say Tobes. Tobes, is that you who became a, a, a YouTube member, or is there a different Tobes out there? This doesn't work in the YouTube chat. You have to do it in the Twitch chat also, just a reference. So we, Kib confessed. Um, so we are going to convict you. And uh, they've implicated this person, Vino Milor. So I'm going to interrogate and convict him. So let's hope that we can get this dwarf, or not this dwarf, this human interrogated. Sweet. I already got him. I also need to get that platinum warhammer onto a dwarf. I passed 12 months finally. Thank you very much for one year, Bane. It's good to have you. It's 
It's almost like it's been a year since people found my stream. Also, you're another 12, 12, 12. On the 12th month, on the 12th day, you're sub turn 12. Well done. And uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so, Robol, Lord Corodium, uh, Ramit, uh, Darius, and Kashmir Goat. I think that's all five. That's five names. Yeah. Uh, if you click on that link, uh, you can redeem your gift. Thank you, Santa. Whomever you may be. Our interrogation is now done. So, implicate somebody who isn't here. But uh, Vuno gets their conviction. Uh, Santa entered to, or uh, has, has giving, uh, sorry, Santa is now giving away two hoodies. If you would like a, uh, another fortress hoodie, a, a hoodie that looks like this. Now you can. My mom has one of these. She loves it. She says it's very comfy. <laughs> That's actually true. She does. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, exclamation point enter. Thank you very much, Santa. Appreciate you. Um, but now we have another person who isn't here. So let's see what the intelligence says. So he interrogated by Righteous Vessel and Vuno, the human uh, poet, corrupted uh, the subject in order to have a agent in the sunbirds. Um, they met with the subject and the plan worked. The subject revealed that in late winter of 107, the subject plotted to steal duty spells, the Coven of Blazes, under the influence of Uno White Whip, which, by the way, White Lip, which, by the way, is the most attempted to be stolen artifact in the fortress. Um, I can't wait until this UI gets cleaned up. Unidentified, unidentified, unidentified. Um, Jamma Hazer and uh, Contotal have both won the hoodies. So if you click on that link, you can redeem your hoodies. Thank you, Santa. Appreciate you. Um, okay, whatever. Let's uh, go all the way to the bottom of this and see this. Wow. 96. Well, they they did all they've been plotting to steal things for a while. Quite some time. Also, it seems like Mogum clam sprays. I never want to say clam spray out loud again, but Mogum clam sprays seems to be the cause of all of this. Apparently, uh, this um, the the true name of Vuno Whitelip is actually Todd Shark Fury, Fury, Todd Shark Fury. But previously, I've also gone by the alias Kogan Spear Whisker. Uh, <laughs> the good name, Spear Whisker. Uh, also, uh, Shark Fury is a much better last name than Whitelip. Todd Shark Fury. And Todd, to me, Todd Shark Fury sounds like, you know, like how um, esports people have like first name, online handle, last name. Be like Todd Shark Fury Anderson <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? That's funny. Awesome. Um, fantastic. All right. So now we've, we've got this person who's confessed. But uh, I don't have their overlord here, so. Now, is someone going to get a beating? Nope. Uh, chain? Nope. I'm assuming this dude will go to prison, right? Right, 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 right? Pretty well better. 253 days in prison! Hot damn! <laughs> Attempted theft and espionage. Let's just make sure that they get imprisoned. Oh, Kib's been found dead. Well, we already killed the dwarf who um, was taking part in this.
Used to be a word for death. Wait, really? I love how they get walked past all of this. That's kind of rad. So I've been kind of thinking about maybe making these into execution chambers where we just dump lava onto their heads. Bump and stumpins in prison. Angry after being confined. Whew. Wow. Needy bastard. Uh, mm. I'm very much considering just making steel cabinets. Let's do that. Let's do steel cabinets. Let's just do um, 60 steel cabinets. Steel cabinet. Let's make 60 of them. Just so that these dwarves can get their clothing put away. Give them some nice things. Well, Shark Fury is, is their name, but yes. Um, right, I was making tombs. So let's also do three platinum tombs, sarcophaguses. So platinum sarcophagus. Make three of those. Death Shark Fury, yes. Which is a very good name. And these tombs are going to be assigned to my nobles. Oh, it's German for death. Oh, I understand. Okay. Huh. I wonder what... I don't know what it means in Dwarf Fortress. It, it, it likely means something completely unrelated. <laughs> but I don't know if Stone's still here. They're the, they're the most knowledgeable about Dwarf language. Around this channel, anyway. To make sure all of the gifts got redeemed. Yes, they did. Sweet. Sometimes the, diff, the, the gifts don't all get redeemed. So they all, they all did. Sometimes if they don't, I'll either yell out at, for a person to catch it back. Oh, shit. Teakwill came back. Was, and they were spotted sneaking around. And they say, I live to fight another day. Don't I have a, like a sentence against you? Nope. So this person has also attempted to steal my stuff a couple of times. I think I, I will let Tequil escape. I'm not even going to try and kill him. But th this is another human who has tried to steal my stuff. Although, I could try and interrogate him. Schedule an interview. If we can. Because when he comes back, we'll forcibly interview him next time. Four lovers and a wife and so many kids. and You're out here trying to steal stuff from dwarves. A low pursuit indeed. All right, it doesn't actually look like I'm going to need to turn the lava back on. But all the same... We're going to go all the way around all this. And then we're going to turn the lava back on, and we will give this thing a test run. Or rather, not a test run, but like seal up the last of the chunks. Todd was human, yeah. So it's a human name. At least in Dwarf Fortress. It's a human language name. No lava flooding? No intentional lava flooding. But there's been plenty of lava flooding. It's just not intentional. But I'm... Another thing I should also be doing is going up here and placing ice. Right, 
We're going to place all that ice up there. Some of that will probably get canceled, but it's fine. So we're trying to get as much of this out as possible. Uh-oh. Found Sieve dead. We're still digging up the corpses of our dead friends. And some stuff just caved in. That's okay, though. There it is. Let's go all the way up to here. Todd means bar. Huh. I guess if you have a name like that, it holds you to a pretty high bar. So, I do have this drainage spot. So any lava that doesn't, that en that ends up flowing into there will flow off the map. Get some more ice in here. Okay, so I need 10, 10 layers. So one, two, three. Oh, did I not trade with the dwarves yet? Shit. I don't think I did. I definitely did not. Um, shit. Let's just... Hey, you know what? Let's just not trade with them this year. It's fine. We already have the king. Why is the elevation so low? Because... What? It's not. What do you mean? I'm trying to figure out what you mean by why is the elevation so low. What is this hole I'm digging going to be? This is going to be where I defend things from things. Very clear. <laughs> Statements made by me. It's a place where I defend things from things. Come on in, Clutch. I'm all right. And yourself? Because we're at sea level. I mean, this is this is sea level, but it also depends on where you are on the map. Right? But it's because we're at sea level. We're on a glacier. I guess that's why you'd think that the elevation is low, but we're on a glacier, so. Tips for snowy biomes? Uh, Dig to the caverns so you have food. That's about it. That's like, I guess, one thing that I'm really bad at with Dwarf Fortress is I'm really, really bad at like giving people advice for things that I forget that people need advice for. <laughs> it's like, how do you survive in a like in, in a frozen biome? It's like, well, it's exactly the same as every other biome, except you have to dig into the caverns slightly earlier. That's like th the only difference, really. Oh, probably, yeah. I mean, I there, there's nothing abnormal about the the elevation of this embark. Nothing abnormal. I've had, like, above-ground elevation that starts at minus 15. Like, it really just kind of depends. It varies pretty wildly. Can't wait for Adventure Mode. I hope people are not disappointed by Adventure Mode. But I'm also looking forward to it. It'll be fun. 
You just live in the cavern layers? Yeah. I mean, that's one way to do it. Very dwarfy. Nope. No, the cold doesn't negatively affect dwarves. Unless they're frozen solid in a block of ice. Then it negatively affects them. And uh, for anybody wondering what this is going to be, this is going to be a rack of minecart cannons. Which means I'm going to have to get lava up here, which is going to be interesting. <laughs> but it's okay. I got lava pretty close. Getting lava up there is going to be a, a, a chore, though. I'm also going to need to have a steady supply of lava being pumped up here. Okay, that should be fine for right now. So once all that is constructed, I'm going to turn all these pumps on. Um, but first, I, I need the last of these walls to get built. Uh, definitely pumping. Minecart hauling isn't going to be enough. Although I think I might fill it from the bottom. So the minecarts will fall down into lava and then be propelled out of the lava. But I don't know exactly yet. <laughs> yeah, I really like the claustrophobic caverns, but sometimes having a nice open cavern can be pretty nice. But I, I like the claustrophobic ones so that I can then go in there with my dwarves and hollow it out build it to be more um, wide and open on, on my own. I find that very satisfying. A migrant has arrived. I think we're actually at my population cap. Nasty ninja is throwing a tantrum. God damn it, nasty ninja. You son of a dwarf. Also just realized I haven't actually given a dwarf my hammer yet. So I'm just going to give the hammer to this dwarf. Captain of the guard. You like having a decent cave forest, which is weird in narrow caves? No, that makes sense. I mean, I've definitely increased the cavern openness before. I just don't do it very often. Okay, now we're in ads. So I gotta wait. And after the ad break, we will start pumping lava. We will start pumping lava tomorrow. Tomorrow. After the ads are over, which is tomorrow in the spring. You're alive? Yes, you are in fact alive. You are not dead in this fortress yet. Fortunately. Well, I'm not going to have levers to pull. We're just literally going to tell the dwarves to manually start pumping. Start pumping, dwarves. And we're going to fill this thing up with lava again. We'll see. I, there might even be some cavens. But what I really wanted to do is I just wanted to reseal the corners. Um... And make the rest of the ground either sand or um, obsidian. Either or. And then the remainder will just drain out. And then we can really get to construction. Because I will have my big open hole. Which is where the baddies are going to go. Bring out the whip then. Sure. Sure. Schrodinger's dwarfies and both alive and dead at the same time, depending on where you look. Sure. <laughs> ah, things are all right. Serious salsas. I'm just waiting for some ads to finish. All right. Now that the ads are finished and this whole thing is constructed, we're just waiting for one more boulder to get built into a wall piece. Assuming is what you're doing. Nope, you're removing a construction. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all this minus this wall. We're not actually going to remove that wall, but I am going to remove these. The reason I'm doing that is so that the dwarves stop going into here. 
um, this way. So if they're going to go in, they're going to go in this way, um, which will give them more time to run. And uh, once that's done, it's time to begin pumping. This is going to fill up pretty quick, I think. Yep, there it goes. Okay, there goes that. Okay, this this one is a little bit less the way I want. Still getting there. Now it gets to its drain, which is right here. This stuff is so neat. Especially when it starts doing that. Like the game can't decide if it's going to melt or turn to obsidian. God, this is such a neat project. Let's just let this seal up, because it's sealed up now. Let me wait for everything to cool down. You killed a mess of forgotten beasts? What? Like, you just took out a whole bunch of forgotten beasts type deal? Lava drains out there. I love how we've ended up with ice down here somehow. We can continue building. So what I need to do is I'm going to start building walls up here. Uh, any dwarves can pump that amount of lava that quickly. Pumps are extraordinarily efficient. Um, so the lavas go in and out of a pool of... The minecarts go in, in and out of a pool of lava. They are then launched down a ramp, um, and then they hit fortifications at the bottom, and then they drop down into lava and go again. <laughs> Is how it works. It's a pretty slow process, but uh, another one of my weaponsmiths has been possessed. He's already a legendary weaponsmith. Did my giant kitties have kittens or something, or did, did that one just run by because it's enthusiastic about existing? No murder kittens yet. I'm sad. No baby jaguars. Yes, lava cannons. Exactly. Yes, pretty much. Corrodium. I mean, I could just fire the whole minecart, but that's significantly less effective. Although, if you want to get super meta, you could fill up minecarts with lava and then fire minecarts full of lava out of a minecart. But, like, there, there's a point where it's just, it's more work than it's worth and it just kind of gets redundant after a while. So, I wonder what stuff you'll end up grabbing. So it's this shop, iron, coffee, and pink jades. 
You've always wanted to find some overcomplicated way to fill a minecart with molten metal? Uh, put a metal item or metal bars into minecart. Then put minecart in lava. And by the time minecart come out of lava, they're probably molten? The result might be you just end up firing lava at things, but that, that's the only way I could think to do that. Uh, the Forgotten Beast Shedim has come. A gigantic anteater with external ribs. It has a knobby trunk and appears to be emaciated. Uh, its yellow hair is short and even. Beware its webs. Wow. Um, hmm. I don't want to make this dwarf go insane, but I also want to kill that thing. Uh, so I'm going to take a risk, and we're going to do that. I'm going to open this. Where is it? On the lower level? Also, I just realized that all of my geese have died. <laughs> so I have to put some other animals down here. Uh, put a keat. I've always seen minecart shotguns and lava cannons in short YouTube vids. You're looking forward to seeing it happen. It's going to take a while. Like, I probably won't get it done today. It is a slow process. Why are you chained twice? Oh shit, there's a Yeti on the map. And currently, I can't find the Forgotten Beast, so hopefully it shows up again. It's currently fighting with cave crocodiles. Oh, maybe it won't make it to me. It's bleeding heavily. Meanwhile, some minotaur has shown up. <laughs> named uh, Requimno Sereisi has come. A great humanoid monster with the head of a bull. Game, why do you have to send a monster from the bottom and a monster from the top at the same time? Okay, well, this one's boring. He has nothing. Did kill some goblins, though. All right, upper squad. You guys go beat the crap out of this dude. The Wall of War the Will of Warriors. See what shocked puzzle? The Will of Warriors. Everything's happening at once, help. I think my dwarves just spotted something. Well, we'll leave them there and hopefully they kill anything that comes in. We'll follow this bull. Zorkim is back on the map again. Going meta with the... You've always wondered if there's some... Going meta with DF, what makes it worse in your playing? Play what you think is cool and enjoy, and, and enjoy the potential chaos. Yeah, no, I agree. Oh. Yeti picking on, or Yeti getting picked on by Minotaur. Poor Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dr. Nish runs up and kills both of them. Just like, do doesn't even give a fuck. Just runs at them and kills both of them. Just immediately. That is pretty great, actually. <laughs> Just kill kills the Yeti and the, uh, and the Minotaur. That's funny. You've gotten into Dwarf Fortress and you wanted to let me know how much you appreciate the tutorial videos that you created this year. Definitely accelerated the learning curve. Happy to help. Yeah, happy to help. And thanks for saying thanks. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching this stuff. I get to have a cool job because people watch my videos. Now let's go back down to this monstrosity. Which, it has webs, right? Why aren't you using your webs? You'd be winning if you were using your webs. Instead, you're just bleeding everywhere.
Uh-oh. Well. <laughs> rest in peace, Kib, I suppose. I, I do appreciate the enthusiasm, but, like... <laughs> I, d for some reason, don't think that was the wisest thing I've seen a dwarf do all day. Now you start shooting your webs. There you go. And he dies. <laughs> Crocodile got the kill. Well... Okay, well, I guess it's best that we just send my military down here. This is a legendary crocodile who's currently experiencing mortal fear. Killed both the dwarf and the forgotten beast, the snots of shadow. Now we just have to wait for the military to show up sometime this year. And they're like, oh god, what happened? Let's just kill that. Um, you know, I'm just gonna station my dwarves here for a little bit. And, uh, we're gonna make this into part of the burrow for a second. And we're going to butcher this animal. And get these dwarves out of here. So get this dwarf buried and removed and uh, get this thing butchered. They're going to eat the beastie? Damn right. And we got an artifact iron short sword, which was claimed as a, as a family heirloom. This is a iron short sword. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with single cut white jades and point cut citrines and decorated with coffee and wood and encircled with bands of dog leather. This object menaces with spikes of pink jade and forgotten beast leather. On the item is an image of a swamp titan in iron. On the item is an on the item is an image of the shame of amber, a pig iron mace in Gavro, which is one of the most attempted stolen artifacts in the fort. right there um trying to figure out where i could put it let's put it here this one's called ashen unless they're trying to move it right now in which case then it'll be not selectable there. Oh, and I see. I had the name wrong. It's this one. All right. Um, let's get back down to where that critter was. Is so much blood. Hey, you know what? Actually, we'll just let them haul this. Yeah, so this thing's bringing the mutilated corpse up. I think I need more coffins. Maybe that dwarf wasn't a permanent member of the fortress. I'm starting to think. The reason I say that is because I'm noticing that they are not burying it. So it's probably just not a member of the fort. All right. Well, in that case, move this. What? That's not needed. And send all of the military inside. I'm just going to follow this dwarf who's got the body of it. Enjoyed your lurk, Selkord.
Uh, nothing transforms your dwarves into monsters after touching them. Discussing problems with an acquaintance. This thing is heavy. I'm carrying it by myself. Certainly, but there is nothing that turns your dwarves into monsters after touching it. Um, were creatures turn dwarves into were creatures after they've been bit, but um, forgotten beasts that output gases and contaminants, um, a lot of that stuff got nerfed pretty heavily a couple of years ago. Um, so I wouldn't actually say that that's really something you need to concern yourself with at all. I know that every now and again you'll see like tutorial videos talking about, oh yeah, and make sure that all your dwarves like completely rinse themselves after fighting. It's like, no, you don't need to worry about that. You used to, but you really don't now. Unless you're in a um, an area where they get syndromes, um, because syndromes can be pretty bad. But uh, even those like not something you really need to worry about. I think that there's a there's a lot of like people being overly concerned about how the Forgotten Beasts work because in older versions of the game, a lot of that stuff was a lot more punishing. Like in older versions of the game, if you ended up in a situation where, um, let's just say you had one dwarf get some deadly dust on them, that could like spread onto a mug and then kill other dwarves. But they either nerfed it into oblivion or it's like, such an unlikely thing that that'll happen especially like if you just have a well because if dwarves have contaminants on them like if dwarves get covered in let's just say uh deadly dust right and that deadly dust makes them nauseous and vomit let's just say uh which would be pretty mild deadly dust or let's just say it gives them um uh i don't know it, it makes their skin rot and then they need that skin cut off if they go to a well and clean themselves all of the contaminants are gone right so as long as you have a well in your fortress, you kind of don't need to worry about that stuff. You could even butcher the corpse and eat it, and that wouldn't cause any problems. No, I don't know. I, I think I think that a lot of people overthink that stuff these days because it used to be significantly more punishing. But since we have like soap and wells, it's like just have a well and some soap, and uh, you'll never really run into problems with that. Because of sparring with an ash-coated weapon in this version? Did you have a soap... So, a well with soap? Because they will clean that. But yeah, I mean, I... I just for clarity's sake, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it's significantly less likely than it used to be. That's all. It used to be less of a... It used to be more of a deal. No, I mean they bring soap to a well and then wash themselves with the soap. Don't even build wells. I think the reality is is most people are really bad at this game, myself included. Um, so because of this, there's a lot of old slash misinformation that gets thrown around, which isn't bad. It's fine. It's not a big deal, really. Forgotten Beast meets back on the menu, boys. I'm actually really curious to see how much of this works its way into... Or actually, if this stuff's even going to get tanned. It might actually just get thrown out. I need to check. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's old thinking, right? Like, I, I've been playing in version... 28 was <laughs> one of the earlier 3D versions of the game recording footage for side project and uh, in that version all aquifers are heavy aquifers period um, and I think like reading the wiki in that era I think most people just either modded aquifers out or never figured out how to get through them I know how to get through heavy aquifers it's a pain in the ass but I can do it um and it's really kind of interesting trying to read wiki entries from back then because most of them, are, it's quite literally just like, 
oh yeah, no, you don't do this. Don't do do not ever settle on an aquifer. It's like, and then you'll still see people giving people that advice now. It's like, oh, don't ever settle on an aquifer. It's like, I mean, good luck, I suppose. I mean, fair enough, still. But I certainly have moments where I feel like I'm really bad at this game. That is so weak. I mean, let's, I, it's the light aquifers are much more realistic than the heavy aquifers. Okay, I. This is a problem. This needs to stop happening. Um. I have skin. in this, meaning we are throwing out hides. I don't actually want to do. I not do do I not I do have a tanner shop. Or just a slight pain once I knew once I knew how to deal with them. Yeah, I just almost never settle on them because I'm lazy. <laughs> like that's that's honestly the main reason I don't ever settle on them is because I'm lazy. Got nothing to do with difficulty. It's just I'm lazy. <laughs> like genuinely, that's that's why I don't usually settle on them. Is it's just a little bit too much tedium for me. But then again, I have people that still leave comments on my how to dig through aquifers video. And that's just how to dig through light aquifers, um, stating that they can't figure it out and it's too complicated. And it's like, well, I, if, if you can't figure it out from this video, then I, I, you, you, you're too far gone. I can't help you. Not even going to try. It's like as much as I would love to help you, I just straight up can't. There we go. Let's see how much leather I get out of this. I'm actually really curious how many pieces of leather I get out of this. Forgotten, one forgotten beast skin. So this is Zerkia Rim's skin. You just dig in smooth walls. Yep. Certain types of items can still be an issue when taking out of bins. Wow, hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pieces of leather. That's not bad. Yeah, bins aren't broken like they used to be. They are just kind of annoying sometimes, is how I would describe bins. They are sometimes kind of annoying, but generally bins are fine. It's like rare edge cases where they become like an unplayable problem. I think the, the thing with bins is they're supposed to be an organizational thing that sometimes completely ruins your organization. <laughs> but they're certainly not what they used to be. That's that's for sure. But you at the same time, you still don't want to put your seed bags into into bins. And you also still don't want to put your seed bags into barrels. I forgot what you're saying here. Somebody in the YouTube chat talking, I'm trying to figure out what they're saying. Isn't it a little bit weird to make rooms out of ice? I don't know, isn't it weird to make rooms? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same as any other stone in this game. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. You can put seed bags into barrels. And if you put seed bags into barrels, then they can only take out the last the seeds from the bag that was put in last. So like if you have a seed bag that has pigtail seeds and then a seed bag that has hemp seeds and a seed bag that has plump helmet seeds and the plump helmet seeds went in first, then you can only get the hemp seeds out until all of the of seeds in that top bag are removed. And it so 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 that's why you don't want to put bag or barrels into your seed stockpiles. A really nice hoodie just arrived. Very nice. Uh, the Dwarf Fortress one or one of mine? Those are a thing in real life. Why are you surprised? As somebody who likes cold weather, I I usually build those up in mountains by myself, make little snow forts and live in them. Sure, I mean, if you wanted to go that route, Jethan. I just remove barrels. <laughs> it's kind of that simple. And then just allow dwarves to cook all the types of seeds that I don't want. You went it last week? Oh, awesome. Sweet. I'll be honest with you, I cannot keep track of who wins what. <laughs> and like, there, there will be times where like someone will be like, the, uh, the, the mug arrived, yay. And I'll be like, yay, your mug arrived. I, I can't remember what you won, but yay. <laughs> Your mug arrived. Store owned item. I love it when I see this. Look at this. Look at this dwarf putting all their stuff away. What a good dwarf. Look at this dwarf. Taking a nap. Hopefully soon to put their stuff away. The best. When you see dwarves like putting their own clothes away. Almanac over here putting all his stuff away too. What's up, Jezza? How's the fort going? It's going. Uh, I mean, it started off with some calamities, but we've we've, rec we've recovered pretty nicely. That part's good. The uh, the next plan is to simply finish building this thing up. But having a planter walk across from the walk across the fortress while all your other planters are left to do other things was annoying. Yeah. No. I I, I just At the end of the day, when when it comes to like weird advice from old players, the one that I will always get annoyed by is people encouraging people to ignore the existence of uh aquifers, because aquifers are a very important thing to learn in the game. And uh then aside from that, it's just, you know. People having this weird aversion of digging down in some cases, because I think like a lot of the the most interesting fort designs happen when you start tunneling, right? The most interesting fort designs happen when you are digging deep. Um, the most exciting forts happen when you are digging, and I think that some of the oldest advice that still exists for this game is you dig sideways into a cliff, right? Because that's how version twenty three A was played, and I I still to this day see. Like, obviously, I'll, I'll build forts that are primarily on one layer, but we've also dug down to other, like, the caverns, right? So there's there's more going on than just that. And I think that that's pretty important. I think some people miss that. Just look at Moria. Very interesting dwarven design. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I mean, here, I'll, I'll show you my seed stockpile since the YouTube chat is also talking about it. Um, this is my seed stockpile. It's just for pigtails, and also, I I had a farm plot destroyed, apparently. Uh, it's literally just for pigtails, and that's it. So it's like, it, it's, it's pigtails and plump helmets. And I, you know, it's just seed bags, and that's it. And we're just constantly making pigtail thread into cloth right here. Just on repeat, forever. Ad infinimum. I think I... I was going to say, I think I slaughtered the baby albatrosses, but no, actually, I think they grew up. 
Oh, I actually have a wild albatross in here. That's a problem. Do, 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 do. That's fine, though. Not a huge deal. Yeah, that, that is also part of why I put so much stuff onto a single layer on my stream. Is because it is easier for audience members to follow. There certainly is a degree of that. Okay, so that's all spilled over into here now. Hmm. You know, I think I'm going to deconstruct this wall. And I'm going to get this water out this way. Because I need to get this water out. The way I'm going to do it is we're just going to drain it down here. It's not going to look pretty, but hey, it'll work. Jess, thank you very much for the raid. How was the rims of the worlds today? That big base that you're building. I'm um, goofing off in ice and lava and other shenanigans and... There's been a lot of collateral damage, uh, but it's okay because we have a giant koala that lives in the tavern. How was your stream today, Jess? Welcome, Raiders. Stone, could I get a shout-out for Jess, please, when you have a moment? If you guys don't know Jess, uh, she plays a variety of video games. She has cute pets and uh, streams. It's this weird thing that some people do for some reason. Never quite figured out why, but here we are. I'm blind. I, I play way too much Dwarf Fortress, and sometimes people let me play other games. Today you reached 1,000 subs on YouTube. Hell yeah! YouTube needs to figure out how to raid people. YouTube needs to get better at that kind of crap. Instead of being like its weird, like, self-centered, only me thing. You know? It's just the one stream. That's it. Because I, I, I kind of I think it would be fun if we could, like, start figuring out how to raid people. But I will say, uh, streaming on YouTube does inflate your sub count. I get like 10 to 30 subs per stream, but... Oh, speaking of giant cute things, uh, we also have murder mittens. We have a collection of murder mitts. Uh, we have giant dingoes. We're getting kind of old now, actually. Um, we've got uh, giant jaguars and other things. Also, apparently, um, Santa is giving away two more hoodies. So if you want to win a hoodie, type in exclamation point enter. Which is also a feature that Jess has in her chat now, too. Where you can gift merch. But happy holidays, courtesy of Coca-Cola Branding Man. What else do we have for... Oh, yeah, we also have Big Owl. It was very big. We also have a giant cardinal, which I agree looks like uh, it get, like a, an animal that got hit by a truck. Like, it looks like roadkill. <laughs> it just looks like a death, like a dead splat on the ground. Um, yeah. Also, I figured out that I could melt snow off dwarves if I put a little bit of lava right beneath the layers. So instead of them tracking snow into the fort... Um, it melts off their body right when they right 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 when they walk in, which I probably my my biggest achievement of the day is uh, dwarf covered in snow. The snow gets pushed off, which is kind of great. All right, let's close this. Check that strange mood out. Unless it's done. Yeah, okay, the strange mood is done. Sweet. Most of the dwarves are just socializing, which is good. Giving them breaks. Underfloor heated entrances is epic. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm real proud of it. Like that's maybe like the portion of this fort that I'm the most proud of right now. I'm trying to. I want to build a library. I just don't know where to put it. Uh, Sirius Cell says a no man. Congratulations on your on your uh, successful wins of hoodies, and uh, the dwarves are partying on your behalf. Oh look, who's back? I want to interrogate this warrior. Yeah, risky visitors. So this creature, assuming you can hear me over the great music, is a large feathered humanoid. It has large mandibles and black feathers. Its black feathers are long and broad. Oh. 
An item was seen being stolen. Crime is being committed during a party night. How dare you? Interesting. So, who saw it being stolen? Alligator? My bookkeeper? Oh no! We'll have to interrogate. Does she still have it? Yep, it's in her inventory. It's one of my maces. I'll bet you she's going to go give it to this guy. Oh, 100% she is. Look at that. Tisk tisk. They're even doing the change off in my fortress. Well, let's see what door you're going for, dude. Okay, wait, he doesn't have it in his inventory just yet. She, he, she. She doesn't have it in her inventory just yet. Rarely looks on others with lust. Well, there's very few like you, so. Hmm. I'll lock you inside real quick. Looks like they dropped it on the floor. Did they? Oh yeah, I think it's it's already back on the pedestal, I think. Because I have a feeling we're currently interrogating that dwarf. Okay, getting chained up, actually. Did we interrogate them yet? I don't think so. Okay, so they, they are chaining her up first. So now we're going to go interrogate the creature. Come on, dwarf. Yeah, exactly, Poplio. Um, interesting. I'm just trying to figure out where that blood came from, but... I'm also amazed by the frame rate of this fortress. Okay, so I'm going to lock this door. Okay, so interrogation is complete. Oh boy. So they confessed... In the midsummer of 108, it's midwinter now, um, they plotted to infiltrate the Frosty Beards. I saw them here once. Um, and they, uh, it, they, so, so they tried to steal a, an artifact here once. And then in, oh, in, uh, in early winter, they successfully, um, corrupted Alligator, um, in order to have an agent here. And, uh, then tried to steal child, chilled basins. And so... They are, have now confessed to theft, and they have confessed to espionage, and they implicated somebody in a bunch of other things, so. Which means we're gonna go chain them up. Actually, you know probably where the blood came from? It was probably sitting on his uniform, and he probably crouched down when he walked through um, that door, and then it came off in the snow, most likely. Not bad. And then another item immediately seen being stolen. Excuse me? You at the weaponsmith. They're <laughs> like, Captain the Guard's busy, get it! It's like a goddamn series of heists going on. 
Also, they literally are trying to steal the same one. This one. It's always this one. Always the same one. Go put it back on display. It's always one of the two maces. Glacier's 11, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think what, what I need to do... I, I keep on saying I'm going to build a library. What I, what I really need to do is I need to build a library and I need to make a captain... Uh, a, a dungeon master is what I need to do. Well, this is what happens when you have a super open public tavern, right? Okay, so they've confessed. I scroll all the way down this list. I mean, who wouldn't want those artifact maces? I mean, come on. Zogot, the human mo as the human monster slayer, Tharara, the pure nations, corrupted the subject in order to have an agent, and they tried to steal it. Um, so, in that case, implicates a person who's no longer here. Well, that's, that's a damn shame. Any reason they want it? Uh, usually value and or rarity. They're kind of, it's kind of like a dragon's thing. The, the, the enemies just, or the other factions acquire wealth for the sake of acquiring wealth. And what happens is the artifacts we made and the artifacts in Dwarf Fortress lore are like magical legendary items, right? So rumors of the items spread when visitors come. So visitors come and they hang out and bards talk to your dwarves about the artifacts and they learn about the existence of the artifacts. And then as time goes on, rumors of the artifacts spread throughout the world. And then uh, powerful individuals can send for an artifact. Basically, they put out a bounty on it. And that's a type of quest that you can get in adventure mode. And then these dudes uh, that show up and try and steal them, like this guy, um, this warrior, or um, that human that was in here for a, a while ago that I think has been since let out. Nope, he's still here. Like this human. This human is a an adventurer. This is an AI-driven adventurer. So this character uh, was sent by somebody to try and steal one of my items. And uh, this visitor is ready to leave. Oh, aren't you now? Don't you think you're ready to leave? But um, they, they're given a quest, right? And the quest is to go steal my items. Um, which is a quest that you can get in adventure mode. Is go steal an item from somebody. Um, or go acquire that item back. And... This is something that was added in in when they put out Villains Part 1 in 2020. Um, and this whole system is going to be expanded with Villains Part 2, and I can't wait. <laughs> I really can't wait. So the reason they want the artifacts is because they were given a quest by an, a third-party external thing outside of my fortress to go steal my artifacts that rumors were shared of. Because they've been around longer, yeah. But um, also, it depends on how many visitors you have, right, Lord Coronium? Because, like, I pretty frequently, you'll get those little speech, I, I get these little speech bubbles that pop up that says so-and-so has uh, told so-and-so of the existence of this item in this fortress, right? So let's see how long this guy's going to be in prison for. Also, cold clay cases. Oh, luck. 247 days, not bad. How about human? 140 more days for espionage. What exactly will part two of villains entail? So you see this screen? This is the like justice system, right? You see the you see this screen? Rather, this intelligence screen? All of this? These will be completable. And instead of right now we're this is kind of a skeleton of a system. Is that a forgotten beast in my prison? Uh, no, it's a necromancer experiment. Um, necromancer experiments are creatures that were once human, dwarf, elf, goblin, uh, that were basically turned into Frankenstein's monsters by necromancers. Um, this this will be completable. So right now, this stuff like really isn't completable, but like you can see like these drop down me menus of like the different actors and whatnot. The idea is that you'll actually be able to dig into these systems and 
like, see, I can click on these different names, and it says, like, selected actor, Kib, okay. So we we, we killed Click Kib, that was one of my dwarves. The assistant was Rallin, who got away. Um, Todd, Shark Fury, who we were able to um, capture, who, who is the human in the fortress. Now we just need to figure out who their boss is. It was someone named Nihide or Pult. Um, but that's only two of nine characters that we know of. So, like... Or two, two of nine different groups of criminal actors that we know of, right? Um, we don't know who or where this boss is. But Villains Part 2 ideally will give us the ability to figure out where they are and then go get them. Um, alternatively, Tarn... I don't know how this is going to surface in-game. But Tarn has talked about wanting us to be able to be the villains. So it's going to give us the ability to, in some way... I don't know how this is going to look in-game. Uh, send out demands four items as well. So we can cause stuff like this to happen in other people's forts. So I know Tarn's talked about spies. He's talked about the messenger having more purpose. He's talked about us like hiring people and or to be able to send them out to go steal stuff. I'm assuming that'll probably surface in the military screen somehow. Um, but yeah. You never knew that this existed? What, all this screen? No one knows this screen exists because it doesn't work mostly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if you go out of your way and, like, interrogate a lot of people, you'll start seeing stuff like this. this. Like, the, the boss of this character, um, Ozud, uh, who was the, uh, the lizard dude that we killed, their boss is unidentified. We don't know who their boss is um, because the, he never gave up that information. Um, most of these bosses are unidentified, right? You can kind of get mercenaries, they just do nothing, right? Yeah, they're just like military dwarves. Same with like the monster hunters, right? Like the monster hunters are adventurers that are on a quest to kill a particular monster, usually, right? So when a monster hunter is like, hey, can I stay here for an extended period of time and then they run off into the caverns and die? What they're actually trying to do is they're probably hunting a specific cyclops or something, right? They're on a quest to kill a monster. So the thieves that show up are on a quest to steal your items. The monster hunters that show up are on a quest to kill a particular monster. And uh, usually they just join your fort after a bit because they obviously never find it. Um, and uh, bards are adventurers that are on quests to learn things. Um, you know, and usually when I play adventure mode, I play as a, a bard. But like that like petitions screen when people are like, hey, can we join your fort? That is the game running adventurers around in the world, right? And one of the things that you can do as an adventurer is you can go find the mayor and say, hey, can I stay here? And then if they say yes, which they usually do, then you can go to your tavern, drink and eat so you don't die, and then reclaim the fortress, and that adventurer will be there, right? Because you can do that in the player perspective. The problem is, and this is something that I really hope gets addressed before Legend or Adventure Mode comes out, because when you reclaim fortresses right now, shit's everywhere. <laughs> um, and I really hope that that gets cleaned up a bit. I also use, it used to also have this problem where if you'd go into adventure mode and then visit your old fort, stuff would just be everywhere. But that seems like it's been cleaned up a bit. So, you know, Door Fortress is just one of these games of, oh my God, I didn't know that system existed. <laughs> to not have reclaims flood, the game doesn't know where to put liquids. So, like, as an example, if I were to retire and reclaim this fort, I have no fucking idea where this lava would be. It might be where it's supposed to be. It might also be in my tavern, or on the surface, or in the caverns, right? Um, so I don't think I could reclaim this fort. Some forts are significantly more reclaimable than others. So, yeah, I, I really hope that that stuff gets addressed to a degree. Because if it doesn't... Um, It'll just be awkward to play. So I'm trying to let this, actually, in order to make this work, be in a 
not work. I don't like the way Obsidian looks. I wish I liked the way Obsidian looked, but I don't. Because this ice, it's it's gonna freeze when it's when it flows over one. Eh, maybe I'll be able to prick a hole in the surface and get it down. We'll see. I don't know if it's gonna work. Why do people create obsidian to mine? Because people like the way obsidian looks. Hmm. Because it's an infinitely renewable resource? Those are probably the two main reasons. Nasty Ninja is uh, committing vandalism. And is now dead. <laughs> that was quick. Um, yeah, he literally just punched him to death. Swordmaster. Punches the weaponsmith in the head with her right hand, and the injured part collapses. Can't have any upset dwarves if there are no dwarves. I mean, what? So this is either going to kill the dwarf that does it. Oh, okay. Or it does that. That was another possibility. Once again, this is either going to kill the dwarf that does it, or it's going to drain this water. Not sure which one. Well, I mean, it's because this is my cop squad. All of these dwarves are in the military, and they're also considered the captain of the guard's soldiers. Uh, Tolval has named a bronze mace. But yeah, if you guys just want me to ramble about, like, esoteric dwarf fortress mechanics like that, I can absolutely do that. Because, like, that, that is stuff that I am, fortunately or unfortunately, way too knowledgeable. <laughs> but generally, it's, like, these weird systems that appear to have no use. Okay, so I don't know why this one is fine or freezing like this, but it is. It's one reason you're here. Yeah. Fair enough. Makes sense. Okay, let's get that sealed out and that removed. Um, Buttery Fetus, the information that you're looking for there would be uh, connected to the Siege update. Um, I mean, Dwarf Fortress already has formations, kind of. Um, enemies move in formations. But as far as realistic formations, I mean, they've talked about it. Will we ever see it? Mm. <laughs> That's another thing. There's plenty of things they've talked about that... Whoop, someone's on fire. Stack it, Why? Why, Staggood? Get onto the snow. The fire will go out if you get onto the snow. You can make it to the snow. Come on, dwarf. Extinguish yourself. Why are you jumping? What is happening? More importantly, how did you manage to die inside of a... Oh, I see. We're trying to climb up. Well, rest in peace, Staggood. The skeleton burns. It's a sad tale. What do I do with my caged prisoners? Uh, you throw them into a volcano. There's nothing you can do with them. And if you're asking me what I do with them, um, I throw them into a volcano or use them as live training usually. Wanted to fly. Yeah, I've never seen a dwarf jump like that. It's weird.
This is pretty dangerous, actually. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> um. I'm not sure if that's the definition of drowning. But this dwarf is drowning. Huh. And now they're melting. Um. Hmm. So, I mean, okay, that's not actually that bad at all. Just that dwarf's dead. Uh, anyway, the dwarf is gone. Like, com just, just gone. But it is probably accurate, I suppose. Um. Hmm. Okay, so how do I deal with this? Um. Hmm. The concept of lungs melting is rather disturbing. Thanks for that mental image. I don't know how to fix this. I mean, it's like I said, it's not actually that big of a deal. I guess I just kind of have to dump some water on it. I. How did it happen? So I was removing ice from this walkway and I thought oh there's some lava here I'll just channel down into this lava and turn it into obsidian instead but the lava was connected to this river and without being super fancy I'll just state that this river is very 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 highly pressurized um which causes the lava to all end up on the same level so when I channeled down the lava, it just went voomp and just erupted from the hole and immediately cooked the dwarf. Yeah, no, you skid across the top of lava in real life. Also, we're in an ad break now. Some people miss that. Bruh. So that's how that happened, Cramp. Which is extraordinarily disturbing. You could walk over lava? In theory, yeah. Because lava is super dense. Like, there's um, I, I found a video online of a GoPro bouncing off of lava. Um, like, it gets dropped, hits the lava, and bounces. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I lava is a very dense substance. But I'm kind of just currently in this problem situation now. I'm going, all right, well, how the hell do I fix this? <laughs> um, shit. So what I could do is I could turn off this pump and it'll drain eventually. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn off the pump stack. So we're gonna go all the way down to here and I'm gonna pull this lever. Reload? Nah, I can fix this. Not only can I fix this, but I can speed up the process. I just simply need to start pumping once again. I just need to remove the top layer because as you can see, it's draining, right? So. Oh, 
course, it's been missing for a week. Because that'll remove this top layer from here. And then I can plug the hole once it's drained. Dog and burning house meme? Yeah, pretty much. This is fine, as they say. So, hmm. Don't actually think I can dig over to this. But yeah, I just, I, I need the, 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 the lava to drain enough that I could... Ooh. Those two dwarves have been missing for a week. I just have to memorialize them. What I'm going to try and do is dig into here and then plop a wall down, like there. Because as you can see, this is drying up. So once one of these other spots cools off enough, then I can dig into here and we can construct a wall in here. Basically right here is where I need to place a wall because that was where the, the water erupted from. So if I can just place a wall right there or a floor tile, this will all fix itself. Are they friendly or are they enemy infected ghouls? Because using enemy infected ghouls can be a bit of a pain. Speaking with experience. At least you got the water out. I mean, <laughs> this wasn't what this wasn't what, how I wanted to do that, but yeah, I suppose. It was a really cool visual, though. The lava just kind of pouring into this. Okay. Now these dwarves can all stop pumping. And I can turn this pump back on. And then this will fill up again real quick. It's already full again. And we can just wait for this to drain. And it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm using hydropower. But I'm not using hydropower generators because one, that's cheating, and two, that's cheating, and three, that's cheesy, and four, that's cheating, and five, they evaporate half the time and are more annoying than they're worth these days. I don't understand why why people use those things. It's just making legitimate powers easier. It's literally just this. Pumping from the, the caverns here. It drains ever so slightly and gets my stuff powered. Frame rate drop? What frame rate drop? I don't cause frame rate drops. At least not for me. I don't use them because I think they're cheating. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to say yes, Aiden. You can become a citizen of Sunbirth. So we also have this, um, which probably... Uh, 
Yeah, I, th I think that they're the the person that implic that that was implicated as part of this got away with it, but they didn't steal my artifacts, so that's what matters. Now let's see if alligator dies. We also have a goblin crossbowman chilling here. Well, I'm going to investigate because I don't trust them. I don't trust no doomed cults. And alligator's been found dead. God damn it. Eh, that's oh, fine. Get a beating, you die. Beating equal death. They get really drunk and start fights a lot? That's because they have a much lower alcohol tolerance to dwarves, and uh, your tavern keepers get very enthusiastic about how much alcohol they dish out. So it's not their fault they have tiny livers. Goodbye, goblin. Okay, well, while that's draining, let's build a library. Because I've said I'm going to build a library like two dozen times today, and I still haven't done it yet. So let's build a goddamn library. There's a yeti. Look at that. Okay, let's go from up here to down to here. We'll use whatever's closest. Named another steel sword. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't have just used whatever was close by. <laughs> Turns out. I always regret that when I do that. Let's go up to here. And let's use microclan. It'll be a good material for this. You know, it's funny. Sometimes there's trailers that I get very excited for, and then there's trailers that just kind of make me mad. And that's one of the ones that just kind of makes me mad. I don't know. I, I want to like the that Dune franchise, but... Man... I want to be excited for Doom movies. For for Dune movies, not Doom movies. I want to be excited for Dune, but I'm just I'm not. Even after having seen the first one, I'm just not. And I don't fully know why that is. I think this one's going to end up just being a pyramid. That's what we're going to do. So let's go around the edge of this. Holy shit, that's a lot of Gabbro. Um, I guess we'll just use Gabbro blocks. It's all just going to get covered in snow anyway. I'm assuming they can get up here. We'll put a ramp there instead of them having to take that bridge. Faster. Let's look, a Yeti. Oh, I don't like the Lynch film. <laughs> I don't think that's a good movie, but... It was certainly a weird movie to see at the time, but... I don't think it's a good movie. Mate, that the Dune with Patrick Stewart is like 20-something years old. 30-something years old, even. I think it's okay to spoiler Dune. Dune will take a while to pay off. I don't... The The reason I am mad at the existence of this Dune film is the first one was not marketed as a part one until it was a box office success. That's why I don't like it. I do not like it when films are like, this isn't a part one until the part one is out. I don't like that. And so that's why I'm mixed on this current Duneiverse, I suppose. I have to go check my blood sugar. My uh, tongue feels numb. So either 
my tongue is numb from my blood sugar level. Two seconds. And it was great, but you were so angry when it wasn't a whole thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I do not like perpetual sequel culture. Um, and when I heard that they were making like a three hour Dune movie, I was like, yes, let's get a really good long Dune movie. And then it was a part one. I was like, fuck you. Like, at least tell me. Fair blame Warner Brothers. Oh, I'm absolutely blaming Warner Brothers for it. Um, because like, ah, excuse me. Um, we've talked about this a little bit on this stream, but I think that perpetual sequels uh, kill films, and I refuse to believe that it's a good business model for movies. Is green light, uh, green lighting a movie based on the fact that it's going to have a sequel? Because I've been disappointed too many times. Isn't Dune like six books? Yes, and like four and a half of them are bad. Nah. Yeah, four and a half of them are bad. Dune is a great book. Dune is a great book. That's all. The first movie doesn't cover the first book? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 It's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I have opinions on Dune, which are not always popular. I do not think a Dune franchise is a good idea. And also with the the way, let's just say with the way the triple, like high budget film, I just almost said triple A movies, high budget film is going. I don't think building a franchise based on sequels is a good idea. I guess I, I, at the end of the day, I don't like that form of business when it comes to film. Why are you bringing me so much clay? <laughs> the hell? Um, I really want to sell me clay. Did you bring me any fun pets? What did you bring me this time, elves? Giant badger! Hell yeah. Another giant cardinal. Excellent. Giant badger, though, is uh, pretty, pretty W. Just a normal owl. Green tree frog. A wolf. Another giant jaguar! Excellent. Normal camel, another giant cardinal.
Giant Cardinal. Giant Badger. Excellent. I mean, t I, I also liked Dune. I, I just have very, very, very mixed feelings about Warner Brothers, <laughs> I guess, is, is the is the actual... Like, I, I, I enjoyed Dune. I thought it was a good movie. I am wholeheartedly against how they are making that movie. But then again, right now, I'm also just being very cautiously optimistic about the existence of another Mad Max. Although, watching... Although, I, there's part of me, like, even if that movie is bad, which I don't think it will be, even if New Mad Max is bad, the Furiosa film, even if it's bad, I will go see it anyways out of spite because there's so many people going, well, this would be a good movie if it actually had, you know, a male lead character like the last one. It's like, did you watch the Fury Road? <laughs> Clearly you didn't. Um, but anyway, I will go see that movie out of spite. didn't watch the old one the old one's a bad movie it's it's not a good movie all right well that's everything that <laughs> one beautiful tree oh fuck god damn it furiosa will be good it it bloody better be and no giant badger for me I clicked the blow darts out of, like, dumb habit. We have much to discuss. Okay. Oh, do not chop down a single tree. God damn it. <sighs> no, it's a different actor as Furiosa. Or a different actress. It's, uh, what's her face? A lady that looks funny. Why am I blanking on her name? Was Princess Peach. Was in Queen G Queen's Gambit. What's her name? Because it's like a younger character. Or version of the character. Anya Taylor-Joy, that's her name. Yeah, the, the lady with three first names. <laughs> that's how I think of her. Um, but yes. Some migrants have arrived despite the danger. If people want dwarves, you can also get dwarves. Just let me know. Making sure no vampires. Yes, the three first names person. People with three first names can't be trusted. I mean, you don't have to even say pick me. Just, like, let me know if you want a dwarf. Um, here, you ha ha have a weaponsmith. This is a stressed out ne weaponsmith is now officially a uh, storm wolf. ATJ? That just sounds like a punk band. Oh, that's going all right, Swifty. Yourself, uh, Baka. You already have a dwarf, so but you already have a dwarf, Baka Glass. Sure, Rami. I'm, I'm reading YouTube chat. Hold up. I see it works in literary form, doesn't exactly make a movie, such as The Expanse wouldn't be as effective as a film per book. I mean, I, the, the Expanse show is completely different than the books. Character feel-wise, but I wouldn't say it's not necessarily less effective. I, I guess, like, I, and I've, I've said this about Dune a number of times. For me, I would be much happier with a non-theatrical release streaming series of Dune. But it would need to be like 30 parts and an hour per part is how I would want Dune to be made into a franchise. But then it wouldn't have the same budget. So I don't know. I just, I, I'm extraordinarily mixed on the current world of Dune. 
Um, so this is Stormwolf. Seeks out exciting and adventurous situations and is very ambitious, always looking for a way to better her situation. She doesn't mind wearing something special now and again, and she has an active sense of humor. She tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things and tends to hang on and tends to hang on to grievances. She is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from herself. She does not easily hate or develop negative feelings, and she is rarely happy or enthusiastic. She finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding, and though she wishes this were not the case, that she considers altruism foolish. Uh, she tends to think before acting, and she tends to not re reveal personal information, and she tends to form only tenuous emotional bonds with others. She occasionally can lose focus on the matter at hand, and she is not particularly interested in what others think of her, and she often feels discouraged. She tenses up when she's nervous, and she rolls her eyes when she's annoyed, and she blows out her breath when she's annoyed, and she needs alcohol to get through the working day, and she doesn't really care about anything anymore. Dreams of attaining a rank in society, and personally finds sacrifice to be the height of folly. She thinks that it is of the utmost importance to present a bold face and never grouse or complain or even show emotion, and she finds moderation and self-control to be very important. Like, like level-headed dwarf I'm not going to change my mind, she says. She wants to uphold tradition. How the heck do you meet that need? Are you still kicking? I think so. Let's see. Yep, you are. Still, still a Durgan Slayer. You presume dance? Interesting. This gem cutter here can be the most serious salsa. Um, I don't think Popliope ever got no, Pop Popliope got obliterated, didn't if I if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Popliope did get obliterated. Um, she is frequently depressed and lives at a high energy and kinetic pace. She is bashful and she seeks out exciting and adventurous situations. She's not readily moved by art or natural beauty and she's quite ambitious. She is very humble and she generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and she does not go, she does not easily hate or develop negative feelings and she tends to be a little wasteful when working on projects. She tends to, uh, she she likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract and often feels lustful. She tries to get things done correctly each time. She stiffen up. She stiffens up when she's surprised and she needs alcohol to get through the working day. Does not mind being outdoors, at least for a time. Doesn't really care about anything anymore. I hope I get some kind of office. She's so determined to get it. Yeah. Give her a Kalavados office in the back corner. Actually, I think I need a new bookkeeper. You want to be a bookkeeper? We could give you bookkeeping. I do, in fact, actually need a bookkeeper, too. Which means you get assigned one chair in the tavern. Go count things. Here, have paperwork. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, uh, let's name another dwarf. I don't have any elves in the port, so. At least I don't think. Unless well, some have snuck in. Cosmic Surfer. Cosmic Surfer. You're moving up in the world. Yeah, you now get an office job with paperwork. Woo. Um, he is quick to anger and is very calm, has a very calm demeanor. He is grounded in reality and would never pass up a chance for a good fist fight. He's incredibly brave in the face of looming danger, perhaps a bit foolheartedly. Is dower as a rule and is conflicted by this as he values party and parties and merrymaking in the abstract. He has an active sense of humor and finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding. He is quite polite and he doesn't mind wearing something special now and again. He tends to not be swayed by emotional appeals and he doesn't cling tightly to ideas and is open to changing his mind and he has has a noticeable lack of perseverance and doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges and isn't particularly curious about the world. Uh, he is personally does not really value skills related to fighting and doesn't particularly respect commerce. Welcome to the fortress. Uh, we also have this mechanic and this mechanic can be... Uh, Lanader. Lanader. And then we'll get to uh, Rami next. 
Uh, he strongly prefers discussions and ideas of abstract concepts over handling specific practical issues. Uh, he takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful. He isn't particularly curious about the world, um, and he has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others. He, he tends to assume that the worst of two outcomes will be the one that comes to pass, and he is quite polite. He doesn't tend to hold on to grievances, and he doesn't handle stress well. He does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity, and he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. He tends to be a little wasteful when we work on projects, and he scratches his nose when he's trying to remember something. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't mind being outdoors at least for a time. He dreams of raising a family and has a deep respect for animals, plants, and the natural world. And uh, is a high master mechanic and has no family. And let's name Ramit. How about Etur the Weaponsmith? Who's currently asleep on a uh, bed in the middle of the... Anyway. Uh, raw meat is an accomplished met metalsmith and a proficient appraiser. Uh, is intellectually stubborn, rarely changing his mind during a debate regardless of its merits. He, uh, he... He is grateful when others help him out, and he tries to return favors. Uh, he can easily hang on to grievances, and he has a greedy streak. He is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from himself, and he tends to make a small mess with his own possessions. He is not he does not easily fall in love, and he rarely develops positive feelings, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and is getting used to tragedy. Dreams of creating a great work of art and personally has a great deal of respect for worthy craftsmanship. Finds those that deny their impulses somewhat stiff and doesn't see the attainment of knowledge as important, and dreams of creating a great work of art. You wonder how your dwarf is going to die. So, something that I've been thinking about doing for the last 20 minutes. I don't really want to attack things that'll attack back. Um, just because of how I'm building this fort right now. I do want to do that in the future, but for right now, I kind of don't. What I do want to do, however, is I want to try and find some slabs. Let's just scroll until I get through the codexes. In the books. Because most of these are books. There we go. We got bronze war hammers, leather vests. There we go. Plaster slab. Chromite slab. It's too far away. Okay. Um, chat chromite or plaster? Or a zinc slab. We could also go for that. Chromite? Chromite sounds cooler. That is that is true. There's also a slab that was last held by an Etten. Which is also pretty cool. The Hood of Dreams. Okay, so does anybody know what these slabs are? How good are beak dogs? Or is it worth getting them in your fortress? Can you war train beak dogs? I mean, they're they're fine. They're like a dog, basically. They're pretty much the equivalent of dogs. Okay, so um, archdemons exist in the underworld during world gen. Uh, in the first few years of world gen, they team up with a god, uh, and the god makes them a slab, and the god writes their name on the slab, and using that slab and they start goblin factions, basically. So they birth up from the underworld, come onto the main world, on into the world, and um, enslave goblin factions. So this is a one of those slabs. So we're gonna send the cold slayers and hope that they can pull it off. So, hopefully. We can take over some, some, some we, we can steal some stuff from demons. Oh, it also, they also happen to have the secrets of life and death on them, yeah. But I'm not gonna be using them for that. I'm just trying to attack demons. Demon hunting. Yeah, the, the necromancy is a side effect of the slabs.
And also in adventure mode, this is massive spoilers for adventure mode, but uh, in mechanical spoilers, I guess. In adventure mode, like, okay, so in fortress mode, end game is like digging to hell, right? In adventure mode, end game is finding one of those demons with their slabs, reading their true name on the slab, and then enslaving the demon. So. Retrieve fought ashes. Okay, so also, you know how um, we have people showing up and trying to steal my stuff constantly? Now my dwarves are going off to steal somebody else's stuff. Shout out to this one dwarf who still refuses to wear clothes, by the way. This dwarf is literally running around with, like, the completely wrong type of clothes on in comparison to everybody else. And they refuse to put on anything else. So I guess you know what's best then. Look at you. You've even got sand pear cider. Get out of there, dwarves. Good luck. Make us something cool. Or go get us something cool. So what do you think, chat? Do you think Diamond Destruct and crew are going to be successful? Or do you think that none of them are ever coming back? I think it could go either way, frankly. One of them has a cape. Diamond does, in fact, have an artifact cape, yes. I still can't believe that this glacier is like untamed wilds. It does not feel like it. <laughs> It's pretty tame for Untamed Wilds. All right, there we go, doing that. Go all the way across here, all the way across here, and keep working. Missed one in the top right. Oh, I see it. Yeah. I would have spotted it eventually, but thank you. All right, so they've gone off to go raid that place. They should ideally return, like, in a pretty short period of time. Ideally. But we'll see. I never really know. And this very tall roofed building that I'm building is going to be my my library. Library for the study of great creatures. In the cold wastes. So the dwarves that we sent out are Siomagus, Neezer, uh, Kashmir Goat, Baca Glass, uh, Andre the Great, Andre the Great, and Mad Walkir. So hopefully, I never really thought of it as igloos, but yeah, I guess kind of. Our swordmaster has learned sword things. Actually, just gonna bring that back down one. Fix that. There we go. And then up here, I guess we'll just do flooring. Once I get more ramps up. And the roof will just get covered in snow anyway. And then we can put, we can smooth this floor in. Ooh, okay, so I have a question. I, I know what I'm going to do. I, I don't actually have a question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut out this floor. 
and we're going to build the library on this layer so that this just gets a higher ceiling. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're, that's definitely what we're going to do. So I can just start hollowing this in. Are the dwarfs going through the floor? No? What? What do you mean by are the dwarves going through the floor? Are they digging? Yes, now they're, they're they're going to dig through the floor, yes. Oh, that's Rams. That's not what I want. Yeah, we are removing the floor, basically. It's like in Minecraft where there's, like, an extra layer just for, um, just for grass. It's like removing the grass layer, basically. So the, the ceiling is going away here. Yeah, I mean, that that would be a, the, the, the dangerous way of doing things, but I think this is faster anyway. You never expected me to reference Minecraft? I mean, I reference weirder things. Just because I don't play Minecraft doesn't mean I can't reference Minecraft. Although for me, Minecraft is very much a this is why I'm old game, because like I back in my day, Minecraft didn't have trees. <laughs> Which is still to this day very funny to me. Um, fingers crossed. Yeah, Minecraft makes me feel very old. We were in high school when slabs were introduced to this game. I mean, like I was a little kid when this game, when like this game first was being talked about as a side project in 2003. So, just going to deconstruct and move those. Otherwise, they may not be able to get them back. They haven't returned yet. With the foot pad? Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I... I never really had consoles. Um, even growing up, like... The few consoles we did have disappeared pretty quickly. My parents were pretty careful about what they let me and my sisters play. Almost to a fault. Like, they, they meant well by it, but... Looking back on it, it's like, man... <laughs> they were... Very, very stingent with what we got as for digital entertainment. I didn't start getting computers until I literally bought them myself. I hate Minecraft because the number of times you I had to install Java to play with your friends, no McCaffrey, I don't <laughs> Yeah, no, I know what you mean. You played E. T. on the Atari? I've played E. T. on 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 Atari. And I'm sorry for your loss, Montecore. It was a horrible experience. It's not a very good video game. All right, so this is going to be where we build the floor. What kind of blocks are available? We got, ooh, let's use pyrolusite. Let's use black floors. You watched someone play it at the hobby store you ran? Damn. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've just kind of, like, come to terms with the fact that I'm younger than the majority of the people who watch me, so... 
I mean, I was born in 94, so. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they fell in the hole and they, they couldn't get asked what to do. Yeah. You told them to play a different game. Yeah, it seems, seems like you were, you were wise. Only barely younger than you, you're a 93 kid. Fair enough. Now you feel really old. I'm sorry, True Freak. <laughs> also over in the YouTube chat. Hi, Ashley. You were born in 90? Yeah. You turned 30 last month? Yeah, that's me next year. I mean, me in June. Oopsies. Uh, let's go steel table, steel throne, and steel bookcase. Let's do 10 bookcases is plenty. Um, Let's do 20 thrones and 20 tables. Still lived in your mom's basement at 30? I moved out at 18. <laughs> Which, like, to this day still kind of amazes me that so many people can live with their parents for so long. <laughs> I don't know how I, like, didn't move out sooner to a degree. <laughs> You bought a house at 23, but moved back later? Yeah, I'll never own a house. That's just not going to happen. Maybe a condo, if I get lucky. But I would need, like, another three years of my stream being as big as it's been the past year, and streams don't tend to do that. Streams tend to go up and then down. And then up and then down. So. If I still had December uh, last year numbers, I would absolutely... I have the ability, potentially, by this point, to buy a house in a year or two, but, or a, rather a condo. I think I've got merchant stuck. Uh, fix stuck merchants. Yep. Absolutely did. Um, Magu Camo? Hello, and good night. I should put some gem windows into this. How tall is the tower? Uh, it hasn't grown. Uh, it's three layers. But these, this is less of a tower and more of a... Well, th this this is a tower. This one goes up to, I guess, level three. A one, two, three, four. Um, so yeah, no, ne neither of them are super huge. Uh, you died. <laughs> you uh, tried to steal an artifact and got bonked to death. Is what happened. Um, I completely eviscerated a dwarf out of existence with lava by mistake. Um, several things have burned. There's been a couple cave-ins. Um, I'm currently trying to steal a slab. Oh, we've been around. I'm building a uh, library right now. Yeah, literally the game told me, the game said that that dwarf was drowning, even though they were completely coated in lava, which I guess that's a definition of drowning. Yeah, alli yeah, Alligator did attempt to steal an artifact, but got caught red-handed, yes. But, you know, you had a good dwarf life, I think. Did I never assign those tombs? I made those tombs and then never assigned them. Wow, I'm bad at this video game. <laughs> I made a bunch of tombs and then, like, forgot to actually assign them. Actually, let's just assign the one to the, to the, to the queen. Do I... Oh, I guess I didn't have enough platinum. All right, well, we'll do steel sarcophaguses then.
Queen, there we go. Now you have a tomb. Quit bitching. Uh, what else, what else do you need? Uh... Tunics. Lost tunic. Let's just make 50. Bloodstones, 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 and then these ones let's do, I don't know, pink jades. Um, let's do a combination of these ones to increase the value. Yellow diamonds, yellow diamonds, and yellow zircon. And then up here, I'll start placing these bookcases. We'll start placing the tables and chairs. This will be our library in a moment. I'm thinking of building a fortress with individual houses, but the map size would make the dwarves very unhappy. You mean like, um, where is this incredible fucking fortress? There's this project that's been going on for a while on my Discord that somebody's been working on, which, uh, yeah, Neo's working on this in the Discord. You mean like this kind of thing? I don't think travel time would make them upset. As long as they have interesting things to look at and they're not getting thirsty and hungry half the time. Oh, but in a, a hollowed out cavern? Okay, so underground. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think that would be a problem. What is that? Uh, that is uh, Stone Sense. It's a uh, fortress on my Discord. Somebody's been working on for a while. Now oh, we could do that. Just let me do a quick save first. Yeah, not all tasks are in there. Where do you get stone sense? It's just built into DF hack. But it makes your game crash like three out of five times when you do it. So, <laughs> like, for me, very, so frequently makes my game crash that I just almost never use it. Loading. Give it a sec. Now, let's see if I can remember the hotkey to make the UI go. All right, this is this is Stone Sense. Um, hold on, I've lost things. There it is. Okay. Um, where? What? What? There. That's the hotkey I'm looking for. Let's uh, embiggen this a little bit. There you go. That's this fort. Do not like the way those look. <laughs> Especially with the snow around the base, then those look goofy. But, uh, yeah, that's the entryway. That's my nonsense. Uh, the Discord link, you just type an exclamation point, exclamation point Discord, or... Oh, look, a Yeti. Or uh, click on the, the Discord image down in the description of the video. But uh, let's zoom this out. How do you make it render the whole map? I know that that's to zoom in and out. I just don't know the hotkey to make it render the whole map. So I don't actually know how to do that. Yeah, that's all it's really for. It's just a viewer. Although, um, I was going back in time with Dwarf Fortress recently, uh, like I've said a billion times for a side project, and uh, do you guys oh, remember when Dwarf Fortress... Has a sword. No, it didn't have a sword. Do you guys remember when Dwarf Fortress had this? There was like a pseudo 3D viewer in Dwarf Fortress at one point. Um, 
which was in there for like two or three versions and then got removed. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it was bad. It really was bad. I'd completely forgotten that was in the game. I just, I love the fact that it's there, though. It's just like there was one time where, like, uh, Putnam once mentioned, it's like, I mean, we could make the whole game 3D. It would just take us five years to do it. <laughs> right, so this is going to be our library. And you know what? I think we'll allow visitors in the library. All right, let's 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 pop Stone Sense back up then. Give me a second. Just let me reload it. Uh, control F5, you said? I mean... Definitely does not do that. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I've got a dwarf that's risen from the dead. Uh, let's just quickly memorialize that dwarf so that they stop haunting my dwarfs. It was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. No, it was like 2008. <laughs> Control shift F5. Oh, boy. Very dwarf fortressy hotkey combos. Control shift F5. It's thinking about it. Let it think about it. Yeah, that didn't do anything. So, clearly isn't either of those. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss. Those are the screenshot controls? Ah, that makes sense. But, whatever. Question is now is where are they hiding them? This is like 10 st more steps than I'm willing to do for a thing. Uh, nonsense. Where is it outputting these? Oh, I see. There it is. All right. <laughs> well, that's it. Just normal F5 do that, looks like. Yeah, in case you can't tell, I basically literally like literally never use that function so cuz i think i think stone sense is very ugly i know that that's not a common take but i think stone sense is extraordinarily shitty looking um looks like we have 23 books and all of these dwarves are reading all of the books which is good That's our library. Easy peasy. Well, I mean, we've been we've been stockpiling books for a bit. Uh, it's Stone Sense, yeah, Droven. Libraries are designated as zones, yep. And they can also be attached to other zones.
Now there's way less dwarves hanging out down here, though. So now I need to find dwarves who really like reading and writing and make them animal diets the easy way. <laughs> and um, then make them into scholars. Giant kitty wanted to read a book. Or it was just following somebody it likes. These humans will steal my books, which, you know, that part's going to kind of suck, but it's fine. There's a huge cat. Yeah, we have several huge kitties. See? Giant kitties. You can get killed by giant purr. We also have big bird. Multiple big birds. And giant koala. And there's just elephants in the basement, too. And a giant camel. We have a giant camel. Um, who is just a very big camel. But, unfortunately, I screwed up trading with the elves, so, um, hopefully they bring me more next year. Where do these friggin' caveys keep coming from? I keep b butchering them and then gelding them, and there's somehow still caveys here. God damn it. <laughs> God actual damn it. Did I buy those? Um, yeah, they, they're all imported from the elves. Only after being away from family for too long do you not have family, Elfie? Oh, I see. Your younger brother and sister are both dead. Um, at least you have an uncle in the fort. Elfie's sad, wants to be around family, but family dead. Uh, those are megafauna. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Let's make ten choirs. And... I don't know what else to do. Uh, also, there's an ad running, so I'll pause. They're so picky. Uh, don't, I mean, yeah, I, I, I fucked up trading with the elves because I, I, like, autopiloted trading, which, don't ever do that with elves. <laughs> That's how to almost guaranteed brew in a trading deal, is if you autopilot trading. What use does stealing the demon slab have in adventure mode? Um, the demon slab has their name on it. Right? The demon's name. If you, the adventurer, have the true name of a demon. Okay? If you, the adventurer, know the name of a demon. And you find the demon and you go, Hey, Bill Frankenstein, Esquire, Dirty Pants, the third, at his name, uh, then you can enslave him. And then have a very, 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 very overpowered, like, familiar that follows you around. So that, that's that's the purpose of it. Because it has their true name on it. But um, the adventurer has to be able to read. So if you can't read, then, well, you're kind of SOL there. <laughs> you're kind of SOL. Which, believe it or not, most adventurers can't read because nobody puts points into the reading skill. And if you have no skill in reading whatsoever, which you do by default, uh, I don't think there's actually a way to gain reading skill currently. <laughs> if you have none. Why am I suddenly reminded of, like, that guy that broke in, that, like, stage crashed the Game Awards? Not this year, but last year. And then was on a podcast later where he just said that he was, he didn't think he was going to end up on a podcast full of dumb people who can't read. And then the girl's like, hey, but I read. And he goes, all right, name five books. And she's just like stumped <laughs> and then starts naming Harry Potter books. <laughs> Why am I like, I'm just like stuck thinking about that now. If those adventurers knew how to read, they'd be very powerful. Yes.
Man, I feel like I need more. I mean, I need more tables in this library. Still not back yet. Eesh. Um. Yeah, it's recommended in a couple of starter guides for adventure mode to have like two ranks in reading. Yeah, yeah, P at least put a point in reading. I think that our queen and king. Do I not have a king? Did the king die? <laughs> I think the king maybe died. Because I thought she came with her hubby. Did you not? Oh. I didn't know. Oh, he's here. His name's Led. He is very stressed, though. I should make the king her scribe, actually. There we go. I don't think it requires two ranks to be able to read, although I might be misremembering. While preparing your thesis defense? <laughs> That's... Hmm. Are you defending plagiarism? Because if you are, uh, it, that, that, that might... I, hmm, I don't think that's going to give you any pointers to, to defend that, but I'm assuming that's not what you're defending. Best of luck with that thesis, though. I was trying to make a joke, and it clearly didn't land. Can you read secrets in adventure mode? Like, become a necromancer? Absolutely. One of the last adventurers I played on my own time, I uh, just went and became a necromancer right away and then went around taming elephants and then making undead elephants. It was a, it was, it was a good time. I had like 50 elephants. Then my frame rate got really bad. Then I got crushed. It was a rough day. In about a year... You had a Necromancer Tiger Man? Mm-hmm. What was it great or was it great? Sorry. Uh where is this? Um you want to entertain us. No, you can sod off. Sod off and begun. Rollers are made from salt peter. Apparently I ended up with ended up with a ready to go scroll. All right, let's see what the queen thinks of her new gig. Oh, she's currently listening to a story. Feels affection when speaking with an acquaintance. Well, how about you? King is praying to Az. Well, that's as good as it gets, I suppose. And uh, this area up here, let's bunk. Still not back, but nobody's dead yet. You did not name him Tony. Well, there you go. Wasn't great then, just great. Also, hello, Shogun. That meme qualifies as necromancy? What? <laughs> Are you saying I'm old because I said great? I like how the king is one of the most depressed people in the fortress. I just think that's kind of funny. Okay, let's see. Who can I fix here? Run away from family. You want to pray. Making rock blocks. Let's remove you from tasks. Also want martial training. Might also be time to start building another squad. But I think what we should really do, because all this stuff over here is done, and now that the library is done, we can go start working on this. Or continue working on this, I guess. Sackbitten? No wonder he's depressed. I mean, if my last name was Sackbitten, I would also be depressed. I also... Oh, no, I do know how the dwarves are getting up here. They're going this way.
So that can get deconstructed. There's going to be some caves in, cave ins with this, but that's fine. Now we wait for the game to, you know, do its thing and save. There we go. All right, so we're cutting out all of this. I've kind of given up making all of the floor into obsidian. I don't think that's ever going to actually work out the way I want it to, which is fine. Um, I could just dig it down one more layer to the caverns, which would also do what I need it to do. Or not to the ca- Hmm. Hmm, now I'm actually tempted to do that. Because wouldn't it be rad? Oh, shit, we found Amethyst's frozen body. Hi, Amethyst's body. I feel bad about that. I'm sorry that happened to you. Anyway, um, this, this, this thing would be really cool if I dug all the way down to the caverns. The problem is, is who the hell knows where the caverns are? They're like 50 la la layers down, so I don't want to dig that far. I really don't, but I kind of do. I'm not going to, but damn, I want to. It just take me way too long to actually build this stupid thing. It would take so long. I know, but it would be so cool. Not gonna happen. It's not going to happen. I have ideas like that all the time where it's like, man, I really want to do this thing because it, it would be awesome, but it would take me 15 years. You know what I mean? It's like, this would be such a cool thing to do. It would take a thousand years. So I'm not going to do it. You're going to head out, Noel Man? All right. We'll see you when we see you, dude. Do it? Nah. I've kind of learned that um, as much as I love my audience, you guys don't particularly like watching mega projects because when I spend more than like 14 streams on a thing, views start to take a hit and people start to complain about when I'm going to start the next port. So as much as I like making mega projects, it's kind of not super viable as a streaming thing, which is a bit of a shame. You love that the king chose to live in a literal glacier? I mean, it was the queen. She's in charge. The king's just along for the ride. Queen's wearing old clothing. I guess it's time to make new clothes. Let's also check the status of our cloth. That's 600. Story of your life. Hey, you know, I I would rather live in a glacier than, you know, in a desert. So. Uh, okay, so we are going to... Work orders. Manager. Let's do cloth, glove. Let's do leather caps. We'll do leather caps. Um... Cloth sock. Leather shoe. And tunics and trousers. Tunic. Let's make silk tunics. And silk trousers. And silk dresses. We'll just do 80 of each.
much less glacier contempts. It snowed yesterday for a, no, the day before yesterday for a little bit. It's mostly gone now though. Yeah, I I, I really like cold weather. I like the cold and cold weather in general. After archery pack practice, you bought a new uh, bow uh, directly from the club itself. I I'm assuming that that bow is more effective than the homemade ones you were using previously, right? But uh, cool. Glad to hear you're enjoying archery. Do you know what? I'm just going to deconstruct a bunch of these in the middle here because I, I don't actually need this to be solid now that I think about it. Although then it's going to cave in. So nah, never mind. I'm not going to do that because they're also acting as floors. It's much lower poundage. It's about 22-ish pounds. Like when you say poundage, you means like the, the difficulty it is to like draw it back, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I know very little about archery. <laughs> Been gone for a bit. Hopefully they're just going on a wild goose chase and haven't actually died. <laughs> but you never know with dwarves. Could be either. And uh, the humans have arrived to trade, so we got to trade with them. Hmm. Tunics, I'm not allowed to sell. Plenty of shoes to sell, though. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that's, like, one of those theories that is very much not true, but, like, certain people on the internet seem to think it's true for, like, health reasons, but not actually real. Venus? So. Pretty sure that's one of those, I did my own research things. Found a bunch of people who don't know what they're talking about on the internet and then listened to their bullshit for a bit. Pretty sure it's one of those things. Um, send in this fungi wood corkscrew because I don't need it. I like how I have purring maggot paper on very expensive roast. But you know, at the end of the day, there, there's tons of stuff out there that's like, oh yeah, no, this is largely false information, but can still be interesting. There's like elements of truth to a lot of those things. Well, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But it is one of those things where... That, like, okay, if you stand... Like, okay, think about it this way. If you're constantly getting sunburned, you won't live as long. Right? But if you live somewhere where you don't get sunburned as often, you're more likely to live longer. Because there's extraordinarily long-lived people around the world. It's got more to do with how you take care of yourself and diet than climate, but.
It certainly does, but some of the longest lived people in the world live in the tropics. I know people, uh, a lot of people move away from colder climates when their health fades. I think people move away from colder climates when their knees start to hurt in the colder climates. I don't know if it's, I, I, I don't know how much that has to do with health, but. And as somebody whose knees hurt in cold climates, I ain't leaving, but <laughs> my knees still hurt. Hear my neighbor coughing up a lung. What's up, devilish? No complaints. How was work? No one's stolen my books yet. That's truly surprising. Anatomy exposed. Sorry, that's that's the name of a book. <laughs> a scroll, in fact. What is this about? It's a manual entitled Anatomy Exposed, authored by Adela concerns the anatomical studies for medical edification. The writing has a hint, hint of viciousness to it. It's amateurish at best. <laughs> Sorry, just that name is funny. Expose the anatomy. Oh, and wagons. It... Sorry, but that, that the, the 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 blatant be, Venus, I, I like you, but you manage to word things in a fashion that make you read like you're extraordinarily stupid. Like you you seem like a nice person, but geez, some of the things that you write, it's like yeah, well the people who live in the tropics take cold showers. No shit, the really long people, long lived people who live in tropical climates are indigenous. They don't have heated water. And also, it would be more like room temperature showers. Because, or like whatever the temperature of the air shower is. Because if you live in a hunter-gatherer society, yeah. <laughs> you love how the wagons just pile up. I kind of wish they'd spread out, but yeah. Another one of my... Ards joins me permanently. Bright you the weaponsmith has been missing for a week. Uh-oh. Did you get unexisted into ice? Definitely possible. I think that's very much what happened. That was something caving in. Something else caved in. K uh, wait, what? Diplomat couldn't complete a meeting? Why not? Did you not get to my queen? Doesn't make any sense. Or is it because my manager was asleep? Weird. Did the soldiers come back yet? Nope. I think they're just going on a wild goose chase. None of them are dead, though. They'll come back. They're probably... Like, the slab probably isn't where they thought it was, and they're probably walking to every single village in the vicinity and asking about it. I'm not worried, Cosmic. I had, I had a squad leave for three years once on one of those missions. All right. See, what did they bring me? Logs. Give me the give me them logs. Uh, they brought an ibex, an alpaca, a dog, a nanny goat, cat, rooster, gander, a horse. I'm just going to buy your fish. And that's about it. Thank you. Take my garbage and get out. 
<laughs> Although I am going to start building a new squad. I think we're going to build a... Hmm. Let's do a melee squad with no particular weapon. Uh, and I'm going to move... Move Shatner over. And let's go with dwarves that have a need for training. Wumpin' Stompin', Unemployed Shaku, Terminal Wetness, not Smithied, because you have another job. Hold the Metalsmith, sure. And we'll just let this squad train in the background. Uh, let's throw a big bang in there. And yeah, let's throw a non-major nerd in there. And use death, why not? So these squads are going to go on to train and are going to have the same spot. And they all get all their gear. Look at that. He's even brought his book with him. It's a gold-bound book, even. They're all going to end up with swords, I think. Brought a 90-pound home-built recurve bow, and you tried pulling it for the hell of it, and something loud popped in your shoulder? It doesn't hurt. Sounds like you cracked your knuckles, but shoulders. That's disturbing. And there you go. Darius Carter in the second has been taken by a fey mood. I love this dwarf's hat. I love the way this pigtail cap looks. Look at that. It, it, the, the, the woodworkers, they have this little, like, red strip on the top. That's very funny looking to me. Like, it, it, it's somewhere between, like, a toque and, like, a little commando hat. Even the weasel, Pyros? Okay. Metalsmith shop? Oh, damn right. No, uh, so one of the first things I did in this fort, Sam, is uh, make a weaponsmith's guild. And the reason I did that um, specifically is so that now when ever I get an artifact, nine out of ten times it's a weapon. The first one here we claimed copper. Well, you could do better than that. Going for leather. Yeah, I think today is just going to be an all dwarf fortress day. <laughs> Looking at the clock, it's like, wow, I've been streaming for nine hours. Shit. Eight hours on YouTube, nine on Twitch. It's got dog leather. I mean, we, we have a platinum Warhammer in this fort already, so there is that. You're just hauling obsidian now. Yeah, but that's cheating. Where's the fun in that? I almost never use artifact weapons anyways, so... You know, Darius uh, was an easy dwelling upon experiencing trauma, and mulling over the reoccurring memory allowed him to change his thoughts. In what way? Um... Uneasy dwelling upon, and he became more prone to stress and learned to disdain sacrifice. Wow. So during the, the, the big brawl where all the dwarves died, uh, this dwarf became more prone to stress. Poor, poor soul. An artisan in the materials and the tools that shaped them. Having bitter orange wood.
in a display case. Oh, really? Yeah, I need to, I actually need to get that Platinum Warhammer on a pedestal. 30-man brawl would mess you up. Uh, it was like a 100-person brawl and like 30 people died. So, yeah, no. It would, that, that would mess most people up, wouldn't it? Actually, you know what? I'm going to put the Platinum Warhammer into the, into the, into the vault, which is this. This is a Dwarf Bone Floodgate artifact that was made. Um, because we actually managed to get a single one of those fell moods. I think I'm actually going to put the Platinum Warhammer back here. And I'm also keeping bits of Forgotten Beasts that, um, you know, look cool. I mean, look at these. <laughs> Just got a bunch of bits of Forgotten Beasts down here. And then, you know, you can get thrown into the actual prison, which is down on the bottom here, which we have this necromancer experiment down here who, you know, will get let out soon, even though they're ready to leave. They've been ready to leave for a while, in fact. Yeah, this thing. Does it matter much when your artifacts are made for a particular group? Uh, the game doesn't care where you put it. Uh, the game only cares if you destroy it. You must never forget true loyalty, says the dwarf. We got another migrant wave. They brought a yak for some reason. I don't know that name. Time to Google. Oh, never mind. I do know that name. So one of those, like, I have no idea who that is. And then Google them and go, oh, wow. 39 minutes ago. Wow, he did literally just die. Huh. Huh. Well, that's sad. 61. Yeah, no, I know. I always have to Google them because, like, I'm I'm pretty... Unless it's somebody that I'm, like, immediately very familiar with, I always have to Google them and feel bad. It's like, well, I don't know who that is, so I'm going to Google them. Um, but, yeah, that's a... That's it was in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Is probably the most immediately recognizable thing, at least for me. Okay, so Darius has begun his construction, uh, which is emerald cut white opals, guava wood dog leather, bitter orange wood, granite, obsidian dog leather, and copper. Probably a weapon artifact, if I had to bet. You're gonna go shower and head to bed at 3 a.m. You have a good night, Sam. Yeah, I mean it's a shame. I I I'm a I guess I'm kind of a weird person about death. I, I know that like a lot of people can get really beaten up about like celebrities passing away and actors passing away and all that. For me, it's less about, oh no, this actor passed away. I'm more of a, wow, that actor had an incredible life and I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> you know, it's like, if, if I could have like a third of what you had, damn. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, wow. I just realized something. I lost my other duke. That or they left as part of that squad. Oh, cool. Less, 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 uh, to take care of, I suppose. All right, well, this is Lord Ub does, so. The Duke of Sunbirths. And then this can just be un unassigned. So you just going coop? Yeah. I mean like the 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 one death that kind of messed me up in the past few years who was kind of a celebrity, uh wasn't even that well known. It was I the 
a drummer for a band that I really like named Hum passed away like six months after they put out their first album in 21 years. So they finally released a new album. We're planning a tour and then their drummer died. It's like, man. <laughs> but that, that's for me, was a real big bummer more just cause like, I'll never get to see them. At least not with their original lineup, which sucks. Um, is great. Uh, I'm gonna nerd out for like 90 seconds. Um, on, yeah, Chris Cornell made me sad too. Same with Chester. But, um, I I I have every single one of their records on vinyl now. <laughs> I own like pressings of every single one of their records now. So, I haven't even opened three of them. I mean, I, I've had. CDs, if you'd prefer an astronaut, not an Electra for most of my life. But they recently repressed them all on polyvinyl, so I have every single one of their records now, which is cool. Let's see how the newbies are doing. These recruits. Satisfied while crying on Trump, somebody in charge and learning about striking. Okay. Dreams of mastering a skill in this dream was realized. Damn right, Dorothy. Darius has created a copper crossbow. Okay, that's awesome. Never mind. I take it back. That's rad. That is a fantastic artifact, even though it's copper. Darius says the woodcutter has created a con conglisn what? A uh, copper crossbow and offers it to the frosty beards. Never heard of hum. Nobody's heard of hum. <laughs> Like that's they 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 are a '90s band that never really broke big. Basically, they had like one song that some people heard, and that was it. But they are fucking phenomenal. But um, if you want to hear their old stuff, look up. Uh, you'd prefer an astronaut, uh, and if you want to hear their new stuff, look up in the den probably is the song I would recommend. But Inlet is an incredible album. Basically got me through the pandemic. Um, so this is a copper crossbow. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with point-cut wood and encircled with bands of dog leather and rectangular obsidian cabochons. This object is adorned with hanging rings of granite and menaces with spikes of bitter orange wood. On the item is an image of dwarves in copper. The dwarves are laboring. The artwork relates to the foundation of sunbirths by the frosty beards of the insightful handles in the early spring of 97. You got the name backwards, I think, but downwards, downward is heaven's word. It's a good album. Yeah. I, I still think my favorite one is You'd Prefer an Astronaut and Inlet, but they don't have albums I don't like. Those are just my favorites. I think I'm going to channel down all of this, actually. push this down a layer. This is going to dig into a bunch of bedrooms, so. I just kind of want to have like a hole in the side where this eventually ends up becoming my front door. I also need more ice for this, <laughs> so might as well keep digging. Build ice ramps along here. I am very happy with how this library turned out. They're partying in the temples. So many parties today. Trying to remember the name of the good aligned creature that you're just having so much Gorlack? Oh, no, uh, throw it throw at a uh, Fluffy Wambler. Fluffy Wambler. Probably. Will, will there be a theft with this one? Um, 
What do you mean, in the library? Somebody already stole a book from the library. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Fluffy Wambler is the thing you're thinking of. It's been really... They're basically tribbles, but Dwarf Fortress edition. I still maintain the greatest success of this fort was realizing that I can stop dwarves from tracking snow into the fortress by making them walk above lava vents. <laughs> I, I, th that is actually the greatest discovery from this entire fort. Borrowing the book, I think. It's like those take a book, leave a books things. I might make a DF idea video on uh, those vents. That wouldn't be too hard to put together. All right, let's get back to what I was doing. I'm gonna put that crossbow up here. The stone could be hot. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if there's lava one layer beneath here, there won't be any... Um, what's, what's the word? There wouldn't be any snow because the snow would all melt. Yeah. Speaking of snow, am I going crazy or is, is it slowly melting over here? I wonder if it's melting because of the, the lava down there. Oh, no, it wouldn't actually because still snow down there. Hmm. All right, I need something else to work on. We built that. They're still gone. Just built up a second squad. I think I'm going to increase the population cap to 200 because I don't think it's currently sitting at that. Yeah, it's currently sitting at 160. Let's go up to two. Eh, why not? Two, 250. Let's go up above 200. And um, Rick population cap will be 260, we'll say. have hatches? No, I don't. Let's do... Hmm. Silver statues, we'll just make 10. Silver, si silver statues. And let's get the forges up and running, because I haven't been overworking these dwarves for a bit, purely because I have been trying my damnedest to keep them sane. Make steel bars, 50, when there's less than 30, make 50. Um, and we'll make pig iron. Make pig iron. An amount of iron bars is... Eh, we'll just queue up, like, 100 pig iron. We'll just do that. Okay, because I've got quite a bit of limestone sitting right there. Quite a bit of galena. Quite a bit of magnetite as well. Also some tetrahedrite. We got 97 galena. Okay, so we will smelt 97 of that stuff.
Oh, I'm making nickel silver statues. I screwed that up. Silver statue. And then let's go to bars. 89 steel. Uh, okay. How much magnetite do I have? 765. Okay, let's... Smelt 50. Magnetite ore. The amount of iron is lower than 100. Well, it's less than 100. I'll smelt 50. Which, that's going to happen pretty quick. It always makes the uh, same mistake with rose gold. What, you just accidentally hit the rose gold one instead? Uh, also, I can make sterling silver. Assuming that's just a value increase. You know what? Why, why don't we make some sterling silver? Let's throw that in the background just on repeat. See how much we end up with. You don't realize until you have a month or so of cancellations. Oh, I got, I got way more than a month worth of cancellations. The one that's confusing me right now, though, is choirs, because I thought that I had paper sheet, but I guess not. Yeah, because I bought a bunch of paper sheet, which, okay, guess I didn't. <laughs> Whatever. Won't worry about it too much. I still use the best gold. Uh, I, don't, I don't like the, the, the dark, the really dark colors in this version at all. I used to. Um, I think I prefer rose gold. I think rose gold is probably my favorite fancy metal color. Electrum's also all right. You get attacked by humans and goblins now. You got like 30 angry dwarves. You need to rest them up a bit. And parry somehow? Yeah. Sometimes giving your dwarves a um, festival is a good idea. A festival is a term from the old Dwarf Fortress community where you uh, take your dwarves and you um, force them to all hang out in the tavern for a while. I also realize we're out of brews. Burrow them in the tavern. Burrow them, burrow them in all of the social spaces in the fortress, basically. Burrow them in, like, so that they can go to their bedrooms and go to every single social space in the fortress. When that happens, then the, the dwarves are happiest. <laughs> Yelled at by an unhappy citizen. That citizen is a 17-year-old child. That kid gets it, is all I'm trying to say. Let's just dig out some more dolomite down here. There's a faster way to age up dwarves. Mod, mod your game. Literally that... It's one of those things that's not hard to mod. I don't understand why, though. I mean, I think they age up at a perfectly normal rate. But, you know. They used to be adults at uh, 14 in version 47. But in version 47, they couldn't do any chores. So because they can do chores, it's, like, super easy to just, like, burrow them separate and then just... Let, let them do their thing. I'm 
but I don't know. You do you. I quite, I'm quite happy with how the, the kids work in the game at this exact minute. You're like when a nine-year-old uh, kid uh, kills a forgotten beast made out of salt stone. I, uh, I like it when I have like children that are expert weaponsmiths before they're before they become adults, purely because of them just hanging out in my guild halls. I like that. There's so many dogs in this fort. Good lord. I mean, at least give them wheelbarrows. If you're going to make them haul boulders. Like, that's just mean if you're not going to at least give them a wheelbarrow. Although I always turn off body hauling for them unless I absolutely need them to do it. And the kids are also always, um, what's the word? I keep on wanting to say pastured, but that's not what I do. <laughs> that's not the correct term. Um, the kids are always uh, locked in, like, basically the party zone. It's like, they're yeah, they can help haul stuff around the fort if they need to. But it's, like, very much optional for them. They don't actually have to do any work. They can just chill in the tavern mostly and hang out in the guild halls and learn. Meal barrows are for the week. All right. <laughs> Fair enough then. Carry on. They always act as an early war warning system for sieges. That's what I use, um, like, livestock for, generally. Especially early game. Use livestock as an early warning system for sieges. So this is layer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. No, pushing a wheelbarrow doesn't train strength. Lifting heavy things does, though. So hauling boulders does actually train strength. Yeah, I, it probably wouldn't be too hard for you to mod it so that dwarves are born as adults, even. I don't see that being a huge amount of stuff that you'd have to work around to do that. Well, I mean, like, if if somebody wants to age up their the kids faster, like that, that would be the way to do it. Right? Closing in on a thousand hours. Damn right, devilish. You'll get that tomorrow, likely. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know how to do it, but Woo. that I can tell you for a fact someone who does know how to do it, it would be quick and easy. You just have to find the raws and probably change one number. 
There's some portions of Dwarf Fortress modding that is, like, just absurdly simple. Minus one, and then you get headless adults. That's a bug. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm over here just, like, hacking up a lung. Just go all the way across here. Build a wall across there. Go back down to here. Knock that out. Also, I guess Amethyst's body, or Amethyst never got permitted to be buried. What the hell? Oh, I see the problem here. Has a grave now. Does that mean that your body's going to get removed now? There you go. That poor soul. Yeah. I mean, they got memorialized a while ago, but it's a sad story, that's for sure. Oh, shit. <laughs> I just broke this, so now the dwarves can't get out of here. Except you can't deconstruct things. What oh, shit. Um, hmm. Well, how about this? Let's pause this. Let's dig through to here. And then I'll just build up one. Comes with the gig? Yeah. Horrendous trauma. Comes with the gig of being a dwarf. It ain't much, but it's dwarfy work. Speaking of good memes. I really wish I got more progress done on this today. It's a shame. I've been very distracted today when trying to get progress done, so. And let's build up, funk, to there. And also, let's use this as a test bed for this. Does smoothing stuff with snow on it remove the snow? We'll have to find out. Because I don't actually know if it does. But I'm kind of curious to see if it does. Do, do, do. There you go. Now you can, you've been let out, Dastot. Dwarves have arrived to trade, which is good. Bring all that up there and do that. It does. Sweet. All right, so for this then, to remove most of this snow, I can just smooth it all. Although that won't fix this problem down here. You have no idea, you're just punning. Yeah, no, I get you. I see the puns. And I like the puns. Let's go all the way up to the top of this. It's definitely new clothes season.
All that. And there we go. Wrote a list of puns the other day. They were terrible. I believe it. <laughs> a pretty good little library we built. Baroness of Splattered Gears. Is the queen, like, not hanging out in the tavern or something? Like, she's just been praying. It's like, you are a scholar, yet you never scholar. <laughs> you just hang out in the temple beneath it and pray. What a strange dwarf. Throw one of my diagnosers in here. Let's make some other scholars. Let's, uh... Maybe make Mulreb into a scholar. And, uh... Let's make... Let's make Elfie into a scholar. And go skull when you're doing other thing when you're not doing other things. Retrieval mission's still going. Come back eventually, hopefully. Medical library? Yeah. Exactly. Now we just need to wait for the, the dwarves to finish unpacking everything. We need the rest of them to show up because they're all still walking over. What's up, Cormacker? Did you just get caught in an ad? If you did, I'm sorry. Is your, still, is your dwarf still doing well as a bookkeeper? It looks like it, I would assume. I mean, you're still the bookkeeper. Let's see how Stormwolf is doing. You are pissed. <laughs> About everything. You seem to like having intellectual discussions, so I'm going to also make you into a into a scholar. No ads on your end? Yay! Yeah, uh, I'm all right. All right. Going okay. Getting by. Surviving. How's things been? Are you still streaming these days, or are you just doing, like actual job stuff. <laughs> Never liked snow as a kid, really? I I like snow. I don't like how other people behave when there's snow. Does that make sense? I like snow on its own. I don't like the fact that literally nobody obeys the basic laws around here that you have to shovel if you own a business. People just take the fines. Um... So the result is like walking on the sidewalk gets difficult. But aside from that, I like snow. Probably don't have a line thanks to the time zone. Gotcha. Yeah, I haven't seen you on in ages. Which is why I asked. Also, I still I'm very amused by this dwarf's last name, Bolt Blunt. So it's a good last name. Also, this dwarf has big hair. Sounds like those aren't really fines as opposed to costs of business. Oh, absolutely. Damn, they dance so much in this fort. Look at that. Look at that. Like, who doesn't want to just, like, watch them dance? I think I'm actually just going to engrave all of these floors just to get rid of the snow. <laughs> Speaking of snow. What's up, Psyomegas? You uh, are currently on a very brave mission off fort, outside of the fort, uh, trying to uh, require, acqu acquire something for the fortress. You've been gone for a while, though. I'm sure you'll make it back eventually. What are those gemmed tiles? Gemmed? What tiles do you speak of? 
Do I use mist generators? Well, they would just make blocks of ice if I were to use them in this fort. But sometimes. I mean, these are gem windows, but there there's none in that screen. The pink one's near the statue. The pink one's near the statue. Uh, like, do you mean these? Is this what you're talking about? Because those are gem windows. I don't anticipate games from Macro. Anticipating games uh, leads to inevitable disappointment. Yeah, no, I um, I made a YouTube video about how to make mist generators that got like 80,000 views, so I think it's probably my fault largely that so many people use mist generators. What do I think of Factorio? Uh, boring math for smart people. I am not a smart people. So, I would rather get a real job than have to play Factorio. And I ain't ever going to get a real job. So don't make me play Factorio. Oh, of course they're OP. But they let you, um, what's the word? Having mist generators let, allows you to fuck around with other systems. Like, you don't need mist generators. Like, this this fort has no mist generators and the dwarves are largely fine. It just takes a little bit longer to recover from massively horrible events. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I The, the thing I like about mist generators is they, is they give, it's like a handicap to lay on if you want to do other horrible things, right? Like, if you want to, you know, kill two thirds of your fortress in a undead fort or something, and you want your your um, necromancers to not go insane during the process because they're not all complete maniacal monsters uh, like the player is. Then, in that instance, yeah, I, I'd want to use mist generators to like keep the fortress balanced while I'm doing heinous shit to my fort. Um, so it depends. It depends on the fortress. If it's a more calm fortress, yeah. Yeah, that too. I mean, if you just like, if, if you like having really happy dwarves, then yeah. Or like, as, as I said earlier, you can play the game like Deep Space and just, you know, leave the dwarves outside and let them all be super pissed and somehow manage to have 50, like, as angry as you can get dwarves without your fortress falling into spirals. Bots of Thief, this is a known fact, house always wins. But yeah, I um I try very hard to not get excited for games. I mean, I, I guess like my my one big game anticipation would be Adventure Mode for Dwarf Ward, right? That that's probably the one. Like if, if I'm going to say like what is a thing that I'm eagerly anticipating? Adventure mode for Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> it's like what's your most anticipated game for next year? A patch for Dwarf Fortress. Um but at the same time, like Like there's there's a handful of other games that I'm probably looking forward to. I'm just very bad at remembering games that I'm actually looking forward to. Like, very bad at it. It's like, I'll remember when they're out, <laughs> basically. Testing the resolve of dwarves? Yeah. They'd consider making DLC for Baldur's Gate 3. They'll make DLC for Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> they will absolutely do that. They said they wouldn't make paid DLC, but every single one of their other games, they've released free DLC. So... They'll add shit to that game. Also, there wasn't there something where they were like, we're not going to make any pay, any DLC of any kind until we've made Act 3 not broken? I remember reading... I don't, I don't know. I haven't played it, but... It's not to me, game. That new No Man's Sky game? 
I'm curious to see if people overhype themselves for another No Man's Sky. That's that's what I'm curious about. Say, so don't you guys have backpacks available? It's fantasy no man's sky, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I have a very hard time actually getting excited about it. I find whenever I do actually get excited about a video game, it disappoints me, so. I try my damnedest to just not because of that. that aren't le leather or adamantine. I don't know, I, I like the material specific stuff. It gives you a reason to have said material. Why no yarn bags for military doors? Because mm. <laughs> store fortress is why. Is that a snake person? I want to see. Light no fire appears to be intriguing. Uh, that new Motion Twin game has nice graphics. <laughs> I, I like the art style of it. I don't know if I'll play it. Um, honestly, like, there's a bunch of games that I know that are all getting, uh, what's the word? Like, major updates soon. Like, I want to play Brigador Killers, but I don't, I, I don't know when that's going to be out. Uh, I really want to play... 1.0 of Caves of Cud. I want to play the big update for Dwarf Fortress. I know that um, Keeper RL is supposed to hit 1.0 soonish. The developer of Songs of Six has been talking about 1.0 soonish. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, mo most of the stuff that I'm interested in is like patches for games that I already play. That's the majority of it. And I think it just kind of says a lot about, you know, the the types of games that I enjoy these days. You know? That's that's all it really is. Mm. Do I want to put these on to one? I feel like you wrote that sentence differently than you intended it, alligator. Also got another migrant wave. And didn't they also like shut down the studio that made that remaster or am I crazy? Right, you. I actually have a bunch of dwarves that need memorials. A little big adventure remakes, but uh, they, they don't have a release date. I don't even know what that is. 
Yeah, I, um, you've lost. Yeah, there you go. I, that makes more sense. I, I, I have a, like I said, I just have a hard time getting excited about things because like my, my taste, my tastes are so specific that like a lot of this stuff that's like, oh, this is the next big hyped up thing that a lot of people are excited for. It's like, well, sure. But every now and again, people just like ask me, they're like, have you played this? It's like, do you have a thought about this? I think one that people were asking me about recently was like, do you have any thoughts on Steam World build? I was like, no, that demo looked really boring. <laughs> and so I never played it. I like, do I have interest in Rogue Trader? No, because like, I, I don't, I don't really play CRPGs. It's like, uh, I'm trying to think what else was popular. I like, I'm looking at Steam right now. Lethal Company is popular. Watching that game made me motion sick. I could maybe play it, but I don't really play that type of game. Um, I'd probably like it, but um, the finals is, looks rad, but. I wouldn't stream it, so. so mostly just the destruction in the finals that looks cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like skimming around with like what's coming out soonish, and I'm just kind of going, eh. Yeah, I don't know. Really, really, really isn't much for me out there these days. Yeah, I have no interest in Vintage Story. I don't play that type of game. So yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a weird thing. For me, at the very least, I have a hard time caring about a lot of games. Early isometric action puzzle games. I don't throw a ball. Oh, really interesting. Hmm. Not familiar with it. Build all those, jump over to this. And deconstruct all of that. Those are getting all put to rest. We're going to build this off down here. And I'm going to dig down. This is going to very much be a slow process to get this dug out, but it'll allow me to construct stuff from within the fortress without having to worry about getting to the outside or having access to the outside. Why is there animals in my drain? What is happening? <laughs> There's animals in my drain. What? Never heard of it, Illicit. New to me, I suppose. So we got a bunch of dwarves up there deconstructing all those. We're just starting to climb down. Perfect. Ice goes up there. You know, maybe maybe I don't want to dig this off just yet. I think I'm actually going to cancel one of those. So that we can keep working on this a little faster. I'm going to put a boulder right there. We're going to do another strip, because I need to go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. Okay, I need it to go all the way up to... I do actually need this to drop down another layer. Uh, Moses, the weaponsmith, has been taken by a fey mood. No, you don't need to watch 40 hours of vids to watch a video game. Um... You do, however, uh, need to watch seven hours. Because <laughs> that's how many, like, relevant tutorials I still have. I uploaded that video that was just, like, seven hours of tutorials. This dwarf decided to make an artifact while hungry and thirsty and drowsy. What a crappy day, dwarf. 
But it's grabbed an obsidian boulder. I mean, I get ad revenue, though, if you watch my videos. So maybe, like, mute it and just let it run in the background anyway. Although it kind of depends on the person. I know some people really like going through and, like, troubleshooting on a wiki. And some people really like just watching somebody play. It kind of depends on you, right? It's very much a... It's it's a process, I think. And it's... Some people learn in certain ways, and some people learn completely differently. Ironically, we kind of did have those illicit. I made them. <laughs> Most of those tutorials, like, the, because I made, like, 40 quick tutorials, right? I made about 20 pre-Steam. The thing was just nobody watched them. So, most of them got, I privated most of them when uh, Steam came out. Because it was like, well, I'm going to need to remake all these. And I don't want people watching the old ones anymore. So, I'll unlist these and then we'll do more. Also, the Forgotten Beasts kind of stopped. Well, I, I'm talking about the YouTube videos, not the stream. YouTube's a little different than Twitch in that instant, in that way. Wolf. I think that Dwarf Fortress is one of those games where, yeah, you can just learn it with a wiki, but it's a lot easier to learn it if you have some of the basic concepts explained to you. I think the trial and error and learning is where more advanced contraptions are fun. But I think when it comes to learning the base mechanics of Dwarf Fortress, I think you are absolutely benefited by either having a friend or a stream or a YouTube video to explain it to you. Wait, what has been found dead? I, Uh-oh. Are we getting a, a brawl? Yeah, it looks like it. You know, it's funny. The title of the video of the stream is still true. We're about to have another brawl. My goddamn bloodbath. Although this one doesn't seem anywhere near as bad as the last one. There is definitely dwarves fighting. But it doesn't seem to be that many. Oof. Oh, jeez. Did my queen just die? My queen just died. Tyron Des is now king. Yeah, Attis, the scholar, has been found dead. Rest in peace to the queen. Long live the queen. Bits and pieces of dwarves are working their way to the hospital. Hospital beds are being filled once again. I do like that we were able to keep the king, though. Tyron Des, where are you? You have a child who's PS4 Killjoy, who is dead. Well, that's terrifying. Staying away from the violence, I hope. Need a royal throne room. Find something humorous in everything, no matter how serious or inappropriate. How do you feel about becoming the king? Feels nothing after seeing Darren's dead body. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Darren's dead. Darren the Dwarven Child is dead. Um, Uzzle's dead. Wampin' Stompin's dead. That was one of my military dwarves. Cog is dead. King is stone cold. I mean, so is most of this fort, but I digress. Well, I think we can leave lead with the space. Um, Attis. I don't know where they're burying Attis or where Attis's grave was, but... Let's figure out. Uh, 
for real. Four tombs. I wonder if we're going to lose any more dwarves. Mostly just seems like teeth are flying, but should be able to clear this out pretty quickly because most of the dwarves are still up and okay. It's very much, it, this wasn't like the entirety of the fortress this time. Just checking for dwarves that are taking care of patients. Yeah, diagnosing, there you go, cleaning, sweet. Uh, place item in tomb, place item in tomb, that's what you like to see. A lot of people in the hospital. Yep, we just had a bit of a bar fight. Lost a bunch of dwarves. This is the second time this has happened in this fort. Let's check that strange mood, though. Okay, you still need skeletons. So the next thing I need to do is I need to give that that king a dining hall and an office. So this is the old the old queen's space. The king can have that. Oh man, that's sad. The king actually uh, lost Arclode, uh, who was their spouse. Arclode uh, committed a crime, and uh, they ended up dying. Which is sad. We would have had a king and queen family. One of them would like to join Sunbirths. Welcome to the fortress. And then this new tomb right here be the king's tomb. Oh, <laughs> I see the issue. This tomb belonged to the king. And there we go. What's up, non-major nerd? Kill the old queen. Uh, that's a good question. No. Uh, it could have been any of this squad, actually, because everybody in the Cold Citadel is technically a, uh, an officer or a, like, Captain of the Guard member. So... I mean, it wasn't you. So... Was it you? Huh! Well, I mean... This dwarf's killed a lot of my dwarves. And a forgotten beast. Killed Cosmic, uh, Nasty Ninja. Wait, what? Uh, Atis. Oh well, this, actually, I just found the Kingslayer. I just found the Kingslayer. Asmil, the Swordmaster. The Bend of Perfection. That's a hell of a name. I think Esmil here is going to become the new champion. I think that's what you're going to become. And I think you can have that fancy clothes champion. Uh, yeah, we had a second one. A 
but this one wasn't anywhere near as bad. Because we were at... Yeah, we lost nine dwarves, but we lost the queen. But uh, we have a new king now, who's Tyrant Death. Which is kind of rad. That's also kind of funny, Illicit. <laughs> that you use the wiki to get through an aquifer and then they kind of remove them from the game. It's like, well, geez. Let's actually check on my bar stocks. How are we doing? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. 235 iron. It works by families unless there is no family and then it's random. So, but the thing is, families in Dwarf Fortress are massive. <laughs> so it's pretty likely like, that you won't get a king or a queen in your fortress. Uh, yeah, so this was actually the king. Uh, the, the king is the kid of the queen. So it was his mom. Ironically, dad was also named Attis. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It was Attis and Attis. Are you also Attis, Tyrandis? Let's find out. No, Avus. Okay. Also, I need to remove you from this bed. Because you get a much nicer bedroom. We're also in an ad break briefly. Which I didn't even notice because I wasn't looking. Did I send the queen to take out enemies? No. No, 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 no. No, there was just a bar fight and the queen was the casualty. So that's a statue of an elf. Not going to do that. That's not very dwarfy. All right, chat room. Um, you know, I'm hungry. I've been streaming for 10 hours. I need to eat dinner. I need to make dinner. Uh, and I also would like to go acquire cheese so I can actually have cheese on a sandwich tomorrow. So I think we are going to wind down for the day. I think that there's a few of these that need cabinets. Just kind of skim through until I spot bedrooms that don't have cabinets yet. Although they're generally pretty easy to spot because they're usually full of clothes. Gobble, 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 yes. Um, let's also throw a display case down here. Let's figure out some ways to make this King a little bit happier. I quite like um, putting water wheels inside of buildings as like a form of decor decoration, even though I, I know they serve absolutely no practical purpose. I just think they look cool. Um, let's also throw some horizontal axles in there. I think of it as like, what's the word? Not an art fixture, that's the wrong word, but I don't know, a display piece? Yeah. So, chat room, I think it's time for us to wind down for the day. And uh, non-major nerd, I, I can tell you that, at least as of time of recording, non-major nerd is not dead. You are still alive. You are uh, teaching armor currently, and you are an adequate sword dwarf. You are just getting started on your military career, in fact. So, you are hanging out up here with this dwarf's ear, Uvesh's ear, in fact. Um, next to our, the rest of our dwarves. You're doing quite well. There's clothes everywhere that need to be put away. All right, chat. So I, I think it's it's time for us to call it for the day. I'm going to uh, put a marker down in here. And if you would like to say goodnight, YouTube, you can do that. But uh, don't run off because we are going to raid somebody. 
Guidance code went to Red Rock, uh, gate was blocked, and there was a crapload of impossible level goats with guns. You did not go to Red Rock. That was not Red Rock. There is no... Did, do you mean Great Gate? Because Red Rock doesn't have goat folk. So, anyway, uh, good night, YouTube. Uh, for people watching the VOD, uh, the VODs are found over on the YouTube channel Blind Extras, and uh, next VOD will be up when it's up. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, Twitch chat. YouTube uh, apparently got 1,337 views and 69 likes. Crap, actually, 1,338 views. Fuck, I fucked that up. Still got 69 likes, though. Um...